And good evening. Welcome to Game 2 of the 2016-17 ABL Preliminary Final Series presented by Ladbrokes. The seventh instalment and a huge year for Australian baseball with Baseball Australia taking control of the new ABL. The World Baseball Classic in March but locally a different smell in the air as our hometown Brisbane Bandits proudly presented by Well Dog are defending ABL champions after sweeping Adelaide by two games to nil in last year's championship series. Tonight, once again, we host the Adelaide Bite, proudly presented by SA Power Networks in a pivotal Game 2 of the Ladbrokes ABL PF Series to decide who will meet the Melbourne Aces in their championship series. Once again, we would like to thank you, the fans, for tuning in to abltv.com, powered by Bing Lee, our new broadcast sponsor, and great to have Bing Lee on board again. Thanks for joining us for a very exciting game live from the beautiful AFA Stadium. We should be in for a fantastic three-game series. Game one last night in Adelaide was a fantastic exhibition of baseball from both ball clubs and a big thank you to Fraser and Phil on the core down there south of the border. Game one, Bandits 3-1 winners with a late power surge after a pitcher's duel for six innings. Both McNabb and Erasmus were outstanding. Both picked up the no decisions. Olchen and Wade Dutton provided all the offense for the Bandits. Zach Treese picked up the win in relief. And the Bulldog, Ryan Sell with the save. Matty Williams was lumped with the loss and the blown save. Providing all the live vision is the team from Hail Storm Productions, led by Mr. Josh Hale. And joining Josh behind the cameras will be the colorful team of DJ, Reese, Nathan, and as usual, our IT guru, The Warlock. And let's welcome the team here at Bandits TV, starting with the man on my right all the way up from Adelaide, Mr. Eric Bonar. Eric from the Adelaide Bite has a commercial operations manager with the Bite. Eric has a journalism background and has covered a variety of sports, mainly baseball and ice hockey. Moved to Adelaide to cause South Australia is now home. He served a variety of roles with the Bite. Eric, welcome. We should be in for a fantastic night of baseball here at AFA Stadium. Yeah, if it was anything like last night, it's going to be uh, very intense. And that was the atmosphere around the ground last night. And it was just, it was exactly what you said. It was a pitcher's duel. There was not much room for error at all. And unfortunately, that's what it came down to for the bite. Just a couple errors in the eighth inning. And the Bandits are, they're defending champions for a reason. They took advantage of those of those errors for the bite. Couple clutch hits. Trent Olchin, of course, the guy that has to come through with it. And the Bandits take game one, and I'm expecting a very, very close contest, very intense, just like last night. Bite had their opportunities, too, don't get me wrong. So it was a fantastic ball game, and I hope it's the same tonight. But from the Bite perspective, a little bit different result. So both teams travelled up tonight after playing last night. So a, big, a quick turnaround for both ball clubs, I'm sure importantly for the Adelaide Bite. How have the guys travelled up after last night's heartbreaker? Yeah, it was, you know what, it was a very... It was a unique atmosphere, actually, this morning. So I was on the flight with both the Bandits and the Bite this morning. It's very weird that you see them on the same flight together. So they're just relaxing together. It was weird to see them sort of jive together. And now they're going to be battle. They're going to be battling and against each other on the field tonight. They certainly are. So both teams have been introduced and will go through the lineup. So it looks like we'll just pause as the national anthem is now ready, and that'll be sung by Lauren O'Neill. So a fantastic night here at AFA Stadium as the umpires make their way out to the plate. And they are home plate umpire Tommy West, first base umpire James Shield, second base Paul Ladder, and third base Mal Mackay. So we'll just wait for Lauren to get ready. The temperature is a beautiful 29 degrees Celsius, and it's Saturday night here, game two the 4th of February 2017. And looks like Eric, Lauren, is making her way out to the infield turf and will now pause for the singing of the national anthem. Please welcome Lauren O'Neill. Australians, oh, let us rejoice for we are young and free with golden soil and wealth for toil our home is girt by sea our land a 
abounds in nature's gifts of beauty rich and rare in history's page let every stage advance australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing Advance Australia Fair. So there we go. The ground is in magnificent condition. A big thank you to the grounds crew, Steve DeMarla, Joel McGinnis, and of course the brother duo combo of Cooper and Jordan Thompson. And a big thank you to all the volunteers, grounds crew, all the way from young Corey in the merchandise box, all the way to our CEO, Mr. Mark Reedy. Uh, Eric, two of the hottest teams in the ABL, both eight and two in their last 10. The Bandits are 10 from their last 13. The Bite are 10 of their last 12. Head to head during the season was 4-4. Wow. What are you anticipating from both of these ball clubs tonight? I anticipate not. Well, just like you said, there's not much between them right now. I'm thinking it's going to come down again to the seventh, eighth inning, ninth inning, the late ball game right here. Uh, when one team punches, the other team's going to punch back. If one team defends, the other team's going to defend right back. It's, it's uh, going to be a very interesting matchup on the mound tonight. Really excited to see what young Jack O'Loughlin has on the mound for the bite. Just 16 years old. Obviously the biggest start of his career so far. So, I mean, it's... It's elimination baseball. The Bites saw their season end here last, last time, too. I think they'll come up with a bit of desperation, and I know the Bandits are pretty keen on ending this right here. So I'm, I'm excited just to see a, a closely contested baseball game right here. And, I hope, yeah, it's going to be I, – I hope we see something special. Well, I hope we will. Good, fantastic vantage point. So both teams look ready to take the field. And let's have a look at the way both teams line up today. As it looks like uh, Adrian Lamb and Chris Adamson are just exchanging the scorecards. And a big thank you to One Solution Excellence in telecommunications communications and IT solutions and the official IT partner of the Brisbane Bennets. And firstly, let's have a look at the way the Adelaide Bite will come to the plate. An exciting player at the top of the order. Speed, speed, speed. Mr. Ladarius Clark in the two hole. Jordan Cowan batting three. Mitch Denning in the four hole. Marcus Green Jr. Stefan Welch will bat five. Angus Roger in the six hole. Jordan McArdle will bat seven. Josh Altman in the eight. And tonight's DH, Alex Carter. How do you like the makeup of that lineup, Eric? Yeah, it's a different lineup. There's a slight change here. Alex Carter getting a start here tonight at the DH spot. And he's a guy that came through with a pretty big hit last night in the eighth inning to try to start a rally. So um, he's a guy with a lot of experience. He, he's been pretty fantastic with club ball. So, yeah, I, I like the makeup of that lineup. I certainly do. And uh, as I said, I think we're in for a fantastic ball game. Defensively, the men in white, all white today for the Bandits. And the bite in their familiar blue tops with the grey trunks. Defensively from left to right field we have Tommy Malone in left Aaron Whitefield man centre Trent Olchin will man right. Kevin Padlow down at the hot corner. Logan Wade and Wade Dutton up the middle. David Sutherland gets a start at first base defensively and the man who's probably one of the hottest hitters in the world right now south of Saskatchewan is David Rodriguez a 20 game hitting streak from Venezuela and the big right hander Eric 6 foot 6 Kramer Champlin on the hill. Yeah, it'll be a, fan a fantastic game to watch here. Uh, I had the pleasure of calling the game where Kramer Champlin was on the hill the, the last time he was in Adelaide as well. Uh, Bite got it, uh, took advantage of him pretty early on in that one there. Uh, he only lasted three and a third innings there, allowing seven hits. Allowed a few runs there. But again, that game just it came down to a couple small, small errors that the Bandits made in that one, and the Bite took advantage. So, I mean, there's really not much between these games. You saw how close it was in that slugfest that was here at the end of 2016 to finish off the calendar year. I mean, it's exciting baseball between these two teams. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I cannot wait for this first pitch to be thrown as we're almost ready to go. Don't mention the name Mitch Denning. Oh, I, I'm imagining that he scares a few Bandits fans out here. The last two trips he's made down here, because it was 2014 when he had that opening series down here, three home runs. Next series he comes down here, three home runs once again. So, um, I mean, it's his third trip down here. He's got he's got hopefully two games from the bite perspective here to, to get it done, but maybe another three-homer game. We'll find out. So here we go. Great to have you aboard from AFA Stadium. The ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. The first pitch is a ball outside. Home plate umpire Tommy West. First base James Shields. Second base Paul Ladder. And third base Mal McKay. Four man umpiring crew and a fantastic night for baseball. And there we go, Eric. 
Kramer starts him off with two balls. Good hitting count now for Ladarius. And I know the Bite are pretty anxious to get a pretty good start in this one, especially just sort of the offensive disappointment last night. They couldn't really get anything going. This is a guy with some wheels that, if he gets on base, is going to put a lot of pressure on Kramer Champlin really, really early on. And he certainly is now. Good hitting count, three balls. So Kramer just struggling a tad with his control. 12th round pick. Pick number 348 for the Texas Rangers is Ladarius Clark. And it looks like that is four straight balls. So exactly how the bite would have started, Eric. The leadoff man in the table setter now aboard. Yeah, and the guy right behind him here, Jordy Cowan, is a guy that also, if he gets on base, can cause some damage too. And I know his last at-bat he had last night was a pretty big moment. He had a runner on first and second, two outs. Base hit could have tied the game depending on where he went. But Ryan Searle just does what Ryan Searle does and made him chase on a pitch that you might not want to swing at. So I know Jordy will be looking to redeem himself here. So could we see some small ball early from the Adelaide bite? Michael Dunn at third base. Coach's box. Ladaris, there we see a first pitch hit hard to left center field. Aaron Whitefield on the track all the way to the borrow sign. Rounding second, heading for third is Ladarius Clark. And as you said, Eric, Ladarius has been waved in. Here comes the throw. Is it in time? Ladarius with the head first line. A double to Jordan Cowan and the bite. Strike first. And that is how dangerous Dangerous Ladarius Clark can be on the base pass right there. And he took a pretty big stretch around third base as well, too, if you watch it coming up here. But, man, that is exactly what, what the bite would have wanted there, just to double up the gap there. Uh, it's not that uncommon to see Ladarius Clark score on a double coming all the way from first base. He's got some serious wheels, maybe the fastest in the league, especially after Acuna left from Melbourne there, too. I mean, there's not many men that can stand between him. So big start for the bite right there. I'm sure they're cheering at the Arkaba right now at home. Wow, what a start, as you mentioned, Eric. We mightn't have uh, Eric in for too long if this is the way the Adelaide are going to play. But Mitch Denning, wow, what an outstanding talent for Australian baseball. And with the breeze just blowing out, Mitch Denning first pitch swinging, big foul ball. And I like the aggressive approach early from the bite. Sometimes you, you lose that first game in a heartbreak at 3-1. Travel day, you come up here, bang put the first run on the board. No, and that's exactly it. And and you heard Steve Mintz talking before the game in the dugout there, and he's saying, guys, just go out there and have some fun. Swing it like you can. Have some fun. Don't think that it's an elimination game. And uh, obviously a very relaxed approach. And you saw that first pitch swing also from, uh, from Denning, but Cowan on the batter before him. Um, so they're going after it. Certainly was. And as you mentioned, back in October 31st, 2014, Three home runs right here from Mitch Denning. And then again, back-to-back -back on December 30, 16, another three home runs. So this man certainly likes AFA Stadium. And it's uh, something about this ballpark. Good hitting ballpark, good backdrop for the hitters, and just a nice, pleasant, aesthetically pleasing ballpark. Oh, it's beautiful out here. And look at the sun setting down there over, over towards the right foul line over there. So Kramer Champlin, two balls, one strike. Jordy Cowan on at second. And there we see a hard-hit ball. Wade Dutton comes down. The runner will advance. Nice play over to David Sullivan. So the first out for the Bandits. But once again, Eric, a productive out for Mitch Denning, advancing Jordy to third base. Yeah, not the worst result at all because a fly ball here, uh, if it's deep enough, it should score uh, the run here from third base. Or even just a, just a hard-hit ball uh, in the infield should score it too, depending on where it goes. So the bite will be liking their chances here. I'm looking out here over at right field, though. Look at the flag, just the wind blowing right out to right field here and you got to think someone's going to pull one out there at some point. So when you turn up to the ballpark as a hitter, you like to see those flags oh, I'm sure you waving do. straight away from you. So Marcus Green Jr. traded from the Rangers to the Padres. Looks a very good prospect. And there we see a squibbler off the end of the bat. That's going to roll foul and out of play. But there, wow, this guy has impressed me. 0 for 3 last night, but comes in with a 3.07 batting average. And wow, injury free, he looks a good prospect for the Padres. Yeah, and that was, was what was that is what was bugging him uh, back in, in minor league ball. Is he just had a pretty serious injury, just trying to recover from that. So, And that's why he was sent over to Australia to work at a few things, to get healthy, to get some reps. And he's a big leader. In with the guys as well too. I like the look of this young man. Kramer Champlin deals. Oh, big swing. Fouled straight back to the screen. And interesting to note, Eric, good crowd in here at AFA Stadium, as you would expect. The Bandits do have a chance, as we said, to advance to the championship series bite, playing for their season. Yeah, it's uh, all on the line here tonight. I know the bite would love to stretch it out to a game tomorrow afternoon. So, um, I mean you got to take your chances when you have them. And, and this is the perfect opportunity right here. Just one out, opportunity to score a run. You can't waste these, especially against the Bandits. You certainly can't. That one just missing outside, so good location. Looks like Kramer's just settled down. The ex-Toronto Blue Jay was part of that 2016-17 World ABL All-Star team this year. And once again, just a fantastic young man. Six foot six, good hard-throwing right-hander. So one ball, two strikes, and Marcus Green, Jr., launches one over the left field wall. Two-run blast, 
and the Adelaide Bite, presented by SA Power Networks, have asserted their authority early here, Eric. A s- double to Jordan Cowan, and now a two-run blast to Marcus Green. 3-0, Bite. And that's exactly what the Bite would have wanted to do. Steve Min said exactly that to the boys, go after it early, and could you ask for any earlier than three runs off one out so far? Uh, that's pretty clutch hitting from the Bites big dogs right here with Steph Welsh coming up to bat here. But, yeah, very clutch hitting going on there. That was a monster shot to left. Wow, that was gone straight off the bat. So that's a memento out there from someone out there traveling out in left field. Last night, in nine innings, the Bite recorded four hits. Already we have two hits, and we're not through the first inning and first pitch swinging, Stephen Welch. No, and, and you know what? Steve Mintz was saying that, out of Canberra and Brisbane when the bite were looking like they had that second spot locked down there they would rather play the bandits to come here because they could potentially hit them around a little bit but again you got to take caution both teams are so so dangerous and obviously Brisbane knocked the bite out last year and they're they're a pretty dangerous ball club (laughs) one ball one strike top of the first two outs and that one once again is fouled back to the screen and the ground is in magnificent condition big thank you to all our sponsors Ladbrokes, Borrell, Reedy Towing, Conoco, Phillips of course 94.9 the river things are looking absolutely beautiful here and Kramer working very quickly outside that evens account two balls two strikes and uh, top of the first three nil lead Eric so the bite have certainly come here to play tonight. And then we see another hard-hit ball. Wow. Oh, that one might have hit someone. I hope that someone is okay down there. Unfortunately, I think a fan uh, was facing away from home plate. Wow, that's a horrible scene. I think the young boy might have got struck. So we might pan away from there, and let's hope uh, medical attention is straight on the board. No one likes to see that, Eric. No, that's always a scary sight. It's um, definitely a risk of the ballpark, but, you, yeah, that's scary. So let's hope that young man is okay. But uh, Stefan Welch retired on a good breaking pitch from Kramer Champlin. Two outs here in the top of the first. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Steph, Steph's sticking to the mantra there, though. Keep He's swinging. All the bite boys are swinging so far, and you're not always going to make a hit. <laughs> but yeah, scary for the guy over in right field there. Yeah, Still we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, Eric will keep an eye on that. I'll get back to the ground. And uh, Angus Roger now steps in two times ABL All-Star. He's fifth. ABL season and uh, real good player as an Australian Angus Roger right in the middle of that lineup batting number six. Yeah and a back to back all star for the bite and he's a, he's a good guy as well too as this goes out to right field there. And that looks like it's going to fall in for a two out single so once again that's the third hit recorded for the Bites. They've nearly reached last night's tally of four. Trent Olchin does a good job to get across there in right field so once again just like as you said Steve Mintz would have drew it up the seventh hitter and now an exciting prospect for Australian baseball yeah Jordan McArdle just signed with the Arizona Diamondbacks just this last week uh, was was originally going to go to college junior college with Central Arizona but he got an offer I guess that was too good to be true with with Arizona and that was always his goal of, of playing professional baseball and he's going to get that opportunity just leaving in a couple of weeks over to spring training there it's so exciting for the young kid very exciting as you see first pitch swinging Kramer starts him off outside so exciting times for Geordie and also exciting times for Australian baseball because Jordan played in the Bendigo Bank Little League in 2011 for the Southern Adelaide All-Stars. So just a fantastic now initiative and pathway that Little League, Junior League, Senior League and hopefully into college or pro ball or the ABL. You're absolutely right and he was in the academy as well too and he went over on that college trip as well over to to the state. So I mean this is exactly what the MLB and Baseball Australia would have drawn up when they said we need to create a pathway for the kids to get that contract to hopefully make a difference there and you you can look down the roster we're going to see Jack O'Loughlin pitch for a minute too is the same pathway as Jordan McArdle here so I mean it's really really exciting to see a kid like this strive here unfortunately Jordan is retired on strike so the third out here in the top of the first the bite plate three runs you're listening to Kevin Dean Eric Bolner the ABL preliminaries finals presented by Ladbrokes this is Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs and you're watching the Australian Baseball League the whistle blows the gates crash open it's now or never Ladbrokes up for the challenge gamble responsibly Charlie have you closed the back door?
We've all had regrets, but your home loan shouldn't be one of them. At Bendigo Bank, we know a great rate means nothing without great service. Bendigo Home Loans. When it's time for you to settle, have no regrets. One Business School is opening up new opportunities for graduates, as well as new markets, and innovating for tomorrow without sacrificing what we have today. All by challenging the future. UQ Business School. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head to head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Judy Gorius with the New York Yankees, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So the bite have jumped out early, 3-0 here as we head to the bottom of the first and leading off for the Brisbane Bandits, presented by World Dog Aaron Whitefield with 20 stolen bases. Trent Olchin in the two-hole, Mitch Nielsen, the DH, batting three. David Rodriguez in the four-hole. Logan Wade bats five. Kevin Padlow in the six. Tommy Malone bats seven. David Sutherland bats eight. And Wade Dutton bats nine. And a big thank you to our starting lineup by the One Solutions Group for all your IT Solutions, and we might have a quick pause defensively. Ladarius Clark in left field. Mitch Denning plays centre. Angus Roger in right field. Stefan Welch down at the hot corner. Jordan Cowan and Josh Altman up the middle. Jordan McArdle, the first baseman. Marcus Green Jr. behind the plate. And the young left-hander, which I'm sure Eric will tell us a little bit more about young Jack O'Loughlin. Yeah, Jack O'Loughlin. He's just one of those kids from South Australia. And South Australia seems to have a few of these kids coming up, but signed by the Detroit Tigers. Big left-hander. I mean, look at him on the mound right here as he's going to throw his first pitch. But he's a big guy. He's got a bit of power. He can throw pretty hard, about 89 for a 16-year-old. Uh, he did get yesterday off school because he's in high school, funny enough, uh, to prepare for the final yesterday with the team. And um, obviously he's out here too. So it's just a great story to see a 16-year-old get a start in the most pivotal game of the bite season so far. It certainly is, Eric. And as you mentioned, he has been signed. The youngest starter to record a W in the ABL, that was until another 16-year-old Kai Hampton on the 29th of the first, 17, beat him to that punch. He recorded a win. So Adelaide Bite have the two youngest starters at 16 years of age, this guy, Jack O'Loughlin, and Kai Hampton. And Kai and Jack are best friends as well too, which is great to see too. So Kai, uh, Kai and Jack were the sort of the one-two punch for the bite, uh, or not the bite, South Australia in the under-16s when they broke a long, long championship drought to win the, the national championships there. Unfortunately, Jack was pitching for the bite, so he couldn't go to the under-18s, and South Australia finished third in that one. They were probably just missing Jack, another, another punch in the, in the rotation there. So two balls, two strikes. Aaron Whitefield inside for a curveball, not to mention young Brady Vasilakis from the Canberra Cavalry who picked up the W, but that was in relief on the 2nd of the 12th, 2016. So three very exciting young ball players, all at the age of 16 and all pitchers, as that one misses down low. So like for like, in the bite in the top half of the first, Eric, now the Bandits have their leadoff man on in the spark plug, Aaron Whitefield. Yeah, Aaron Whitefield is one heck of a player, isn't he? You guys in Brisbane here, you guys must be absolutely excited to see how he has developed and played this year, especially just thriving in that full-time role. I know that uh, a lot of ABL clubs in the offseason were pretty high on him and would love him to move to those clubs there, but obviously Brisbane wanted to keep him around because uh, it was a good decision in hindsight, it wasn't it? He's unbelievable this year. He certainly was coming off that huge year with the Gulf Coast League Twins across 51 games. He batted 298 with, wow, wait for this, 31 stolen bases. And when I spoke to Aaron during the week, he loves to cause havoc on the base paths. Yeah, and he's a he's a guy that actually has a few links to South Australia as well too. James Harris, the uh, the executive officer of Softball SA, uh, tipped him like in the middle of the offseason saying this guy is going to have an unbelievable season for this year. He's a good friend of his. Uh, he was going to play some softball at, at the national level as well too. So he's a multi-sport athlete. He's just a, I mean, you can tell just by looking at him, he can, he can play the game. He certainly can and uh, great to have those links down south. Trent Olchin, the 27th Australian. Tip the big time in the major leagues, 99 games across Arizona and the LA Dodgers. And Ray Ruiz in the third base coach's box. Happy birthday, Mr. Ray Ruiz. Great to have the manager for the Bowling Green Hot Rods with us. And Adrian Lamb in the first base coach's box. So Aaron Whitefield with a big lead. And that one's off the end of the bat. Looks like that's going to be a little looper single. Aaron Whitefield round second, heading for third. Wow, first to third. And just like that, Eric. 
the Bandits have runners at first and third. Nobody out. Weren't we talking about this pregame, how we were hoping to see a ball game where when one team throws a punch, the other one throws one right back. It's like the Mundine Green fight all over again right here. But um, this is why Brisbane brought in a guy like Trent Olchin right here for big moments like this. The team down 3 nothing. You need a veteran moment to come through with a pretty clutch hit. He comes up with a single. He's put his team in a position to score, but he did it last night. He scored the, he scored the, the basically the knockout punch right there last night, and now he's got him in a position to do something dangerous here. So just a quick touch. It looks like the ambulance has arrived for that young fan, so we wish and we'll bring you up to date if anything should transpire. But the DH, first and third, bottom of the first, nobody out. Mitch Nielsen takes a good fastball. So it looks like already Jack O'Loughlin has a good fastball and good velocity tonight. He does, he does, and he'll, um, I mean, this is what Jack has been doing all season long. He's allowed a couple guys on base, but he usually has that out pitch that, that forces the double play. At one stage, you know, he was leading the league in double plays, according to ABL stats here. So, and, and, and I'll trust that because he, you see it all the time. A guy goes on first dangerous position, he gets that double play. He'll be looking for it here, but unfortunately, you do have a guy on third base right there, so it's a, some, some tough defense needed here for the bite. So I'm sure the Adelaide bite will trade a double play here for the run. So the pivots playing double play depth up the middle. Mitch Nielsen, 1-1 one, one count on the way and just missing outside. So two balls, one strike, and pivotal time of the game. After giving up a three spot early, I'm sure Brisbane would like to try and play a crooked number here of their own in the bottom half of the first. And Mitch Nilsson is a guy that can sort of alter this game in one swing of the bat. I know people in Adelaide are sort of scared of him because he, uh, and, it, and it happened last year at Norwood. He hit it two home runs in a game. And there one off the end of the bat. That's going to be a single in the center field. So Aaron Whitefield will cruise home. So just like that, the Bandits have struck back here with nobody out. 3-1, Mitch Nielsen doing a great job at the plate. So last night, 3-1 Bandits, and that was through nine innings of hard-fought baseball, an unbelievable pitcher's duel, and we are through three outs so far, and it's a 3-1 ball game in favor of Adelaide so far. That is ridiculous. I don't know what else to say about that. It's uh, it, it's exactly what we expected in this ballpark as well, too. You can hit it around a little bit. I think coming into it, uh, they the Adelaide versus Brisbane this season was Ad Brisbane was averaging 8.7 runs per game and Adelaide 7.8 something around those numbers if you want to go to the decimal place right there so uh, yeah it could be a high scoring one today I think I concur with those thoughts it looks like early uh, both teams are hit are here to hit and it looks like one to nine as you said two very strong offensive lineups I'm sure both managers are looking to go deep all 21 players Bart McNabb and Justin Erasmus are available I spoke to both managers pre-game in our meeting, and it looks like that's going to be the way it goes. So bottom of the first, 3-1 to the bite, nobody out, and now the hottest man, David Rodriguez. And what a shame David never arrived just a couple of weeks early because, wow, what a batting average, 442, and on a 20-game hit streak. There's a bit of a correlation, I think, in the Bandit season from when this guy came into the lineup and uh, how Brisbane have performed in the second half of the season, don't you think there, Kevin? <laughs> he certainly was. He's just been an absolute... Uh, the way he's controlled the staff and the way he swings the wood, you know, there, we, ooh, there we see a foul ball straight back to the mask of Marcus Green Jr. And how, how do you like the guys behind the plate? Look at the both catchers are at the plate. You love to see that, just that apathy. As soon as he turns around, the first thing David says to Marcus is, are you okay? Yeah, it's a, I mean, there's some nice camaraderie between these two teams. I know that Brisbane got the better of the bite last year, but I think both teams in each direction have a lot of respect for each other. It is, I, as I was saying earlier, it's, it was very interesting to see them interact with each other at the airport before the game today. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of respect, a lot of camaraderie, and, you know, they'll, they'll put that all aside right now, and they'll be battling. They want to beat each other pretty badly, but a lot of respect. And I certainly love that about the Australian Baseball League to bring all those teams together. So Jack O'Loughlin, bottom of the first. It looks like once again as runners get on as we often see Eric the game has really started to slow down. Huge moment though in this ball game. I know it's only the first inning but you know a base hit you know a sneaky one down the line to right might score two of them you know you find that right gap and this is a tie ball game. Might have to protect the lead here. 0-2 oh, big swing and a miss and great pitch by Jack O'Loughlin has David chasing and I think a very important out via the punch out. Yeah, and you know what? He amped up on that one. He just sort of loaded up, blew that one right by him, and uh, it puts him in a position where the double play ball does get him out of the inning, and that one run is not so bad of a result for Jack. But again, like I was just saying, that, that gapper right here could tie the ball game, and, and you have that feeling this whole game, just like it was last night, is going to be filled with these little intense moments, and you, you can make a list of them saying, let's look back to the first inning, look back to the third inning, then seventh inning. It's high-stakes drama, playoff baseball. It's what we watch the game for, right? It's what we're here to see and we hope you're enjoying the coverage Eric Bonner and Kevin Dean in the box here from Bandits TV 
And I hope you're enjoying the pictures from Hail Storm Productions. Hey, and a big congratulations to Jake Bell on his wedding day today. He's tuning in. So, Jake, hope you have a great wedding. Enjoy the day and congratulations and glad to see our long-time Bandits listener tuning in. So, Logan Wade, the switch hitting Logan Wade, ex-Minnesota Twins, 310 games for the Twins and once again a key pivotal role playing shortstop and now in this key part of the lineup this five hole and can he do some damage now for the Bandits yeah and, and last night he had uh, a pretty big moment last night in the game when the Bite were trying to get a rally started and he made a great play over at sec or over at short there diving back making a great play throwing it over to first he's an unbelievable player defensively as well too he uh, certainly is. And, and as you said, what a key to have a, a shortstop with his defensive range and a switch hitter. Well, I think an absolute lock for the uh, World Baseball Classic roster. And there we see a good breaking pitch just missing inside. So two balls, one strike to a very hot hitter. I was uh, sitting up in the Shark Tank last night with a few different uh, baseball brass from South Australia, a few from Interstate as well too, and everyone was making their predictions for the, the World Baseball Classic team. And every single person was saying, surely Logan Wade is on this team. So... Not a lock, obviously. No one is a lock, I'm sure. But I think if you go by consensus, he's there. I think he'll be on John Deeble's 28-man yep. roster, which will be announced very soon. So first and second, bottom of the first. Bite out to a 3-1 lead. Jack O'Loughlin delivers another hard-hit ball foul into the big screen. And a big thank you to the boys from Gabba.com.au. Fantastic screen here at AFA Stadium. Hey, a big thank you. And once again, we'll just bring you a quick update. It so looks like um, the ambulance is just about to leave here at AFA Stadium. So, look, at uh, it's, it's not very good, uh, uh, I guess, viewing down the right field line. But let's hope everything's A-OK -okay with the young man who was struck by that foul ball in the top half of the first inning. So two balls, two strikes. Logan Wade, once again, fouls it straight back. So once again, you talk about battles. We're watching one of these right now, 2-2, two, two, bottom of the first. And you can feel the intensity early on here, and I think the bite players can feel it too. They need to make a play here. You can see Steph Welsh over at third, a little bit dialed in right now. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is a big moment right here, and, and Logan Wade is a guy that, that can feel that as well too, I'm sure. His fifth season in the Australian Baseball League. Jack O'Loughlin from the set position. Checks the runner, kicks and delivers. And once again, like for like, the third foul ball in a row from Logan Wade. How nervous would you be if you were a 16-year-old kid out there right now, uh, knowing sort of the magnitude of the situation? Jack doesn't look it, though. I mean, look at him out there. But I, uh, if it were me, I would be just terrified out there. I mean, it's not an easy situation for anybody. The composure of the young man. And I guess that's why he has signed with the Detroit Tigers. I mean, that's what you look at. I mean, you look at past the numbers and I, and I like the fact when scouts look past at the numbers and the family history and those types of things the personality and the makeup of a young man and Jack O'Loughlin looks like he has that makeup and there you see Eric 2-2 two, two, three or four foul balls comes back with a great breaking pitch yeah and that's exactly what Jack O'Loughlin loves to do he he gets himself in a little bit of trouble I won't lie here but he gets himself out of trouble which I think is the real indication of when you see a great pitcher right here I mean anybody even the best will allow runners on base it's what you do when those runners are on base to punch them out and you saw Jack right there no outs runner on first and second after allowing a string of hits uh, now all of a sudden uh, two outs and he's, and he's in good shape. He certainly is and this man is now starting to become one of the hottest hitter young Kevin Padlow, big prospect from the bowling green hot rods in the Midwest League with the Tampa Bay Rays and a guy who I'm going to be watching. That one just skips away but Marcus Green Jr. and with that arm I'm sure you don't want to make that third out at third base. No, certainly don't there but uh, with Kevin Padlow I, I know just from talking to Taylor Hawkins who is with the Adelaide bite in the first half of the season this year. He was saying that of, of the of the hot rods coming over, this is a guy to watch. He, he's, I mean, we don't need to tell any Bandits fans watching. This guy can do some damage. He certainly can. The number 20 prospect in the Tampa Bay Rays organization, and we'll talk about those prospects, which we talk about. So one ball on its way there. We see a hard hit ball. Looks like Jordan Cowan flips it to the second baseman, Josh Altman, for the third out. So we have the first inning in the books. Adelaide bite lead the Bandits 3-1. to one. Hey, I'm Mike Trout, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. In an increasingly competitive global environment, foreign exchange is critical to the profitability of many Australian companies. Business owners have enough to worry about without having to deal with the complexities of global markets. At Compass, we listen to our clients to understand their business. 
We provide competitive exchange rates and we work with you to better manage your risk and to improve your bottom line. Our success is directly linked to your success. Boral has built up a long-standing reputation of excellence and exceptional performance. With successful completion of thousands of high-value projects across multiple sectors, our clients can have full confidence in Boral's ability to provide supply chain security, local expertise, commitment to safety and most of all, certainty of outcome for your project. The earlier we get involved, the more value we can add. Contact us or visit our website at borrel.com.au. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Lorenzo Cain from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Great to have your company on the Australian Baseball League preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. And uh, fantastic to have Ladbrokes with us. So here we go. Top of the second inning, 8-9-1 due up. Josh Altman, Alex Carter and Ladarius Clark. And this young man from the Texas Rangers looks another one of those mid-tier signings, but a good prospect for the Texas Rangers. You know what, Josh is one of those guys that I, I have a soft spot for, I won't lie here. I mean, you, you, you've seen a lot of imports come through the Bandits organization, I'm sure, um, as this one's lying just a little bit foul down there, but Josh is one of those guys that just appreciates every single moment that he gets. In Adelaide, he does everything that's asked of him. He wants to be the first guy to go to the big wedgie down at Glen Elg, or he's the first guy to want to strap on skates and play some ice hockey in an activation. He wants to go play with the koalas and go up there. He just appreciates every opportunity of this experience and his play shows it. He's a happy guy down here. He certainly does as that one just gets away from Kramer Chamberlain. A big thank you to UQ Business School is a proud to be the preferred university partner of the ABL. UQ Business School challenging the future. So one ball, two strike offering on its way from Kramer. There we see a ground ball. Logan Waite, two hopper, sets himself, comes up and makes an accurate throw to David Sutherland. That's the way you design it if you're Kramer Champlin. Yeah, and a relaxed throw out there too, just off the one hopper. You never know how those bounce up sometimes, but obviously Logan Waite pretty prepared down there. He certainly is. And a big thank you to the Bendigo Bank buddies. What a fantastic program this has been all year. Bendigo Bank is a proud supporter of baseball in the Brisbane community and would like to acknowledge basically all the young players who have come through today Bendigo Bank and the ABL, bigger than baseball. So we hope all the Bendigo Bank buddies have enjoyed coming out with their heroes in the Australian Baseball League all year. Yeah, and, uh, and around the country as well too. It's been the same way in Adelaide. Uh, we've had a lot of kids come through there as well too. And it wasn't too long ago that Jordan McArdle would have been one of those Bendigo buddies down here. And uh, now just a couple years later, here he is playing, playing in the big show right here. Wow, and uh, exciting prospect is Alex Carter. Tonight's DH is one for one, so bite out to a 3-1 lead. We might run through some of those young kids that have come through the Bendigo Bank Little League. How about some of these names? Kai Hampton, who we've seen in the Australian Youngest Baseball winner. Wow. Mason Clavell, Curtis Mead, Jack O'Loughlin, Hayden and Christos Liberopoulos, Blake Cavill, Jesse Williams in the ABL, Chase Diggins, Jackson Boyd, Kieran Palmer, Nick Anderson-Vine. Hey, what about Jackson Riley, Brody Vasilakis, Ulrich Bajarski, Alex Hall, Liam Holm, Aidan Willis, Josh Bedgood, Dermot Fritch. Just an outstanding pathway and big things in store for the ABL for these young kids. And I think it really shows how important the ABL is because if you look back at the age of these of these kids that are coming up, you know, they're all between the ages of, of 15 and 18, the ones you just rattled off right there, some even a little bit younger. They would have been, you know, 8 to 11 years old when this league would have started to develop and you put these heroes out in front of them, something they can strive for and develop for, and it, it really creates that pathway. And now you see that gap is starting to be bridged in Australian talent coming up, and I think it has to be credited to this league. What else could it be? 2-2, two, two, high fly ball. Wade Dutton in shallow right field. Tracking back. Oh, tracking back and made a nice ice cream cone in shallow right field. Looked like Trent Ultra, and uh, uh, he was happy for Wade Dutton to track back, as good infielders do. They track back until the outfielders call them off. Never heard a call. Very important to get Alex Carter for the second out because now the top of the order for the second time tonight. Yeah, that was you're absolutely spot on with that one. A very important out. It's a completely different complexity of this inning if you have a runner on first right here. 
with uh, Clark and Cowan do up in the order. Instead, it's just one out you have to find rather than trying to protect yourself with a dangerous guy, especially with the wheels that, that Clark has. Well, wow, what about the wheels and the body? I'd like to swap bodies with this man if I could. Ladarius Clark was a running back back in 2011-12. How about his 40-yard dash? 4.38. When you clock, stop the clock at 4.38. Wow, this guy's a two-sport athlete. Hard hit ground ball. Logan Wade once again, fantastic hands, sets himself and makes a nice throw. A one, two, three inning. You're listening to Kevin Dean and Eric Bolner on the ABL PF presented by Ladbrokes. This is George Springer with the Houston Astros and you are watching Australian Baseball League. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Top Odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. This is Andrew McCutcheon with the Pittsburgh Pirates and you are watching the Australia Baseball League. Well, what an evening for baseball here at the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. Uh, we're, we're pleased to be bringing you the coverage here on Bandits TV and couldn't do it without one of our partners, Viva. Happy to be involved with the ABL and Baseball Australia. If you and your club are looking for new playing gear or apparel, contact Viva and they can fit you out like an ABL team. So uh, Viva, great South Australian company and fitting that there's a South Australian team in this ABL PF presented by Ladbrokes. Hey there, Kevin. Certainly is, and great to have Viva on board. Don't the teams look absolutely fantastic this year? Uh, I know all the players are comfortable. They feel the, the clothes are breathing, and they're great to hear Viv last night on the call. There we see a soft fly ball in the centre field. Mitch Denning will swallow this one up, and as we said, great to have Viv. And as you said, great to have a South Australian company involved, I do believe, at Grassroots Baseball, and now taking that next step up to the Australian Baseball League. And it's not just Grassroots Baseball on the Australian Baseball League. They do a lot of things in the community in general. You saw those uh, great canteen jerseys that they were wearing a few weeks ago that were proudly donated by Viv and they were auctioned off and all the proceeds were there. They donated part of their merch sales. I know you got a, you got a canteen jersey there too, Kevin, uh, but they, they do a lot of great things in the community, so it's, it's fantastic to have an Australian company do some good for the league here too. It certainly is. One out here in the bottom of the second bite leading 3-1 to one. and yes, I, uh, I did bid on a great, great uh, canteen's a great sponsor and I was happy to donate some money and I did win the Ladarius Clark and I thank you Eric there we see a soft infield ball Jordan McArdle in foul territory wow made good ground I thought for a second that was going to be a tough play and it was a tough play Jordan McArdle made it look easy yeah and what a difference in the in the two innings we saw that opening inning was just high scoring they were going right at each other pretty cutthroat almost and now uh it's uh it's turned into a bit of a defensive battle here is Wade Dutton I believe coming up to the to the plate here Certainly is. So two outs in the bottom of the second. So Eric is going to leave us after these two innings. He has some official work with the Adelaide Bite, proudly presented by SA Power Network. So a big thank you to the Adelaide Bite and Nathan Davidson for allowing Eric to come in with us here because it's been an absolute pleasure to have Eric and that little bit of Bite flavour up here in the box. Yeah, and I know we got a big crowd down there at Sporty's Bar and Grill at the Arkaba Hotel that are cheering on the Bite down there. I wish I could have been there with them, but I'm at the ballpark. So I hope, I hope they can forgive me. I know we've got about a dozen people sitting at the field itself if the weather still holds up in Adelaide on the big screen watching the game too so all around a few different watch parties in South Australia that means a lot to the bite we haven't like we I say we as in the Adelaide bite here haven't won a championship uh, since uh, I believe 81 so it's a uh 
it's a big deal for them. And you, you, I think you in Brisbane here are spoiled. You won one last year, so you know. I wasn't <laughs> going to mention the last one was uh, 37 80. years ago, but uh, I'm sure the Adelaide Bot will be looking to change that stat. And as you mentioned, and there's only been three winners in the new ABL, and that is Perth Heat the first two years. Canberra Cavalry wedged in there in the Asian Series. Perth Heat two again than the Brisbane Bandits last year. So three teams only in the six-team format. So uh, exciting things again. There we see a hard-hit ball with two outs. Wade Dutton hard up against the left-field wall. Has it got a chance? It has! A two-out solo blast over the borrow sign. Wade Dutton eats into this two-run lead. And now, Eric, the Bandits trail the bite. Three to two. Game on. That's it right here. I mean, that is a clutch two-out hit right there, and that is the production you're looking for from the nine hole as well, too, Bear. Bottom of the lineup and just delivers that big punch out to left field right there. It's a 3-2 ball game. If you're Adelaide, you know Brisbane are coming at you. They're, a, they're not the most conservative team in the league out there uh, by any stretch of the imagination. We are in for a shootout. The question is, how many runs is it going to take to win this ball game? Well, I think we're going to need double digits. We talked uh, during that break in the inning. I think we're going to see uh, maybe 10 runs, 11 runs, and I suggested 12, north of 12. I think you might want to reassess that seven mark. Yeah, I was saying seven or eight's <laughs> going to win it, but, I mean, the pace that we're on, it could be a little bit more than that. But you saw those games. They're... They were big sprints, really. It was who's going out the furthest and who's playing catch-up. It's a fascinating ball game to watch when they played it in Brisbane. And then in Adelaide, they've been these weird little, you know, defensive pitchers duel, and it, it's probably a product of the ballpark, but both teams playing hard, and they're playing each other close. It's awesome to watch. It certainly is, and great to have you with us. So a big thank you to Eric Bolner, uh, who will lead us at the end of this inning. So, wow, Wade Dutton with a solo blast with two outs, and we talk about... Uh, Two-out RBIs are crucial in any form of game of baseball, but certainly at the Australian Baseball League level. Yeah, and, and that, that top-to-order lineup is, is production from everybody is crucial. And you take a look at both the Bite and the Bandits lineup, and I'm not too sure there is a lineup as deep even, even looking at Melbourne and how good they are, it's so, so deep. And it looked like, as Eric was talking, Aaron Whitefoot was about uh, 30 foot on his way to first base and uh, home plate umpire Tommy West, who has a fantastic strike zone. A big thank you to all the men in blue around all the Australian Baseball League without the umpires and the scorers. We can't have a ball game. And a big thank you to the scorers, Gail Fletcher and Connie Stojakovic today, the game day Sharon Buddy. So a big thank you. And there we see a hard hit ball to centre field by Aaron Whitefield. That ball's got a chance. Looking up is Mitch Danning. Wow, we are tied at three apiece here at AFA Stadium. First of all, we have Wade Dutton with a solo blast and now Aaron Whitefield back-to-back -back jacks for the Brisbane Bandits. We said it last inning that we're going to look back at little key moments in this baseball game and I'd be pretty hard-pressed to say that that won't be a key moment right there. Back-to-back -back jacks, two outs. He had them both on two strikes and both of them going, going, going yard on Jack O'Loughlin and this is going to be a very, very interesting uh, last seven innings of this ball game right here. Both pitch counts getting up, both pitchers getting hit around a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, buckle up, folks. <laughs> Strap yourself in. We yeah. anyway, hope you're enjoying the coverage presented by Ladbroke. So uh, Eric Bolner and Kevin Dean in the box. And now this man, the damage doesn't stop there because then you look, Trent Olchin, first pitch swing. It looks like the shortstop, Jordan Cowan, on the edge of the dirt. So that's going to be the third out. Eric, thanks for coming in. We're through two innings here. And as Eric leaves us, three apiece. Bandits bite. Jason Hayward from Chicago Cubs, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Take me back to the throne. Do you feel that leash on you? Take me back, take me back. Fielder's Choice is the official team store of the Perth Heat and proud partner of baseball in Australia. With the best selection of baseball, softball, and t-ball equipment in the country, make Fielder's Choice your one-stop shop for gloves, bats, cleats, batting gloves, and more. And don't forget, you can even purchase your Heat tickets right in store. Heat win! Heat win! Heat win! 
Find our stores across the country in Perth, Melbourne, and Brisbane. And look out for Fielder's Choice functions at Heat Games and in Melbourne this season. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Peter Moylan from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So we're through two innings in the books here at AFA Stadium. Scores locked at three apiece by Bandits in the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. And a big thank you to all the boys at Gabba.com.au fans sitting behind home plate are thankful there's a net between them and all the action. And for that, you can thank the guys at Gabba Sporting Goods. Visit Gabba.com.au, a one-stop shop for all your sporting product needs. And that means it's time to introduce once again the man, to my right, Mr. Paul Gonzalez, dual Olympian, 2004 Olympic silver medalist who signed with the Padres in 1990. Paul, welcome to the broadcast. As there we see a little looper, Jordan Cowan. Wow. What a catch by Tommy Malone. Full stretch down the left field line as Paul Gonzalez joins us. Absolutely brilliant. And this is why we're here. This is playoff baseball. And that's when you see the intensity level from Major League Baseball to here increase to the next level. We're talking about... You know, guys are having quality at bats. They're making the big plays, and this is what they look forward to, the big stage. And tonight we got an outstanding crowd, a lot of corporates, and a big play by Malone in left field. Wow, that's a major league play. We might look back at that play as we see those two solo blasts with two outs leveling the ledger here three apiece. And now Tommy Malone comes up to Rob. Jordan Cowan of possibly extra bases. Well, it's a difference, and we talk about things that don't show up in the score box. Uh, that big play right there, if that ball drops, that's two, potentially three if the ball gets by him. So that potentially comes into a big factor. The other thing for Champlin, when your team scores, and we talked about this, you put up a run, uh, two solo home runs to tie this ball game 3-3, and all of a sudden, what do you need to do? you got to put up a zero. Get a first out right there. That's big for his confidence, and that's what he needs right now. So Kramer Champlin, top of the third, 1-1 one, one count to the number three hole hidden. And one of the guys uh, the Bandits have nightmares over, Mitch Denny. Well, uh, not just the Bandits. I think all of Australia have, <laughs> have an issue in Japan and, and everybody else that has to face him. But this is what you rise to the occasion. you got to face these big-time hitters. And he's been the big threat all year with the, in the Australian Baseball League. And like I said, not only good for the bite, but also good for Team Australia. These guys from here obviously break. They go to Korea uh, and for, for the trial games, and then they go to Japan to compete for Australia for, to, to really win that pool. And I think if you keep these guys hot, um, they can be the difference. Off the end of the bat, third baseman Kevin Padlow in perfect position, fires across to David Sutherland. Wow, two quick outs. So after an offensive explosion by the Adelaide Bite in the top of the first, putting up a crooked number, Kramer Champlin has really settled into his night's work. And he has. You look at him, he's working down in the zone. He wor he's working quickly. And we talked about really the difference in the second half with him. He started picking up his tempo. He started utilizing his defense more. Didn't try to become a power arm. D He's doing what he does best. He's that, that two-seamer, that sinker ball, getting ground balls, getting the quick outs, and, and really re reducing his workload. So if he can continue to do this from three to, let's say, six, then we can get back in the bullpen and see if they can do some work like they did last night. And both uh, rosters, we spoke pre-game to Steve Mintz and Dave Nielsen, all 21 other than McNabb and Justin Erasmus are available. So the rosters and the bullpens run deep tonight. They do. And like I said, an outstanding job by both sides last night. Got a chance to watch that. And a great job by that team uh, in, in that telecast. We were um, at my place, actually had a barbecue and a few nachos with some of the staffers. My bad, Kevin. I didn't think you'd drive the Gold Coast for that. But the reality was it was a great game from both sides. Tight ball game, well pitched, well executed, and good job by both sides offensively to, to create the offense they did in the nine. And this man who created the offense in the top half of the first with a two-run bomb looks a big prospect, Marcus Green Jr. Two balls, one strike, and he slaps one to right field. Wow, this guy's got Major League written all over him. He's two for two in today's ball game and has five total bases with two RBIs already. Yeah, and you know what? You talk about guys that like to rise to the occasion. And, and, and he, he seems the guy that right, feeds off the energy of the crowd. Some guys, it intimidates them. Other guys, they rise. Right now, he's a guy that goes, I love the energy of the crowd, and he's using it to his advantage. And don't you like to see those young guys? And sometimes they come out, as you mentioned, you've played all around the world, Paul. Isn't it nice to play domestically in front of your big home crowd and rise to that occasion? Well, it is. And it's a catch-22 because you, you also feel pressures. I mean, the pressures are really that you are in front of your home crowd, so sometimes you can over try but 
one of the advantages for the Bandits is last year, a lot of these players, they, they competed in front of their home crowd all year, in front of their family and friends, and they know the feeling now. So I think that doesn't become an obstacle this year, and they just go out there and play their game. So two outs in the top of the third, 3-3 three, three ball game. That one's hit hard, but foul by Steph Welch in the right field line. So once again, aggressive approach by the Adelaide Bite. 1-1 one, one count. And a big thank you to Fraser and Phil on the call last night and to all the commentary teams around the ABL. Chris and Anthony down there in Canberra, Andrew in Sydney, uh, Dan, uh, Paul and Simon over in the west, and of course Craig and Brendan down south. So a big thank you to all the commentators who have done a fantastic job around the Australian Baseball League this year. There we see oh. that breaking pitch. Sorry, split finger on the outside and a big swing and a miss from Steph Welch. Yeah, good pitch right there. And we know Welshie. Great hitter, you know, and, and a great competitor. Once again, another uh, a team Australian player that will go away and play in Japan, the WBC. So he's a tough out. So Champlin knows he's in the meat of the order. He's got to make sure he executes his pitches in the right location. One ball, two strike. The runner's on the way. David Rodriguez comes up throwing to Logan Wade, applies mm. the tag in oh. time. And Marcus Green Jr. is tagged out. And that's going to bring Steve Mintz out of the dugout. So we might just stay with the action for a second because Steve Mintz is shot out of the dugout and he's out to the second base umpire, Mr. Paul Ladder. So Paul Ladder, ex-ABL player. Uh, he's going to have a chat with Steve Mintz. So second base just behind second base. And there we go. There the guys will just cruise in. Paul Ladder, ex-ABL player. Wow, good throw from David Rodriguez. So we will head to the bottom of the third. Scores locked at three apiece between the Bite and the Bandits. This is Brandon Bell with the San Francisco Giants, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. After about 10 years at Bingley, we reckon our staff are getting the hang of it. It's not nice to talk to people who know what they're talking about. Gamble responsibly. This is David Wright with the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So we head to the bottom of the third inning. Scores locked at three apiece here in the ABL. Preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes, and great to have Ladbrokes with us. Head to ladbrokes.com.au where you will find markets on all games in the preliminary finals and championship series. T's and C's apply. Gamble responsibly. So, wow, here we go. Bottom of the third, Paul. If you want offense, looks like we're going to have an offensive explosion here tonight at AFA Stadium. Yeah, it is. And I tell you what, I, I credit to this young arm. You know, he's got a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, when we talk about when you have to, you know, create makeup of a player, pitching in front of this crowd for this young man is absolutely fantastic for his future. Um, he gets playoff baseball experience. He gets big crowd experience, and the energy in AFA Stadium tonight is electric. So these are really positive building blocks for this young man, and he's got, he's got fantastic stuff. So at the end of the day, Bennett's is going to battle, um, but they've shown they're ready to rise to the occasion, especially tonight. He certainly is. Jacko Lachlan, three balls, one strike to Mitch Nielsen. 
So Mitch now in a good hitting count. Bottom of the third. Scores locked at three apiece. Paul Gonzalez and Kevin Dean from Bandits TV. Big thank you to all the team at Hale Storm Productions. Jack O'Loughlin delivers big swing by Mitch. Fouls it straight back to the screen. And how's Jack O'Loughlin signed by Kevin Hooker, who was a good ABL player himself who you played against, Paul, with the Detroit Tigers. And once again, the Adelaide bite we spoke with Eric have two of the youngest guys at 16, Kai Hampton and this man, Jack O'Loughlin to pick up wins in the ABL this year. Yeah, and like like I once again mentioned how this is for his professional development because a lot a lot of the game is 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 mental. It's between the lines. Um, so in, in in reality, we've got to make sure that we continue to nurture that because he's going to be the future of the game, especially a left-handed pitcher. So Mitch Nielsen at the plate, bottom of the third. Three, four, five, drop. There we see a ground ball going to be a tough play. Jordan Cowan charges in, sets himself well, and makes an accurate throw to Jordan McArdle. A highlight play defensively. Two great shortstops on display here in the preliminary final at AFA Stadium. Logan Wade, the switch hitter, and Jordan Cowan, the Seattle Mariners prospect, Paul. Fantastic defense from both of these young shortstops. Yeah, look, man, he's fantastic. I got a chance to watch him last series. I went to Adelaide, and, and he's brilliant defensively. Very solid baseball player. He's got multiple skills, quality at bats. Defensively, he's solid uh, for the bite, and that's what you need. When you talk about someone that really solidifies the defense, we always talk about the, the, the center of the, of the field. So really, your center fielder, your shortstop, and your catcher, and Adelaide ticks all the boxes. They've got three really good players between Denning, uh, your young catcher, Green, and your shortstop, and the bandits in reverse with Rodriguez, Logan, and obviously Whitefield. So the spine, as we like to call it, up the middle. Jack O'Loughlin delivers. Ooh. Now he's working quickly. So after giving up a one and a two spot in the bottom of the second, it looks like Jack O'Loughlin has settled down. 1-1 one, one to the hottest hitter, David Rodriguez. And like I said, this is great for his composure, and he's he's been solid. You know, I mean, obviously you can see the two solo home runs, but solo home runs do not beat you. It's the it's the walk and the bloop and the blast that beat you. Uh, so he's done a good job tonight to contain this uh, bandit's offense. He certainly has. And uh, once again, David Rodriguez on that 20-game hitting streak signed with Tampa Bay on 5th of August 2012 was the MVP of the Summer League in Venezuela for the Tampa Bay Rays. It comes with big prospects. Ooh. There we see chasing that fastball, and he goes down a very important strikeout, two outs here in the bottom of the third. And, and that's impressive. We've seen Rodriguez all, all year. He's hitting at a 5-4-6-2 a clip, you know, all throughout the year, and he's been one of the hottest hitters since he's come off the plane in, in Christmas. Um, and this shows the composure of this young man at 16 to come in and, and strike out a quality hitter like Rodriguez. And now with two outs in the bottom of the third, scores locked at 3-3. Logan Wade makes his way to the plate, and Jack O'Loughlin once again starts him off with a strike, which is fouled straight back to the screen. Yeah, fell straight back. And like I said, this is a battle. And, and for, for the veteran hitters, they know the youth on the mound, so they, they step up to the challenge. Um, in my career, talk about youth, I got a chance to face Daisuke Matsuzaka out of high school, 18 years of old, 18 years of age, but he's blowing 94 to 96 at 18 years of age. So that was a challenge. It was a different <laughs> level. But I tell you what, it's always fun because as a veteran guy, you're like going, there's no way an 18-year-old guy gets me out. So load early. Load early. <laughs> load early. <laughs> but um, like I said, this has been exciting tonight for, for both sides. Um, and, and once again, another big crowd here in Brisbane. And, and the fan support has been outstanding. And as we mentioned, big thank you to all the volunteer support staff from Corey in the merchandise to our CEO, Mr. Mark Rudy, our GM, Paul Gonzalez. A fantastic year for all volunteers and staff here at the Brisbane Bandits. And there we see Logan oh. Wade. Oh, off. Jack O'Loughlin off the back. He recovers and makes a nice throw. Wow, that had single written all over it. So three innings in the books. Bennett's in the bite. Three apiece here at AFA Stadium. Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Charlie, have you closed the back door? Really has been a humiliating defeat 
We've all had regrets, but your home loan shouldn't be one of them. At Bendigo Bank, we know a great rate means nothing without great service. Bendigo Home Loans. When it's time for you to settle, have no regrets. One Business School is opening up new opportunities for graduates, as well as new markets, and innovating for tomorrow without sacrificing what we have today. All by challenging the future. UQ Business School. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head to head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Judy Gorius with the New York Yankees, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So welcome back to the Australian Baseball League preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes where through three innings and scores are locked at three apiece, Bite and the Bandits and once again uh, doing a phenomenal job across all ballparks around Australia that is the boys from Gabba.com.au for batting cages, protective netting, foul poles, anything, you name it these guys can do it, we're lucky enough to be joined from one of those guys, young Dustin from Gabba.com.au Dusty, great to have you in the box. Thanks very much. Uh, fantastic to be here tonight, and uh, certainly Brisbane's turned on the crowd again. They certainly have, and I know you do a, a big supporter of all things baseball. We look down the right field and the left field foul poles. We see those foul poles that were from the SCG. We look at the backdrop in Sydney that you guys provided at the SCG, which is now at Blue Sox Stadium. Uh, just an absolutely outstanding job. We talk about how important the netting is, and these nets are absolutely fantastic from your business. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Predominantly a, uh, a cricket background from our uh, from our family business, obviously third generation. Uh, we've been with ABL now for three years. Uh, the M uh, MLB launch down in Sydney was the uh, the opening uh, down there for the uh, for that launch. So uh, it was fantastic to be a part of that from uh, from a company point of view. So Steph Welch steps in. Two balls, one strike here in the top of the fourth. Kramer Champlin doing a good job for the Bennett's. Just misses outside, three balls, one strike. You talk about, uh, I guess, your links with cricket and then into baseball, a relatively uh, new, I uh, guess, attraction for you guys. Uh, what was the interest in baseball with, obviously, the quality products that you guys provide here around the ABL? Well, really, uh, coming here to Windsor was uh, was our first opening for a, for a baseball facility, and obviously, uh, from what we can see here tonight, this has been, uh, stood the test of time four years now. Uh, four years on, and uh, it's still it's still going strong. This uh, this back net's probably the biggest one uh, standing in the in the ABL throughout all the grounds, and uh, I think there's been a couple of big storms go through here in Brisbane, and uh, it's still looking as good as it was day dot. It looks absolutely fantastic. We've had balls stuck in it, we've had bats stuck in it. Uh, I, I saw you repairing it a couple of weeks ago. It looks great, as we just see Stephen Welch get aboard via a walk. So in the top of the fourth, the bite have the leadoff man on. So Kramer Champlin now needs to bear down because he's facing six, seven, eight and that is Angus Roger at the plate. So we'll just stay with the call. There we see the runner going outside. David Rodriguez comes up, throwing it away. Dutton applies the tag, and Paul Ladder rings Stefan Welch up. So as quickly Steph got on, he's then picked off by David Rodriguez on the tag by Wade Dutton. Wow, good piece of baseball by the Bandits. Fantastic, uh, fantastic play there by the boys. So uh, I'm not sure who we got up now. We have young Angus Roger at the plate for the bite. And I look down the right field line, Dusty. Uh, talk us through the installation process now of this great batting facility that we have here at AFA Stadium. Well, those, uh, those batting cages there were the original ones from the MLB launch in Sydney. Um, Adrian Lamb, a, uh, a member here at the club here, was, uh, was fairly influential in making that happen along with, uh, along with Mark Reedy and the rest of the team. Uh, so, so pretty much uh, the Reedy boys made those happen uh, and brought those up by truck uh, from, from down in Sydney and obviously what we've, what we've got here as a showpiece today is, uh, is two batting cages that I've, I've heard are uh, to major league standards uh, which is fantastic to hear from the boys around the grounds. They are. I've had a look down there and they're a fantastic facility, not only, as you said, for the ABL, but grassroots baseball. And I know you're a big supporter of grassroots baseballs. We just paused for a second, one ball, two strikes, and that just missing inside. It's a good location from Kramer. Evens the count now at two balls, two strikes, one out in the top of the fourth. And I know personally you're a big supporter of grassroots baseball. And that must give you a lot of uh, pride and satisfaction to look out here that the young guys and girls get a lot of enjoyment from your products. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the report back from Adrian Lamb is that uh, 
they've never had so many guys want to turn up to, to training of, of an afternoon. Uh, apparently, uh, he's had to actually try and rustle the boys up to get them out of the cages, uh, obviously due to the, uh, the time restraint with lighting and that type of thing late in the evening. So lots of people wanting to use the batting cages till at least 9, 10 o'clock at night, which is fantastic to see for baseball. It certainly is. So there we just watch Angus Roger go down via the strikeout. So two outs here in the top of the fourth. Thanks for joining us on the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. Kramer Champlin doing an outstanding job for the Brisbane Bandits here with two outs in the top of the fourth. And it looks like Jordan McArdle takes a ball outside. An Australian business, so great to have an Australian business, homegrown talent. And, and, and run us through what are the other avenues uh, the guys can get in contact with you and why they would want to get in contact with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, well we're, uh, we're producing batting mats, uh, which have been a very key part of uh, some of the club facilities around the ground. We've got uh, Redcliffe Padres, which we've done some batting cages for. Um, Carina Red Sox, which are two local clubs here that, are, uh, that have obviously got some fairly fantastic facilities that we've been a part of. Uh, batting cages, bullpens, um, safety barrier netting, which is, a, which is a key one you can see down there in the dugouts for the boys, uh, protecting them from the balls that fly off the bats uh, nice and close. So uh, lots of those little key avenues are also corresponding across into cricket as well. So uh, lots of different quality netting suiting, suiting certain areas. So uh, yeah, Gabba Sports really enjoying being a part of the ABL. So there we go, a ground board away Dutton and we head to the bottom of the fourth with the scores locked at three apiece. This is Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows, the gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Charlie, have you closed the back door? We've all had regrets, but your home loan shouldn't be one of them. At Bendigo Bank, we know a great rate means nothing without great service. Bendigo Home Loans. When it's time for you to settle, have no regrets. One Business School is opening up new opportunities for graduates, as well as new markets, and innovating for tomorrow without sacrificing what we have today. All by challenging the future. UQ Business School. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Julio Gorius with the New York Yankees and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So scores locked at three apiece. Bottom of the fourth ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. The boys at Gabba.com today you will stay with us. Jack Lachlan starts us off outside to Kevin Padlow. Tommy Malone and David Sutherland due up. And we talked, Dustin, about what the Gabba guys and yourself have done around here at AFA Stadium. Talk us about through the other developments across the ABL ballparks that uh, obviously we can see your hard work and the Australian produced products that you guys produce. Yeah, well, the, uh, the most recent facility that was done uh, through the ABL was Adelaide Shores. Uh, very fitting tonight that Adelaide are up here. But uh, six-lane indoor batting cage down there in, uh, in Adelaide Shores, not far from the airport. Also, we were, uh, we were well involved in the engineering um, and the aspect of pulling up the, uh, the back, back net there in Adelaide off the, off the grandstand. So uh, I suppose the key part for the company is that uh, we can customise anything that, that, that suits the, uh, the current facilities or setup. So I like the fact that it's not a manufactured like it's a 3B3 and that's it. You guys tailor make anything that your clients may ask you to do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's all manufactured here in, in Brisbane. We've got our own steel fabrication. Uh, very customised to the uh, to the job and also uh, netting. Netting comes in raw from overseas and then it's all customised uh, within our factory in Cooparoo. So uh, anything can be shipped around the country and, and then obviously our team of guys can get out there and, uh, and make it happen. And that's the best way you like to do business on that personal level. And I've had personal dealings with you in the past. I like the fact that you guys are a personal business. As you said, local. You're happy to go around and custom make things. And then obviously the support after that because not only installation, as we see Kevin Padlow get a ball via the walk a lot of the times when you install something and I know this from personal experience you're also there uh, that, that back end if something does go wrong you're on hand to fix any problems in the future 
Yeah, well, the convenience of uh, flights around the country these days can have us on hand and there uh, pretty well that day or the next day. Um, and I suppose having having such a hand-on approach through the company, we, we know our product well. Uh, most of the netting uh, that, that we put up is, is all personally done ourselves. We send a team of blokes around. We've got a, a guy overseeing and project managing them right from the engineering through to the actual construction of the netting and, and straining of wires. And is that an exciting part of your business? I know we've talked netting and we'll talk about more across the product range, but uh, I imagine netting takes up a big proportion or big percentage of your uh, of your revenue, I guess, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. Uh, probably 80% of our of our works is construction of sporting facilities, whether that be cricket, uh, baseball. We've got a very big in with the Australian Football League as well, as far as AFL barrier netting. So I suppose across the board for all sports, based on the on the speed of the ball off the bat, we're uh, we're pretty key to, to protecting the uh, the spectators as well as the players as well. And I'm sure all the staff here thank you because you're doing a good job protecting all the crowds around the ABL. So Tommy Malone at the plate and he takes a ball two inside. So a big moment. We might just go back with us. Dustin will stay with us for the bottom half of the fourth inning. Looks like the third baseman Stephen Welch is playing very shallow because we could see some small ball here from Dave Nielsen and the Brisbane Bandits. Kevin Padlow aboard via the walk. The corners will be crashing in. Two balls here in the bottom of the fourth. Scores locked at three apiece. Jack O'Loughlin once again kicks and delivers. This time just hitting the outside edge. So a big pitch for Jack O'Loughlin. Two balls, one strike on the very dangerous Tommy Malone. Tommy was one for four in last night's ball game with a 246 average across the season and certainly possesses a lot of power and speed. This young man from the Charlotte Stone Crabs. Pick number 97 in the draft for the Tampa Bay Rays. Jack O'Loughlin kicks there. We see the runner going there. We see a sacrifice bunt, but just drifting foul. So Stefan Welch in perfect position. The runner will have to come back. And talking about, I know there's some uh, uh, things in the nation's capital that you're involved in early stages. Can you talk us through perhaps the Canberra Cavalry connection and Dan Amodio? Yeah, Dan, well, uh, Dan contacted us uh, going back a couple of months now um, and recently got in contact with us again. So we're tendering for the project down in, uh, in Canberra which uh, I believe is going to be uh, a, a, almost a replication of, uh, of what was done in Adelaide. Maybe not as, as big a scale, but certainly uh, a nice bunch of batting cages there to get the cavalry uh, on the game as well. Two balls, two strikes, and then we see a big swing. So a key strikeout for Jack O'Loughlin and one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, my mistake. I got ahead of myself. No, I thought... Is that strike three? Yes, it is strike three. Tommy Malone come back. He thought he wanted strike four, but uh, three strikes, same rules as last year, Dustin. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Not much has changed, eh? <laughs> I, I, Tommy shocked me then because I thought it was strike three. Then I looked up and he's standing at the uh, at the outer edge of the batting cage saying, come on, give me another go, but that's not to be. So David Sutherland makes his way to the plate here with one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jack O'Loughlin doing a good job. There we see that hard fastball. And you like the look of this young man, 16 years of age, signed with the Detroit Tigers, and uh, he's going to be key to Australian baseball moving forward. Uh, definitely. Uh, to see a bloke of 16 years of age at this level is absolutely fantastic. And I know um, you know, guys guys in that age group from a cricket perspective have certainly got a, got a fantastic future ahead. So this looks promising for the Adelaide bite. It certainly does. So just nicking the outside edge for strike two. And talk us through, we've talked about baseball, and I guess that's why we're here. But Talk us through the other sports and why, uh, I guess, Gabba.com.au is involved in a whole host of sporting, uh, I guess, agreements and uh, products around Australia. Well, predominantly Gabba was uh, obviously linked to the Brisbane Cricket Ground, so three generations in the in the family business, started by my grandfather. So it dates right back to the old uh, cricket training facilities within and underneath the grandstands of the Gabba. So we've known all about cricket facilities and training facilities from a, from a very young age, and obviously that's that's blossomed across all all boards of, uh, of different sports. AFL, uh, we've done the, uh, the Sydney Cricket Ground or the Sydney Football Stadium behind goal netting. Uh, the Brisbane Cricket Ground as well from a, from a cricket indoor and outdoor perspective but also AFL as well. So a wide range of sports we're involved with and uh, certainly... And then we see David Sutherland put a charge in one of centre field, but playable, making good ground is Mitch Denning. Tracking back to first is Kevin Padlow. Wow, good piece of defence from the centre fielder. David Sutherland gave it a ride, but unfortunately just come up short here at AFA Stadium. Key out for the second out here in the bottom of the fourth. Sorry, uh, continue, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so obviously uh, some pretty pretty nice facilities done around the country on, on, on the cricket side of things. Uh, we've covered most of the major grounds, if not all of the major grounds around the, around the country on a cricket perspective. Um, 
we've been heavily involved with the ICC, which is the International Cricket Council for facilities in, in Dubai and the UAE, um, out in the middle of, uh, of the UAE for uh, UAE cricket, which is uh, uh, playing in the ICC uh, championships, um, Southeast Asia Pacific, so uh, the boys in PNG, Vanuatu, that type of grassroots cricket as well, which is really a, a big part of the International Cricket Council's vision for cricket as a whole, and really cricket being almost 12 months of the year now, it's a massive part of, uh, of their training that they need quality facilities, quality surfaces, and, and that protective oh and uh, standard, which was always lacking across, uh, across, the, uh, across the club grounds uh, where uh, they're training so often now, that, that, that real safety aspect is massive, especially with the, the legalities across Australia these days. You really need to make sure that you've got top-notch facilities around the place and you've still got that safety aspect. Certainly is, and uh, quality, if you're looking for quality, the boys at gabba.com.au are the boys to see. So Wade Dutton with that solo blast with two out in the first inning, now bats with two outs with one aboard here in the bottom of the fourth, and he takes a hard fastball inside for ball three. So three, uh, two balls, one strike here with Dustin with us from gabba.com.au. Ray Ruiz running through the signs, the birthday boy. Happy birthday to Ray. Great to have Ray with us down in the third base coach's box and Adrian Lamb in the first base coach's box. So two balls, one strike to Wade Dutton. Jack O'Loughlin checks the runner at first and delivers. And that one's hit sharply to right field. Right footer making ground. Angus Roger makes good ground to his right. And that'll put the fourth inning in the books. Scores locked at three apiece. So from Dustin, if you're looking for quality sporting goods, gabba.com.au are the boys to see. So Dustin, a big thank you to coming in tonight. Thanks very much. Fantastic to be a part of the ABL and uh, fantastic to, uh, to see some great baseball going on here tonight. Uh, hopefully uh, the best team wins. There we go. We'll throw to a break. This is Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Charlie, have you closed the back door? We've all had regrets, but your home loan shouldn't be one of them. At Bendigo Bank, we know a great rate means nothing without great service. Bendigo Home Loans. When it's time for you to settle, have no regrets. One Business School is opening up new opportunities for graduates, as well as new markets, and innovating for tomorrow without sacrificing what we have today. All by challenging the future. UQ Business School. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Julio Gorius with the New York Yankees, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So welcome back to the Australian Baseball League preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. And a big thank you for staying with us. Uh, I know we got a bit off track there with Dustin, but we really like to acknowledge our sponsors and grassroots level. And a big thank you to the boys from Gabba.com.au for coming in. I know we've got a big game, so I apologise for that. Top of the fifth, scores locked at three apiece, and Paul Gonzalez joins us as Josh Altman makes his way to the plate. How about this game? Uh, absolutely. If we get back on the baseball side, obviously the commercial side is so important. And uh, just from the fans' perspective, they allow the league to run without the support of our partners you know we don't have a league so it, it's vital that we continue to connect with them and build our relationships and show up showcase really the best talent in australia and and, and what a stage to do it and tonight these guys have done an outstanding job of putting on a good show so here we go kramer champlin to commence the top half of the fifth inning scores locked at three apiece here at afa stand there we see a little push bunt by josh altman foul down the first baseline so once again you get into that middle part of the ball game paul scratch work for a run any way you can as we talk about this is the business end of the game this is when we talk about five onward is when you'll see a lot of the managers taking control of the ball game from one to five really they'll let the players play their game but five onward, that's when you'll start seeing hit and runs. You'll start seeing bunny in situations. Guys will maybe maybe take a pitch. You'll start seeing uh, guys stealing bags, but it'll be on uh, a coach's call. So this is when it gets fun for me. 
It certainly does, and there we see just on the outside edge. Great location from Kramer Champlin. Now working ahead of Josh Altman. No balls, two strikes. Working from the wind-up. David Rodriguez flashes the signs. Kramer working quickly, just missing outside. And a big thank you to Delta Airlines. Together with Virgin Australia, Delta Airlines offers three daily flights to LA, including two flights from Sydney and one from Brisbane. So a big thank you to Delta Airlines. Kramer Champlin, there we see an off-speed pitch hit hard up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. So once again, Adelaide Bight doing a good job via Josh Altman getting that lead-off man on here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, that's a good job of pitching right there. A good location and a good pitch. And, and from my perspective, good job of hitting. Just didn't try to do too much. Stay in the middle of the diamond. And that's a good, that's a great start for the bite here in the fifth inning. It certainly is. So now you see that bullpen burst into life. So it looks like Ryan Roland Smith is up in the Bandits bullpen after working an inning last night. And all hands on deck, Paul. You talk about it doesn't matter if you pitched last night or whatever. There's only two guys that are out. That's Justin Erasmus and McNabb are the only guys off limits. Everyone's on board. Absolutely. And now we talk about business end right here. So a little timeout call by Rodriguez. Looks like they're just going to have a little conversation. Right? Don't know what the context of the meeting will be. But obviously you're just going to call whether it's... Um, an injury timeout. But this one talking about business in fifth inning, they may look at a potential bunt situation to then get to the top of the order with an opportunity to try to drive a runner in from second base. But it may be an injury timeout because whether it be, and I'm not sure if he's got a blister on the finger or potential whatever, but it looks like the trainers come out and, and can't be determined at this stage. So that might give us a quick chance to thank some of our sponsors. Uh, Hertz Australia, proud partners of the Australian Baseball League. In celebration of our partnership, we are offering all baseball enthusiasts exclusive discount of 20% off on rentals all summer long. So head over to hertz.com.au slash the ABL to find out more. So a big thank you to Hertz. And uh, as, you, as you mentioned, Paul, it looks like Bobby Joe and Dave Nielsen have come out. And Dave's just going through the lineup card with home plate umpire Tommy West. So it looks like... Everything may be okay with Kramer Champlin. Yeah, look, it, it did. And, and like I said, I, I don't know what's happened right there. Looks like now they're, they're just going to ask the question, potentially uh, uh, a pending injury. Um, but look, it doesn't seem like anything is coming to crew. Now we're talking about, now we're back at the ball game. Now we're back at the business end. We've got our number nine hitter at the plate. This is probably when the chance you'll see a guy potentially put the ball down to advance the runner to then give the top of an order a chance to drive in a run with a man on second base and one out. So Josh Altman with a good lead here in the top of the fifth. Scores locked at three apiece. Kramer Champlin to the DH. Alex Carter at the plate. And Alex takes a cord strike down at the base of the strike zone. Michael Dunn flashing the signs in the third base coach's box. Mark Chandler in the first base coach's box for the Adelaide Bite. So Alexander Christopher Carter at the plate for the Adelaide Bite. Sign with the Rockies, but uh, has never played pro ball. And then we see a little Ooh. check swing and a good pitch to Kramer Champlin after that little mound visit by Dave Nielsen. Looks like he's come back strong. Absolutely. And, and, and the main, main thing right there, 0-2 count. And that takes the bun out of play now. So, you know, you would think potentially with the number nine hitter up in a, in a leadoff base hit, potentially put him in score position, but they chose not to. They're going to let him swing the bat keep him close right there and obviously that's just to keep the double play in order so now he's got to force him to put the ball in play can he induce the ground ball and potentially get two and then get himself out of a jam so a big part of today's ball game the crowd starting to find their voice hope you're enjoying the coverage from hail storm productions paul gonzalez and kevin dean in the box kramer champlin the 0-2 on the way and that is fouled out of play and a big thank you to conoco phillips for all their sponsorship of the foul balls. And uh, I know, Paul, you were close to that young man who was struck early in the ball game. You can bring us a quick injury update on the young man. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, one of our major partners, Chorus Call, uh, Morley Foster, it was his son. And, and unfortunately, the ball uh, was able to just squeeze around the, the netting. And, you know, the netting's provided by Gavin. It actually is beyond international standards. And unfortunately, just caught him in the back of the head. He has recovered. He's at, uh, I think, they for, for precautionary reasons, they've checked him into the hospital. Uh, and looks like a big out number one for the Brisbane, but he'll check out okay. We'll find out more, obviously, as the night progresses, but it looked like he was he was um, coherent um, and it's just precautionary measures to, to make sure he gets to the hospital and gets checked out. So let's hope the young man is okay. So a big punch out there by Kramer Champlin. One out here in the top of the fifth and a very dangerous top of the order now coming up with 
Josh Altman remaining on first, and that is Ladarius Clark. And this man we talked about, a running back, uh, split time across the 40-yard dash, blistering speed and power, Ladarius Clark. Yeah, physical tools, big league tools, straight away. I mean, and we talk about he's a big-time prospect with the, with the Rangers organization. The reality is he just got, he needs more at-bats, more innings to really understand the depth of the game. And when I talk about not the physical component, because he can play in the big leagues right now physically, is this the mental approach and the game plan at the plate. And once he gets that, he's going to be a guy that's going to be an impact guy in the big leagues. 55 stolen bases across two seasons for the Rangers and similar to, uh, I guess, similar uh, styles to Aaron Whitefield, different chemical makeup of the body, but similar in they've got speed, speed, speed. Absolutely. And what we talked about is heart. you can't teach speed and you can't defend speed. You know, if you have it, it's just a, it's a, it's a great tool for any athlete. Um, Whitefield has been able to combine not only speed, but his game plan and his approach at the plate for his age is beyond his years. So for me, he's the future of Australian baseball. This young man, he's probably the future of MLB baseball in the next three to four years. And what about how would you like to have Ladarius Clark and Marcus Green Jr. when you're writing your lineup out as a manager? Well, and that's the thing. That's why these young men are here. It's, it's more at-bats. It's more experience. It's developing game plans to help them get to the next level. So Kramer Champlin delivers down low. And then we see David Rodriguez with a soft throw behind the runner. No problem for Josh Altman. And uh, we know David Rodriguez has a very good arm. But on this occasion, just tosses it down behind Josh Altman. So two balls, one strike to this young man, Ladarius Clark. Pick number 348 in the draft. 12th rounder, one of those mid-tier signings who was certainly exploded onto the scene here in the Australian Baseball League. Kramer Champlin checks the runner and delivers a big Ooh. swing, fouled straight back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Champlin got away with that one. That, that breaking ball's up in the strike zone, and that's where he doesn't want to be uh, to, to a dangerous hitter like that. So he probably got away with one. When that ball's down and away, it's a tough pitch to hit. Little bit up, fouled it off, keeps the at-bat alive. 2-2 two, two here with one out here in the fifth. Kramer Champlin. The bullpen is warm. Ryan Roland-Smith has stopped throwing, so he's ready to go with the left-hander, Jordan Cowan, in the on-deck circle. 2-2, tries him with the high fastball. Not biting is Ladarius Clark. So runs the count full. Three balls, two strikes now on the leadoff man. So good battle right here. Kramer Champlin will be trying to induce the ground ball. Double play to get out of this inning. Speed on the base pass. There goes the runner on the go, and that one's hit into right field. Trent Olchin on the fly ball. Josh Altman retreats back to first base and a good pitching sequence by Kramer Champlin. Yeah, that's a big out for the Brisbane Bandits on a tough, tough hitter. So now the threat's away. You've got the leadoff hitter and all of a sudden now you've got two outs men on first base. Changes the game, especially when you've got two, three, four, five coming to the plate. And that is really the danger part of the Bites uh, lineup. Looks like there may be a pitching change. Um, and, and David's looking at his situation. Look at the number of pitches. And this is where his skill sets really come into play. Big league catcher can read signs. Champlin's done a brilliant job tonight. Absolutely done exactly what he, David needed him to do tonight. And he's going to make a change. Probably what's in the best interest of the Bandits tonight. And that looks like it could be this double barreled action. Ooh, looks like he's gone ahead and, and stuck with him. So he's probably saying, you know what? This is going to be your last inning. Finish strong, and then if he has to, he'll make a change. So, and that's what big league catcher will do. Normally, you'll see a pitching coach go in that situation, and he might have gone back into catcher mode and said, "Hey, you got one more hitter. I need you to bear down. Let's get out of this inning." And I like the confidence that Dave has shown in Kramer Champlin. Four and two thirds. Hey, I've got full confidence in you to face the number two hitter, one of the hottest hitters in the Adelaide Bite lineup, Jordan Cowan. And that's a reminder too. You know what? Make good pitches, execute. You got two outs. You've done a good job. Keep the ball down, and that's why you keep the ball down. They go like this because if you keep, if you elevate, he will elevate on the baseball. So, balls hit hard down the first baseline for a foul, and that's a leadoff strike. So, work down in the zone, and I look like David's looking at Rodriguez right now, just looking at some signs. So the catcher will get a good indication to his manager about the, the velocity, the location of his starting man, and sometimes just tip the manager off to say, hey, he might be done or he's still going strong. That's what was great. I mean, and, and I'll, I'll go back, obviously, to David as an example. When, he, when David was catching for Team Australia in 2004, you know, he did a lot of the thought process, and, and Diebel knew he could rely on him because he could read whether the pitcher still had his stuff or, or maybe he lost a little bit and it was time to make a change. That's what you get when you've got a veteran-type guy like this. Now David's probably saying, you know, some parts of the game I'll take control of well, on, on signs that I see. Good pitch, good location. 
Wow, gets ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. So can Kramer Champlin for the Bandits get through this inning or can the bite edge through and break this deadlock at three apiece with a big man? Because as you mentioned, with Mitch Denning in the on-deck circle, suffice to say, this is Kramer Champlin's last hitter. Well, this will be it. If he doesn't get this guy out in this situation, you'll get uh, Roland Smith coming out to face the lefties. Uh, and obviously you'll get your big leaguer out to face the, the tough hitters. And then we see one hit through the 5-6 gap. So doing a great piece of hitting is Jordan Cowan with two outs. Laces a ground ball to Tommy Malone. The runner holds up at second base in the shape of Josh Altman. And Dave Nilsson is already on his way. And I'm sure Kramer Champlin doesn't want to turn around because he knows Dave's on his way to the pitching mound. And, and that's exactly the, the, the speech he would have had to him. You know what? You've done a brilliant job tonight. What I need you to do is bear down this one hitter. Give him your best. Whatever you got in the tank. Champlin's done a great job tonight. He's done a brilliant job. And David's giving him a little pat on the back. That's exactly what you want from your starter in, in a big game, game two of a playoff in the best two out of three. Congratulations to him. The crowd's given a big standing ovation, and he's deserved it. He's pitched a brilliant ball game. Now that puts the ball in the hand of Ryan Roland Smith, and that's why he's here, the former big leaguer with the uh, Diamondbacks, to get the job done. Well, what a guy to come in, and we've talked about Ryan Roland Smith, a fantastic arm to come in, the 24th Australian to appear in the big leagues, 33 in total, 121 games with Seattle Mariners and the Arizona Diamondbacks. 326 games in the minors and how about facing your first hitter being Ken Griffey Jr. striking him out as your debut in the major leagues. Well and you know what it's a credit to this young man another young man that was in the 2004 Olympic team as well uh, with Trent Olchin, uh, David Nielsen so he's big to the big stage and right now this is all part of the plan and right now this is when we need him to stand step up and do what he can do best and, and this is all also part of the preparation to try to make that WBC team for Team Australia. So there's not many places that uh, Ryan hasn't visited. Arizona Four League in 06, the Venezuela Winter League in 07, Puerto Rican Winter League 2011, 14 and 15 in the Dominican Winter League and 15 with the Uta Rhinos with a close association with the Bandits going back a couple of years. So this is the perfect guy, as you talk about experience, a blend of youth and experience heading to that 28-man roster that will be announced very shortly for the World Baseball Classic. And that's one thing he'll bring. He brings a wealth of, of experience. And, and sometimes, I know, in 2004, we had Graham Lloyd on that ball club. Just having his presence on that ball club and in the bullpen um, added so much to that the, the dynamics of that ball, that team. I mean, I know we had a team meeting. Uh, team Australia had, didn't have a great start. We faced um, Taiwan, who threw uh, Yang, I believe, or from the Yankees, and, and he just kind of kind of stuck it up us to be honest with you but the reality he said guys we're in it you know i've been on two world series teams i got two rings we can do this and just hearing that from a veteran top guy just inspires you to get the job done and that's what he can do for for a ball club he certainly can and signed by uh, a famous coach out of the canterbury club was ryan roland smith and that was barry holland back on the 9th of the 11th 2000 so here we go ryan roland smith has finished his preliminary warm-up pitches here at the ABL preliminary final, powered by Ladbrokes. And now looks like big on big, right in the heart of the bite lineup. Ryan Ro Roland Smith on the hill, Mitch Denning at the plate. Absolutely. You're talking about the impact guy of the ABL this year. 340, six home runs, 27 RBIs, on base percentage of 927. So this is a guy that you have to get out in these situations. Two outs, top of the fifth runners at first and second. Ryan starts him off with that curveball just missing outside. So big situation in today's ball game. Mitch Denning can blow this one open or Ryan's Roland Smith can shut this threat right down. And this is what both hitters and, and, and pitchers stand uh, step up. You know, when you get on the big stage, big opportunities, both people want to say, ooh, you got away with one right there. That ball's up. And that's, that's the one a big league hitter normally doesn't miss. Um, so he got away with a pitch up in the zone, but now he's in a 1-1 count with two outs here in the fifth with a man on first and second. Well, so I'm sure one Ryan Rollins is happy to get back, and I'm sure Mitch Denning says, uh, wow, I just missed that. The golden rule of it spinning and hanging <laughs> your swing because basically all you do is just, you just basically reverse the spin and you, and you keep it going. But he got away with that one to get back down in the zone. 
One ball, one strike. Outside, David Rodriguez with the bounce throw. Mm. Good play by Logan Wade to prevent that ball going into centre field. And we've seen this uh, previously. David Rodriguez and Marcus Green Jr. are not afraid to throw behind the base runners. And you know what? I saw Greeny right there look at Rodriguez and say, you know, you bounce it right there. I don't bounce it. You know, and you love that. That's the <laughs> on-field stuff that happens that you, you don't know about as a, as a fan or, or a player. You know, because it, it's just that... that, that the competitiveness but I like that because he's seen an opportunity potentially get his pitcher out of a jam to backdoor the runner at second base and get what's so called a bit of a cheap out with Mitch Denning at the plate so runners at first and second two balls one strike Ooh. once again good play defensively behind the plate from David Rodriguez to keep the force intact but now a very good hitting count three balls one strike yeah you still have to be careful you won't concede right here so at the end of the day if you're going to do anything you probably throw another tough slider force him to hit your pitch you don't give in It'd be interesting to see for David as far as a, a managerial decision. you got the right-hand hitter Green on deck who's swinging a hot bat tonight. Do you go to the righty and you make the change? Probably will if he doesn't get this out right here. Three balls, one strike on its way, and that's mm. off the hands and fouled out of play right in front of the bite dugout. So a big pitch. It looked like Mitch Denning was happy, basically had the green light on that pitch. Green light and, and good location by Roland Smith right there. Didn't allow him to get his arms extended. The thing is with Denning, if he does get his arm extended, and we've seen him at this ballpark, he does damage. So I like the location, in on the hands, not let him get extended. Now what that does, it gets him thinking, does he come back in with that or does he go with that hard slider away? So the runners will be on the move here. Full count, two outs, top of the fifth. One of exciting plays in the game of baseball. There go the runners. Pitch is hit hard. Wade Dutton on the back end makes good ground, rounds it. It makes a nice throw to David Southern. Ryan Roland Smith pounds the glove as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Scores locked at three apiece. Hey, I'm Mike Trout, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. In an increasingly competitive global environment, foreign exchange is critical to the profitability of many Australian companies. Business owners have enough to worry about without having to deal with the complexities of global markets. At Compass, we listen to our clients to understand their business. We provide competitive exchange rates and we work with you to better manage your risk and to improve your bottom line. Our success is directly linked to your success. Burrell has built up a long-standing reputation of excellence and exceptional performance. With successful completion of thousands of high-value projects across multiple sectors, our clients can have full confidence in Borrell's ability to provide supply chain security, local expertise, commitment to safety, and most of all, certainty of outcome for your project. The earlier we get involved, the more value we can add. Contact us or visit our website at borrell.com.au. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Lorenzo Kane from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So thanks for joining us here on the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. And a big thank you to Viva, who do a fantastic job sponsoring all the ABL, providing all the uniforms for the ABL and Baseball Australia. So a big thank you to the team at Viva. A big thank you, Dustin, has left us from Gabba.com.au. So a big thank you for all the Gabba.com.au boys. And Ladbrokes, great to have Ladbrokes aboard as the naming rights partner here in the ABL preliminary final. Head to ladbrokes.com.au where you will find markets on all the games in the preliminary finals, the championship series. T's and C's apply, gamble responsibly. And while we're talking about those, Paul, it looks like young Jack O'Loughlin night is done. The hard-throwing right-hander, Greg Moselle, is on the hill for the Adelaide Bite. Yeah, look, and that's a complete change. You know, all of a sudden they've got, you know, a young left-hander and all of a sudden they've got a completely different look, a little bit of a harder thrower. So can the Bandits make the adjustment Last night, big adjustments when they brought in the light in the righty. Good bunt right there. That's a tough play for the third baseman. 
And Aaron Whitefield is safe as that throw just tails a little bit away from Jordan McArdle at first base. And it looks like Tommy West, as that one just went into the camera well down there, the right field line is given first uh, base plus one. And so Aaron Whitefield will now head to second base. So Steve Mintz is not happy with the call. There we see the replay. And that ball just went in the camera well. You can just see Adrian Lamb looking to his right. There is a little camera well down the right field line. And once the ball goes in there, it is dead. You get one plus one. So Aaron Whitefield will make his way to second base. So just like that, it looks like the umpires are now gathering. So Tommy West, James Shields, Paul Ladder and Mal Mackay are going to converge and have a team meeting about this call. And this is a pivotal call in the bottom of the fifth pool. No, it is. And, and, and it actually is a tough call. And I'm, I'm glad they're actually consulting with each other because it does change the complexity of this inning because potentially now that he advances to second, now it allows Olchen just to a rollover ground ball puts him in score position with an opportunity for the Bandits to get ahead in the fifth. So a big, big call for, for the umpires and, and right now for the Bandits as well as the wave starts to make its way around here at AFA Stadium. Ricky doing a good job of getting the crowd involved. So now, ex-major leaguer, the 27th Aussie Trent Olchen, the hot-hitting Trent Olchen, one for two in today's ball game, was the star last night, two for two, has a big opportunity to put the Bandits on top right in the heart of this ball game. Greg Mosell checks the runner at second, fires. Good velocity from the right-hander up and out for ball one. Yeah, it is, and, and like I said, you got this is the right guy right lineup for the Bennett's in this situation you got a leadoff man up with a, a fantastic bunt tough play by Welshy. unfortunately got the ball got away from the first baseman into the corral or into the bullpen area into the camera wall which allowed an event now all of a sudden if he rolls over to the right side puts him in score mission that's exactly what Ultra will be looking to do and see if he can hook something to the right side to advance the runner for Mitch Nielsen to drive him in. I, like, I think Trent Olchen likes this matchup. Lefty on righty, hard throwing Greg Mozell. Trent Olchen is a very good fastball hitter. Always has a smile on his face. And we talk about the velocity of the pitcher. So if it's high, let it fly. So let's see what Trent Olchen does here with two balls. So a good hitting count right now. Greg Mozell from the set delivers. And that one's hit sharply to right field. Right fielder Angus Rozier on the move. He makes a fantastic play. Tagging up as Aaron Whitefield. And with his speed, he'll advance to third head first slide. So not the way you draw it up, Paul, but a productive at bat from Trent Olchen. Runner at third, one out. Yeah, and I tell you what, that, that's where his speed comes into factor. That is a tough, that's a tough ball to tag on. He did a good job getting behind the baseball, making a very good throw. It was an appeal to second base that he left too early. The thing is with Whitefield, he got back on time, and I did watch it. He tagged up on time. Now infield will be playing in, try to prevent the runner. So will they walk him to put a double play in order? So I'm, I'm just watching with the situation here. And this is when I talk about when the game of chess comes into play, where both managers will now start playing percentages. And this is why the game of baseball is so exciting. A family night out here. If you haven't seen a game of baseball around Australia, I urge you to come out to the ABL next year. Bigger and better things for the Australian Baseball League next year. So don't forget, it's a great family night at the ballpark. The DH Mitch Nielsen. And now, as you said, Paul, looks like the corners are pinching in and the pivots up the middle just look like they've just retreated back to regulation depth. And that's outside. So as you said, they're going to pitch very carefully to this man because he, he tied the league in home runs. And once again, a lot of league leaders in each statistic across these two ball clubs. And that's what you want. I mean, guys that normally in the playoffs, they're in the playoffs for a reason. Normally your three, four, five guys are, are your impact guys. This year, these two guys, Whitefield and Nielsen, have been the most two consistent hitters. The difference for me in the back end with Sutherland and, and uh, Wade Dutton. And that one's hit high and foul down the left field line. Yes, I certainly agree. As well as Rodriguez coming in. And that, and that I think that was the second half shift is when you started seeing the offensive explosion of the Bandits. And certainly Dave Nielsen has timed this run absolutely perfect. Big thank you to all the coaching staff of Jim Bennett, Phil Stockman, Ray Ruiz, the birthday boy, and uh, great Dave Shane Watson aboard. So here we go. Greg Mozell delivers, and that one Ooh. once again off the hands and fouled out of play. Adrian Lamb down there as well. So a great roster, and obviously a big thank you to all the Adelaide Bite side, and those guys are doing a fantastic job, led by Steve Mintz, Chris Adamson, Michael Dunn, and Mark Chandler. A big thank you to all the guys for all their time and all the managing and coaching staffs across the Australian baseball league this year no absolutely and we can't credit them enough they spent a lot of time and energy with these players and 
There we see a ground ball to the second baseman. That's going to break this 3-3 mm. deadlock. Coming in to score is Aaron Whitefield. Good play by Josh Altman to Jordan McArdle. But Mitch Nielsen, Paul, does exactly what you want him to do. Pulls a ground ball, and now the Bennett's lead this one 4-3. to three. That's a big hit right there. And, and, and like I said, it's the little things right there. Putting the ball in play, they decide to concede the run. And normally in that situation, they might play in, put pressure on the hitter. For whatever reason, they decide to go ahead and concede the run, put the ball in play, and it's the little things. That's a quality at bat in the situational hitting time for the Brisbane Bandits. And I think this guy in the on-deck circle may have had something to do with that because, as you mentioned, when someone's hitting behind you, and we talk about that in your career, David Rodriguez hitting behind Mitch Nielsen, perhaps that changes the complexion of the defensive alignment. And it does, but, you know, the, the, the thing is in that situation, you got righty-righty situation. Do you put yourself in a double play situation, potentially you get out of the inning? But for whatever reason, the bite decided to concede the out. They have. Now it's 4-3 here in the fifth inning with the Bandits leading now. So David Rodriguez steps in here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Wow, what a regular season. 4-42 Ooh. as Greg Mozell just Good. starts him off with a nice breaking pitch on the inside edge. Good pitch. And look at the numbers. 4-4-2, six home runs, 25 RBs, on base percentage of 1.246. Their MVP numbers, and he's only been here since Christmas. So, you know, what if? Let's uh, let's see if we can talk to the Rays about bringing him back for next year. <laughs> see if we can get a do-over and send out <laughs> Lucius Fox why, why they, uh, they're thinking about it. And he's a good kid. You got a chance to speak to him on a few on different occasions, and he's really enjoyed his time uh, in Australia. And, and that's a big transition for a young man to come over from Venezuela. You know, different surroundings, different environment and he's really acclimated well to the Bandits team this year. He certainly has. Always plays with a smile similar to Trent Olchen, but I think sometimes when I talk to David Rodriguez, it takes him three weeks because I talk a little bit quicker than what he thinks. No, he just smiles at me and says yes. I think they still struggle, I and mean, people don't understand the Australian accent for them would be just Greek, so and then he just <laughs> smiles and nods. Says yes. <laughs> and then we see chasing. Ooh. Good pitch by Greg Mozell. So we are through five innings here in the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. The Bandits lead the bite 4-3. to three. So thanks for joining us here on the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes and a big thank you to Bendigo Bank. Like you, Bendigo Bank are big fans of the game and are proud partners of the ABL. Bendigo Bank puts customers and communities first. Find out more by visiting their website or one of your local branches. And a big shout out to my brother, Darren Dean, who's actually a branch manager for Bendigo Bank down at Lizaro there on the central coast of New South Wales. And that is a community bank for Bendigo Bank. So to my brother, Darren Dean, if you want to go and visit your local Bendigo Bank and you're in the community, the central coast of New South Wales, go and visit my brother at Lizaro Branch. So a big thank you to Bendigo Bank and all their sponsorship of the ABL. It looks like we have a pitching change as we're just running through all the permutations of tonight's ball game. And Eric has joined us once again as Paul goes out on his official duties as a general manager. Eric, great to have you back in the box. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, the hospitality here in Brisbane, as you'd expect in Queensland, just uh, top notch here. So thanks for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Wow. Hasn't the complexion of this ball game uh, changed? We're talking about perhaps a, a shootout that looked like it was on the cards after two or three innings. Now the pitchers have dominated 4 3 scoreline. Yeah, and, and you know what? When I was in here earlier, we were talking about big moments in the ball game, and you saw it, it case in point that last inning when the bite had a runner in scoring position, probably the guy you want at the plate in Mitch Denning there. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't get it done for the bite, and then uh, Bandits did a great job of playing some small ball there, advancing the runner off, of, off an arrow over there for the bite, and they 
the Bandits, as they do, they take advantage of mistakes, and now we've got a 4-3 ball game. And ball, go, good ball clubs tend to do that, don't they? We saw that last night. Just that one little mistake from the bite, the Bandits took full advantage. So Marcus Green Jr. at the plate. Big swing and Zach Treese. And we saw Zach Treese last night. Wow, does he have some movement on the baseball? Yeah, and now's the nerve-wracking time for the bite here. You know, they're down a run. They've got they've got uh, four innings to play catch-up here. It's only one run, but it's it's got to be tempting if you're a bite player just to take a swing for the fences here, but it's not always the smartest thing to do, is it? No, and it sort of feels like more than one run. The, the bite have been through this before against the Bandits, and in postseason, this is the fourth game in the last two years in postseason play, and it just seems like head-to-head -head, the Bandits just have the number of the bite team. Yeah, and uh, you're not wrong there, and, and, and it's, uh, it's a tense atmosphere down there. I'll tell you what, I was just walking around the crowd a little bit down here too. People are into it here. There's some good chance going on in the crowd here. It's, it's an important ball game, and everyone can feel it. Wow, well, Marcus Green Jr. frozen on that outside edge, and a key strikeout to commence proceedings here in the top of the six because 4-5-6 you up. Good to see the back of Marcus Green Jr., an absolute star for baseball, but now Stefan Welch. And once again, you like to have these key guys, the Aussies setting the tone. We talked about that previously, Eric. It's great to have the Australians setting the tone and the imports just come in and fit in and plug those holes. Yeah, that's exactly it. And it's a, it's a team atmosphere out here. And, and for the Bandits, you have to be very excited that you just got Marcus Green out right there because he gets on base right here and you have Stefan Welsh and uh, then Angus Roger up there. Those are two dangerous bats that, that can really complement the whole team structure right here. So... Uh, big, big out right there. Certainly is. So Zach Treese, the third pitcher used tonight for the Brisbane Bandits, proudly presented by World Dog. Exclusively used in independent ball for Zach, and he tries the outside edge. David Rodriguez setting up on the outside edge. Three times All-Star, 2013, 14 and 16, and Rookie of the Year in the Frontier League in 2013, and has signed with the Long Island Ducks in 2017. So he has a job to go to, and it's always nice, Eric, when you've got a job to go to after the Australian Baseball League. Yeah, it takes a bit of pressure off, and I know even talking to some guys, they're wondering where they're going to be playing, what they're going to be doing after. It's not everybody that has that luxury. Some have it pretty carved out from others don't, but good for good for Trees. <laughs> Certainly is. So Zach working quickly, two balls, one strike to the dangerous Stefan Welch. Bandits lead 4-3, to three, off speed, and perhaps if David Rodriguez holds onto that one, perhaps it was a strike right on the inside edge. And you got to think the bite here have to just rely a little bit on small ball here. You can't, I know you can, you can tie the game in one swing, but you're not going to win in one swing. You know, you just get some run on base, string together some hits, get a bit of a rally going. That's how they scored their three runs in the first inning. So don't need to get too greedy here. It's a big inning. Three balls, one strike. High, towering, fly ball, but foul out of play down the third base line. You talk about sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. You need to tie the game before you can win the game. And if that's the momentum that the Adelaide bike carry in, I'm sure they're looking to play small ball, as you mentioned, see if they can get on top here. And this man at the plate, certainly one of those guys in Steph Welch. And that's exactly how Brisbane just took the lead that last inning there, is playing a little bit of small ball. You know, you don't have to do it fancy, and you can do it with some of the threats that have multiple tools and you saw Whitefield I mean if, if, it, if it was anybody else but Whitefield he might not score on that play that was hit over towards first base and Whitefield coming in from third so I mean, the bite have to be looking at a similar situation right here. They've tried. They've got caught stealing a couple times, though, too. <laughs> they certainly have. So Zach Trees, important part of the ball game, full count from the wind-up delivers. And this one, big strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Zach Trees. So he's come out of the bullpen, breathing fire, exactly what Dave Nielsen would want. Two outs here in the top of the six, and you can just hear the crowd starting to rise as Angus Roger makes his way to the plate. Yeah, and they can feel it out there, and, and you could feel it in that fifth inning too. They were getting the wave going a little bit. They were uh, getting the go-go bandits go chant going. The crowd can sense how big this is, and you know this. Uh, I think everybody here in this building is hoping that this is the last time they'll see the Bandits here this season, and the next time they'll be seen is either live in Melbourne or on on ABL TV next week. And big game, as you mentioned, that championship series next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday down in Victoria from Melbourne Ballpark in Altona. I'm sure the Aces and John Deeble are waiting with anticipation uh, to face one of these teams, the Bite or the Bandits, for the championship this year. But before we get there, we've got to finish this ball game because this is the key part of the lineup. Angus Roger, two times All-Star, the fifth season in the ABL, and I don't think he was too happy with that call on the outside edge. And you just get the feeling that Angus is going to do something special here. He had a very good championship series in Brisbane last year. I know that Brisbane were all over Adelaide, but Angus did his best. He had a couple big home runs over the series, drove in the most runs out of anybody. And there we see him put one in the right field, but playable Trent Olchin comes in camps under this one right in front of the Reedy towing and the Conoco Phillips. So we head to the bottom of the six on the ABL preliminary finals presented by Ladbrokes.
come down and get your eyes down the left field line. You saw the big and big diamond dash. They got Piggy out there at first base waiting for the boys and girls to arrive. And they got Buster and the Bandit floating around. And plenty of a crowd down the left field line. The Bendigo Big Diamond Dash, one of our favorite events here at Red Face Stadium, Hall of Field. They're queued up. We're nearly ready to go. So Eric Bolner and Kevin Dean in the box here for the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbroke and the Bendigo Bank dash around the field and that looks like it's uh, Paul Gonzalez's young son or eldest son and looks like Max is going to win he's not looking on the outside Max has to pick up the speed and Max Gonzalez I'm sure Paul's very happy looks like we've got a hamstring couple of injuries there great to have the Bendigo Bank pig on the board and a great activation Eric the Bendigo Bank Diamond Dash. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I love watching that in Adelaide too. Uh, scary if you're the mascot sometimes though in this one too. I think they can cop a cop a bit of a beating there sometimes. But it's awesome to see the kids get on the field, run around the bases sometimes after the game, run on the field before then. And that's all thanks to Bendigo Bank who would mean obviously a huge supporter of community baseball and getting everybody involved on the field and you can see right here on screen how much it means to these kids it's the expression on their faces here too so that's one of the great things about the ABL is how close you can get to the action and that's a big part and thanks to Bendigo Bank. It certainly is and you mentioned that what a, what a great uh, I guess on-field activation for the youngsters mm -hmm. boys and girls you see grandparents with their different generations carrying their grandkids around just an absolute fantastic and there we see Viva Global the uniform and apparel and merchandise supplier of the Australian Baseball League. Once again, for all your merchandise and apparel, visit vivaglobal.com today you and great to have Viva aboard as usual. So bottom of the sixth inning, Bandits up four to three and now a key part of the order, five, six, seven to drew up to face Greg Mozell for his second inning of work. Logan Wade, Kevin Padlow and Tommy Malone should there be no changes. And this guy has good velocity, the young right-hander out of the bite bullpen. People are very excited about him back in Adelaide. He pitches for Glen Elk Baseball Club, and, and he's been very useful over there for the for the Tigers over there. I know there's a lot of Tigers fans listening and watching back home, but Greg is a, a, a very useful tool at club ball, and he's getting better and better every day in the ABL. And I mean, this is a big situation for him. I'm sure he didn't even imagine that he'd be pitching in the most high-leverage situation of them all in Game 2 of the ABLPF presented by Ladbrokes at the beginning of the season. So good for him to get on the mound here, and it's a pretty important inning, needless to say. And he looks calm and composed, doesn't he? Looks like he's not overawed in any way. Has good velocity. Sometimes you get a bit nervous. You grip the ball a bit tighter. Your mechanics start to guess a little bit clunky. But he looks smooth and relaxed and has good velocity. Yeah, and, and that run by in that last inning by the Bandits was by no reason his fault. It was a fantastic bunt really tough play uh, probably just bad luck if anything on, on being awarded that extra base there and, and Aaron Whitefield took advantage so it's definitely not Greg's fault at all on that one so good to see him back out there this inning and, and you know Mincy's thinking let's get the one two three and head it to probably someone like Van Mill after that after this inning so it's, it's a it's a chess mass chess match sorry no doubt at this point it certainly is Greg Mozell two balls two strikes to Logan Wade just missing upstairs that runs the count full so three balls, two strikes on the switch hitting ex-Minnesota twin prospect in Logan Wade. So the crowd just starting to find their voice. Greg Mozell from the set. He kicks and fires. Fastball. And once again, Logan Wade, foul ball behind the screen. And once again, big crowd starting to find their voice here, Eric. It was a good pitch too. Just a good job getting the, getting the bat on that one and keeping this, this chance alive here and run up the pitch count a little bit. And... Yeah, it's a, a big moment right here. Try to get the leadoff hitter here, and, and this is the guy they want. Logan Wade's 0 for 2 in today's ball game. Comes in with a 280 clip in the regular season. Bandits leading 4 to 3. Greg Mozell kicks and delivers, and that one's off the hands. Good play on the back end by Jordan McArdle. Says, I'll take this for the unassisted play, and you always like to keep the speedy leadoff man off the base paths. Yeah, that's for sure. A nice little play there from Jordan McArdle, too. You never know sometimes uh, with those those handcuffed balls almost down right towards first base there. And, and Jordan, I know, has been working a lot on his defense there, and he's going to have to keep working on it if he wants to keep that dream alive of moving up the pro ball ranks there. But... Uh, yeah, good to see him keep getting that chance over at first base, and that was a tidy little play right there. It certainly was, and uh, as the field is in magnificent condition, but after those four or five innings, those base runners, it gets a bit churned up in the dirt. So good play by Jordan McCarter. We wish him all the best in his pro ball. I'm sure he'll be heading off in a couple of months, so exciting times for that young man. So now Kevin Padlow comes to the plate here with one out in the bottom of the six. Greg Mozell from the set. 
working quickly. And there we see a high, towering fly ball. Third baseman Stephen Welch drifts in foul territory. Camps under it, just drifts back to fair territory. And a very important second out there, the dangerous Kevin Padlow retired. Yeah, you feel like at this point that's all the bite needs to do is just keep them at bay, keep that number at four right now. You're going to get another opportunity at some point. Doesn't mean you're going to score on it, but you figure in the last nine outs here, you're going to get an opportunity at some point, so you can't make it harder on yourself than what it already is. I certainly concur. So Tommy Malone, now with two outs, the base is empty. The Bandits leading four to three. Who's going to advance? Can the Bandits wrap things up tonight and advance to the championship series against the Melbourne Aces? Or will the Bites send this one into the Game 3 tomorrow? Should there be a Game 3, it will be played at 1pm local time here in Brisbane. So important part of the lineup. Tommy Malone from the Charlotte Stone Crabs. He's 0 for 2 in today's ball game. Greg Mozell pitching quickly. Good location. Eric gets ahead of the count. No balls, two strikes. Yeah, he's not really mucking around out there, is he? He means, uh, he means absolute business out there. Getting the ball, throwing it right where he wants to right here. It's a good little five outs right here from, from Greg Mozell. Certainly is. Looks like he's hitting his spots, his location. Marcus Green Jr. doing a great job moving in and out. And there we see the defensive prowess. And isn't it great to have two good catches on show controlling these pitching staffs? Yeah, it is a showcase right now of some of the best talent. And uh, I mean, I was saying this to everybody in Adelaide before the series, and I'm sure there's people in Melbourne that will hate me for what I'm about to say here. But I honestly <laughs> believe the winner of this series is going to win the uh, the ABLCS. I think these are these are two fantastic ball clubs right here. And there we see Tommy Malone with a line drive over the leaping Stefan Welch in the left field. So Tommy with a big round at first base. Ladarius Clark with a nice play. Wow, two out single roped to left field by Tommy Malone. Yeah, pretty clutch hitting right there. It's the it's that two out hitting. It really does make the big difference. And you talk about little moments. You go back to that second inning when they had the back to back jacks with two outs in the second inning. Now maybe a rally starting with two outs right here. Good job from Tommy Malone. So it looks like Greg Mosell night might be done as Steve Mintz makes his way out and all the infield converge. So it looks like we have a pitching change and we'll just wait to see who comes out of the bullpen. But a big thank you to Fielder's Choice. Fielder's Choice, the preferred retail partner of the Australian Baseball League and Baseball Australia. It is home to Rawlings, heart of the hide. Fielder's Choice. Visit us online for all your baseball equipment needs. So great to have Fielder's Choice. And here comes the young man. When I say young, has this man had a great career? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hai Chun Lee coming into the ball game here, left-handed pitcher. Uh, he's a guy that the bite have liked to use in high leverage situations, and this is a high leverage situation. Obviously, you got a runner on first, two outs, can't really allow any any more damage here. He's been pretty boom bust to be honest this year. He's had a couple rough outings this year where he's walked a few guys and then the uh, opposition batters have taken advantage but on other occasions he's come out there in, in tricky situations maybe a runner on first and third with one out and he struck out the side so uh, Hai Chun Lee is probably the guy you do want in this situation especially with one out I would suspect this might be the only batter he would face you never know we'll see how this goes but uh, yeah, Hai Chun Lee and is, is, is probably a predictable call here from, from Steve Mintz. A great guy to have in the bullpen. 15 seasons in the Korean Baseball Organization and the Japanese Central League. So if you want experience, this is the guy you call at the age of 37. Uh, we saw previously with Sydney Day Sung Koo, similar left-hander, leads the ABL still in saves. And this guy, uh, over 15 seasons, you certainly don't last that long at that high level. No, you have to be good to, to last that long. And I think he's played one of the most games of all time on that games list as well, Hai Chun Lee here. And uh, coming over to Australia now, he's made a home made a home here. He's brought his kids over here. He's got his wife over here, lives in South Australia, loves his fishing, and uh, still keeps in shape to play some baseball. So um, important situation, and this is why Nathan Davison, GM of the Adelaide Bite, brings over a guy like Hai Chun Lee, and that's to control the damage in situations like this. So here's the task. Let's see if he can get it done. So I'm sure the Bite fans will be hoping that Hai Chung Lee can get out of this inning with no further damage here in the bottom of the six. The Bandits leading four to three. We're staring down the barrel of nine outs away for the Bite as David Sutherland, one of the hottest hitters in the ABL in the second half of the season. Wow, did he get that average up to 294 in the regular season? So lefty on lefty matchup. So I like the way both managers are using their roster and using their deep bullpens with these matchups. Yeah, and, and you know what? I think the worst case scenario for the bite here is you get through Sutherland and Dutton gets up, gets another hit here, and then there's all of a sudden it turns over to Whitefield with uh, a chance to add on the rally here. It really, it's just so important to get this out. First pitch swing is David Sutherland. Good play on the grass by Jordan Mercado. So one pitch, one out. We are through six complete innings. We'll say goodbye to Eric Bolner. Eric, thanks for joining us here on Bandits TV. Have a great night. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Bandits lead the bite 4-3. to three.
This is George Springer with the Houston Astros, and you are watching Australian Baseball League. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head to head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. This is Andrew McCutcheon with the Pittsburgh Pirates and you are watching the Australian Baseball League. So I hope you're enjoying the production here from Hail Storm Productions. Mr. Josh Hay on the Warlock and all the boys are doing a fantastic job. Kevin Dean in the box here. We've had Eric Bolner, Paul Gonzalez, and Paul Gonzalez will be joining us once again once he's through his preliminary duties. And a big thank you to Dustin from Gabba.com.au. Hope you're enjoying the coverage presented by Ladbroke. So the Bandits leading 4-3 to three as we enter the top of the seventh inning. And Zach Treese on the hill facing Jordan McArdle. And he starts him off with that off-speed splitty by Zach Treese to get ahead in the count. No balls, one strike. So a big part of the ball game here in the top of the seventh. Zach Treese kicks and delivers. And that one's hit hardly. Oh, took a hard bounce. Wade Dutton stays with it on a one-hopper. Wow, what a highlight real play from Wade Dutton. Could be a key out here as the bite are now down to their final eight outs here in this preliminary championship game to see if the Bandits can clinch here in two straight games to face the Melbourne Aces next week. Wow, Wade Dutton has had a fantastic season. There we see the bounce. Wow, took a high hop. Stays with it on one knee. Sets himself and more importantly, makes an accurate throw to David Sutherland. Wow, look at the replay from Ladbrokes. Fantastic vision by the Hailstorm production boys for the first out here in the top of the seventh. So now Josh Altman, first pitch swinging. He ropes one up the middle and that's a line drive base hit here. So the bite are now pressing and Josh Altman is two for three in today's ball game with back-to-back -back singles to the centre fielder Aaron Whitefield. So double-barreled action down in the Brisbane Bandits bullpen. The bite, I'm sure, will be looking to strike back and level proceedings here. So A. Alex Carter is 0 for 2 in today's ball game. We will see some small ball. Josh Altman with a good lead at first base. Zach Trees checks the runner there. The runner's going. Luda hit and run. Off the glove. Logan Wade only play at first base. So a sure out at first base. Alex Carter is retired for the second out. But going on the play is Josh Altman. So staying out of the double play. How key will that be for the Adelaide bite? Because if Josh Altman is not on the move, that is a tailor-made double play up the middle for the Bandits. So that could be a crucial play on the fielder's choice. 6-3. to three because the top of the order is now due in this 4-3 ball game to the Bandits with Ladarius Clark now the fourth time through for the Adelaide Bite. So Josh Altman is aboard at second with two outs in scoring position. He represents the tying run. And the Bite are down to their final seven outs to stay alive in the 16-17 ABL season. Zach Trees from the set delivers and a big swing and a miss for strike one on Ladarius Clark. Confident young man is Ladarius Clark at the plate. Relaxed, a real cool guy. He's got the stride line sock showing. The pants are old school. Great to see all the players with the stride line socks this year. 4 3 to the Bandits. Zach Trees checks the runner once again, fires this time outside as David Rodriguez cocks that right arm and he's not afraid to throw behind any base runners here. 
One ball, one strike on Ladarius Clark. Top of the seventh, two outs. Bandits leading the bite four to three. Zach Treese checks the runner once again, delivers, and that one's hit sharply to Aaron Whitefield. Aaron Whitefield on a one hop. Here comes Josh Altman to score, and the Adelaide Bite have tied this ball game up at four apiece with two outs in the top of the seventh. Clutch hitting from Ladarius Clark, and the Adelaide Bite bullpen erupt here as Josh Altman comes in to score. Wow, great piece of hitting from Ladarius Clark. He's one for three in today's ball game and a crucial RBI to not the score at four apiece in the top half of the seventh inning. Wow, how crucial is that run going to prove tonight? So number two hole hitter Jordan Cowan due up for the Adelaide Bite. He's two for three in today's ball game, one for four last night. A 291 across the season average. And speed, speed, speed here for the Adelaide Bite. And first pitch swinging foul into the Brisbane Bandits dugout. And that's going to bring a visit from David Rodriguez to his charger, Zach Treese. Wow, well, great game of baseball. Adelaide Bite put three up in the top of the first, capped off by a two run blast by Marcus Green Jr. Then five zeros. And now a run here in the seventh. The Bandits scored one in the bottom of the first, two in the bottom of the second, one in the bottom of the fifth for their four runs. So that brings us up to date with two outs in the top of the seventh. Scores locked at four apiece. Beautiful conditions here at AFA Stadium. 27 degrees Celsius on Saturday the 4th of February 2017. Great to have you company on the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. Zach Treese looks in. There we see the runner going. Ladarius Clark's on the move. David Rodriguez comes up firing. Logan Wade applies the tag but safe. So Ladarius Clark after driving in the fourth and tying run with two outs, now swipes a stolen base, and he is now in scoring position and represents the go-ahead run here with two outs in the top of the seventh for the Adelaide Bite. So key situation for Jordan Cowan, the Seattle Mariners prospect. And wow, did he have a great 2016 at Bakersfield, hitting 3.06. So a great guy to have here. And a big shout out to one of our championship pitchers from last year, young Jason Jarvis is tuning in. Jace, great to have you tuning in. We miss you and we hope to see you in a Bandits uniform in the future. Great guy, Jason Jarvis. What a fantastic year last year. Eight and three for the Bandits. So Jordan Cowan, two balls, one strike, and Zach Treese will just keep a close eye on Ladarius Clark and a little bit of a, a hitch in the move, close to a balk for Zach Treese. Just got that back foot caught up on the pitcher's rubber. So Ladarius Clark has the speed to score from second base. Zach delivers. Jordan Cowan, big swing for a key strike. Evens the count at two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the seventh. Key situation. All the Bandits' bullpen are on their feet. Looks like three pitchers are warm and ready. Sammy Holland down there. Matty Timms, Tyrell Harris, all warm and ready to go should they be needed. Zach Treese, the 2-2 to Jordan Cowan. Outside, rings him up. Jordan Cowan not happy with the call. Has a couple of words with Tommy West. Wow, key strikeout for Zach Treese as we head into the seventh inning stretch here at AFA Stadium. Jordan Cowan not happy with the call. Scores are locked at four apiece here at AFA Stadium.
So Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline, playing loud around here at AFA Stadium. Pitching change for the Adelaide Bite. Loke Van Mill is on the hill. But a big thank you to Stride Line. We spoke about the socks in the previous innings, and wow, these socks have been absolutely a huge hit with all the players. Stride Line offers products unparalleled by any other sock company and are worn by every ABL and Team Australia player. Want to wear the same socks as the pros or design your own custom pair? Visit strideline.com and check out the hundreds of available options or submit your own logo for a free design. That's strideline.com, the official sock of the ABL and Team Australia. So what a ball game we have in front of us here in the ABL PF presented by Ladbrokes. Wade Dutton with the pocket out, the familiar pocket out. And Loke Vermeil, seven foot one, hard throwing, about 95, 96 on the radar. So this man, seven foot one, and one of the tallest players ever to play pro ball in the minor leagues. 4-4 four, four ball game as Loke Vermeil delivers Wade Dutton, strokes it foul. Out of play behind home plate, into that Gabba netting. Wow, 10 seasons. Loke Van Mill with the Minnesota Twins, the LA Angels, the Cleveland Indians, and the Cincinnati Reds. 13 games in MLB spring training. Pitch with the Neptunus in the Dutch League 2016. 17 games, 1.69 ERA, 2 and 0 record with 8 saves. This is the guy you want on the hill if you're the Adelaide Bite. There we see him just powering through the strike zone. One ball, two strikes to Wade Dutton. Can the Bandits strike back after giving up one in the top of the seventh to tie proceedings here in a beautiful night for baseball? Loke with the set. Wade Dutton at the plate delivers. Hard fastball. And that is a key strikeout for Loke Van Mill to commence proceedings here in the bottom of the seventh. That rolls the Bandits line up around to the top of the order for the fourth time this evening. Aaron Whitefield, Trent Olchen in the on-deck circle. So Loke Van Mill. Wow, what an impressive guy. And we talk about signing by Howard Norsetter with the Minnesota Twins. Some of the Australians to sign with Howie. Matty Williams, Rory Rhodes, Brad Thomas, Luke Hughes, Grant Balfour, Lachlan Wells and Trent Olchen all signed with the Minnesota Twins through Howard Norsetter. And Howard Norsetter is responsible for signing Loke Van Mill to his first professional contract with Affiliated Ball. It's just an absolutely great scout in the Asia-Pacific area is Howard Norsetter. So Loke Van Mill now to Aaron Whitefield. Minnesota Twins prospect himself. Big swing. And just struck Marcus Green Jr. on the backswing. Just to check in to make sure everything's okay. And that's not going to worry Marcus Green Jr. behind the plate. He's one tough customer. One ball, one strike. Loke dealing here for the Adelaide bite. That one's hit down the line. That's going to be fair. That's got extra bases written all over it. Stephen Welch can't come up with a play. Aaron Whitefield rounds first, heading for second. And he is in with a stand-up double with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Wow, best on best. Loke Van Mill try to get inside. And Aaron Whitefield drives it up the third baseline for a double. And he represents the go-ahead run. And who would you want at the plate than this man? Trent Olchen. He's one for three in today's ball game. The ex-major leaguer. 99 games with the Arizona Diamondbacks and the LA Dodgers. The smiling assassin, Trent Olchen, at the plate. Can he deliver the clutch hit for the Brisbane Bandits here in the bottom of the seventh? Scores locked at four apiece. Speed at second in Aaron Whitefield. Loke delivers, and that's up and out for ball one. And you can just see the confidence returning to Trent Olchen. He's in a groove at the moment. The swing's looking quick and sharp to the ball. Loke once again delivers, and this down low, but a big swing. 1-1. One, one. Perhaps swing at ball two to Trent Olchen. Loke Van Mill, and this is going to bring a pitching visit from Steve Mintz. So perhaps Steve Mintz has just saw something in Loke Van Mill. Or perhaps he wants to go over the scouting report on Trent Olchen. Because this isn't the man. You want to leave a fastball over the plate. Seven foot one is Loke Van Mill. So it looks like that pitching mound visit is over. Steve Mintz returns to the Adelaide Bite dugout. All the infielders retreat to their positions. Aaron Whitefield makes his way back to second base. 
key moment in this ball game. Game two, best of three series on Saturday night, the 4th of February 2017. Great to have your company for the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. Loke Van Mill from the set. 1-1 one, one count on Trent Olchen delivers and that one's hit high but playable shortstop Jordan Cowan tracking back left fielder Ladarius Clark comes in but Jordan Cowan makes the out a crucial fly ball for the second out here in the bottom of the seventh retires Trent Olchen Jordan Cowan playing deep in the hole there at shortstop retreats back and now the switch hitting DH right in the middle of the bandits lineup Mitch Nielsen comes to the plate so with one swing of the bat, Mitch Nielsen can put the Bandits on top here in the bottom of the seventh with two outs. David Rodriguez in the on-deck circle. There is a base open for Loke Van Mill should he want to pitch very carefully to Mitch Nielsen. Fastball outside, just catching the zone for a cord strike. And Mitch is not happy with that call from Tommy West. Tommy's had a fantastic strike zone all night. Good umpire behind the plate. James Shields in the first baseline. Paul Ladder at second and Mal Mackay at third. Loke Van Mill delivers for another cord strike. So once again getting ahead of the hitters and pumping the strike zone. No balls, two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Aaron Whitefield stranded at second base after the one out double down the third base line. Can Mitch Nielsen get the business done here with two outs? 0-2 offering on its way. Finds the outside edge and Mitch Nielsen is retired looking. So we have seven innings in the books here at game two from AFA Stadium. The ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. This is Jason Hayward from Chicago Cubs and you're watching the Australian baseball. The whistle blows, the gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Take me back to the throne. Do you feel that leash on you? Take me back, take me back. Take me back, oh no. Fielder's Choice is the official team store of the Perth Heat and proud partner of baseball in Australia. With the best selection of baseball, softball, and t-ball equipment in the country, make Fielder's Choice your one-stop shop for gloves, bats, cleats, batting gloves, and more. And don't forget, you can even purchase your Heat tickets right in store. Heat win! Heat win! Heat win! Find our stores across the country in Perth, Melbourne, and Brisbane. And look out for Fielder's Choice functions at Heat Games and in Melbourne this season. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Peter Moylan from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So welcome back to AFA Stadium, pivotal game two. We're getting to the business end of proceedings, top of the eighth. Scores locked at four apiece, and the fourth pitcher used out of the Brisbane bullpen, and that is none other than the right-handed sidewinding Sam Holland. Kramer Champlin got off to the start, fantastic pitching. Four and two-thirds, six hits, three runs, all earned, two walks, four strikeouts. Ryan Rowland-Smith, Zach Treese, and now Sammy Holland on the hill. Big thank you to Ladbrokes. And once again, head to ladbrokes.com.au where you will find markets on all games in the preliminary finals and championship series. T's and C's apply. Gamble responsibly. So a big thank you to our naming rights partner, Ladbrokes, and great to have them on board for the preliminary final and the championship series. So top of the eighth, leading off is Mitch Denning to face Sam Holland. And Sam Holland starts him off with a ball outside. So with one swing of the bat, and Dave Nielsen's having a chat with Tommy West from the dugout. Hence the little pause in proceedings. So Mitch Denning has been the bandit killer over the last three years. He takes a fastball downstairs. So two balls, no strikes, good hitting count. Once again, that breeze just drifting out to right field. So enabling the left-handed hitting Mitch Denning should he get it up in that slipstream. 
Looks like he was taking all the way on that pitch. Sam Holland fires in a cord strike. Two balls, one strike here in the top of the eighth. Can one of these ball clubs unlock the deadlock or will we go to extra innings? Little check swing. Mitch Denning just nods the head. A little bit of verbal coming from the Bandits' bullpen. Three balls, one strike. David Rodriguez having a chat with Tommy West. So big situation right now. Good hitting count for Mitch Denning. He's 0 for 3 in today's ball game. Three balls, one strike. Sam Holland delivers. And that one's hit sharply but foul down the left field line. So Mitch Denning was locked and loaded on the 3-1 offering. And that moves the count to three balls, two strikes. Infielders playing very deep for the hard-hitting Mitch Denning. And the outfielders in no doubles defense. Straight away, left, center, and right. Tommy Malone, Aaron Whitefield, and Trent Olchen. Sam Holland delivers the payoff pitch. And that, once again, is fouled out of play down the left field line. And a big thank you to Conoco Phillips for all their sponsorship of the foul balls. Take that foul ball down to your favourite player and have them sign it. And you'll have a beautiful keepsake of your visit here at AFA Stadium. Crowd starting to find their voice. 4-4 ball game. 3-2 count. Semi Holland delivers. And once again, foul. Protective swing by Mitch Denning staying alive. So three foul balls by Mitch Denning. Doing a good job to stay alive here. The leadoff man in the eighth inning. 3-4-5 due up for the bite. Mitch Denning, Marcus Green Jr. and Steph Welch. Three powerhouses in the Australian Baseball League. Semi Holland from the set delivers. Outside for ball four. So the Adelaide Bite have the go-ahead run aboard here in the top of the eighth. And Dave Nielsen is on his way out to the pitching rubber to have a visit with Sam Holland. Matty Timms is locked and loaded in the bullpen. So we'll just wait to see what transpires between this visit from Dave Nielsen. And perhaps he's waiting for Tom West to make his way out to have a few words with the home plate umpire. David Rodriguez makes his way out. Dave Nielsen and Sam Holland. And here comes Tom West now to make his way out. So perhaps Dave Nielsen wants to vent his frustration with the home plate umpire because it looks like he is waiting for Tom West to come out. Tom West makes his way out. So Dave Nielsen, Sam Holland and David Rodriguez all having a four-way conversation. And it looks like Dave is venting his frustration at Tom West, the home plate umpire. So it looks like this visit was just to get the home plate umpire out. So no pitching change and great managing by Dave Nielsen. So Sam Holland remains on the hill. Marcus Green Jr. Looks like he is injury free and having a fantastic season in the Australian Baseball League. 307 in the regular season. He's two for three in today's ball game. A two run home run, a single. And has had a fantastic night at the plate and behind the plate for the Adelaide Bite. Mitch Denning with a big lead at first base. Will we see some small ball here by the Bite? Not on this occasion as Marcus Green Jr. takes a ball downstairs. Michael Dunn just running through the signs down the third base line. Mark Chandler in the first base dugout for the Adelaide Bite presented by SA Power Networks. 4-4 scoreline. An exciting game of baseball here in game two of a three-game series. All hard swing but foul over the head of the Bandits dugout. Good catch by Adrian Lamb, the one-hander off the protective netting here by the boys at Gabba.com.au. Key moment in today's ball game. Will we have Marcus Green Jr. swinging away? Third baseman Kevin Padlow playing just behind third base. Sam Holland from the set and has a little closer inspection of Mitch Denning over there at first base. Keeping Mitch very close. I'm sure Sammy will be looking for a ground ball double play. Nobody out here in the top of the eighth. The bite have the go-ahead run on at first base in the shape of Mitch Denning. Marcus Green Jr. 1-1 at the plate. Offering on its way. Big swing. Fouled straight back to the screen. So Marcus Green Jr. is locked and loaded here tonight. You certainly do not want to leave a mistake over the plate to this powerful young man. One balls. 
two strikes to Marcus Green Jr. His first season in the Australian Baseball League. And we wish him all the best heading back to spring training with the San Diego Padres. And we'll watch with interest his trajectory through the San Diego Padres system. So 1-2 offering on its way by Sam Holland reaching and a big punch out by Marcus Green Jr. is retired on the slide piece on the outside edge for the first out here in the top of the eighth. Wow, great location and movement from Sam Holland. Things don't get any easier as Stefan Welch makes his way to the plate. So righty versus lefty matchup. Stefan's 0 for 2 with a walk in today's ball game. Hard to keep this man quiet at the mound. He was 0 for 4 last night. So Stefan Welch is certainly due for the Adelaide bite. Semi Holland keeps a close eye on Mitch Denning at first base. 785 games of minor league experience as Stefan Welch at the plate. And once again, first pitch swinging foul ball into the screen. Aggressive approach here by the Adelaide Bite hitters. Angus Roger in the on-deck circle. Should he get aboard, Jordan McArdle in the hole. Crowd starting to find their voice. Sam Holland looking for a ground ball, double play. Fires a fastball right on the outside edge for a cord strike. No balls, two strikes to the ever dangerous Stefan Welch. Mitch Denning aboard at first base via the leadoff walk here in the top of the eighth. Sam Holland from the set. He kicks and delivers, and that is fouled down the first base line. So Stefan Welch with that defensive swing doing just enough to stay alive, getting a piece of the Rawlings. Good protection of the plate from Stefan Welch. Sam Holland composing himself on the hill for the Brisbane Bandits. David Rodriguez flashing the signs. Mitch Denning with a good lead at first. 0-2 offering on its way. And once again, fouled straight back to the screen. So Stefan Welch doing a good job to battle here in this 0-2 count. Hope you're enjoying the coverage from all the boys here at Hail Storm Productions. Big thank you to Josh the Warlock. And of course, our camera crew of DJ, Reese, and Nathan. Keith, if you're listening in, hope you're enjoying the night off, Keith. And there we see the runner going, and that one's fouled once again. Is it playable? David Rodriguez throws the mask away. Is it going to land in? It does land in. And David Rodriguez with a great play, hard up against the protective netting right in front of the Adelaide Bite dugout. Wow. Great defensive play to record the second out here in the top of the eighth. And a big out, Stefan Welch is retired. On the fly ball in foul territory behind home plate. So after giving off the lead-off walk to Mitch Denning, Sam Holland has come back to strike out Marcus Green Jr. The fly ball to Stefan Welch in foul territory. So can he wriggle out of this jam? Angus Roger, the two times ABL All-Star at the plate. He's one for three in tonight's ball game. Scores locked at four apiece here in the top of the eighth. Angus Roger, first pitch swinging, fouled into the screen. So once again, the Adelaide Bite have come out with the aggressive approach at the plate here in the top of the eighth. The 2017 ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Kevin Dean on the call will be joined by Paul Gonzalez shortly to bring us home. Angus Roger at the plate. 0-1 offering. There we see another foul ball this time down the third base line. So once again... Working quickly and ahead of the hitters is Sam Holland. 0-2 count. Now on the dangerous Angus Roger at the plate. Jordan McArdle, the big prospect signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks for Australian baseball in the on-deck circle. Big crowd on the edge of their seat. Scores locked at four apiece. Sammy Holland from the set. 0-2 on its way. 
delivers outside, hits the outside edge. And Semi Holland, after giving up the walk to lead off the top of the eight to Mitch Denning, gets out of a jam with back-to-back -back punch outs of Marcus Green Jr. and Angus Roger. So we're locked at four apiece in the preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes as we head to the bottom of the eighth. This is Brandon Bell with the San Francisco Giants, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. After about 10 years at Bingley, we reckon our staff are getting the hang of it. It's not nice to talk to people who know what they're talking about. The challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is David Wright with the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. So, welcome back. Virgin Australia is a proud partner with Australian Baseball League with constant innovation at the heart of everything they do. Their superior products and award winning service let you enjoy a world class experience on every flight. A big thank you to Virgin Australia. So, bottom of the eighth, David Rodriguez leading off Loke Van Mill out for his second inning of work here for the bite. Hope you're enjoying the coverage presented by Hailstorm Productions. Bandits TV. Bottom of the eighth, a fantastic game of baseball. Both teams locked at four apiece. The big seven foot one, Loke Van Mill, pitching to one of the hottest hitters in the Australian Baseball League. 4.42 in the regular season. But David Rodriguez had a tough day at the plate. Three strikeouts. He's 0 for 3 and certainly due. And he takes a cord strike. Two balls, one strike, and not happy with the call. So can the Bandits put the go-ahead run on here in the bottom of the eighth in the shape of David Rodriguez. Four, five, six, due up. David Rodriguez, Logan Wade, and Kevin Padlow for the Bandits. Loke Van Mill delivers the 2-1. That's down the third baseline, but just foul and out of play. That had extra bases written all over it. Foul by a meter down the third baseline. Steph Welch has had a workout down at the hot corner for the Adelaide Bite. So scores locked at four apiece. Two balls, two strike offering to David Rodriguez. And then we see a ground ball punch to the second baseman. And that is a good play by Josh Altman over to Jordan McArdle. And David Rodriguez is retired for the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. Nice play by the second baseman for the Adelaide Bite. No defensive changes for the Adelaide Bite at this stage. Nathan van der Linden is now in right field as I cast my eye around the ground for the defensive changes. Yes, that's the only one. So Nathan van der Linden is the new right fielder. Angus Roger is now out of this ball game. At the plate, taking the first pitch offering for a cord strike is the switch hitting Logan Wade. Once again, it looks like as this game progressed, both dugouts have increasingly... about the strike zone with Tom West. So let's see 
what transpires here in the bottom of the eighth with one out. Loke Van Mill delivers. Swing and a miss by Logan Wade, and he's now in a hole. No balls, two strikes. So Loke Van Mill, the seven foot one. Adelaide bite closer, and he hits one hard. Logan Wade to center field. Center fielder Mitch Denning coasts in and makes a nice grab for the second out here in the bottom of the eighth. So after retiring David Rodriguez on the ground out, he gets Logan Wade to fly out to shallow center field. So Loke Van Mill doing a fantastic job after giving up the double to Aaron Whitefield. He's retired the last four hitters in order. And now Kevin Padlow comes to the plate in the bottom of the eighth with two outs. Are we heading for extra innings? Or can one of these teams break up this 4-4 deadlock? Eight hits to the bite, six hits to the bandits. Big swing and a miss from Kevin Padlow. So Loke Van Mill certainly has the velocity up tonight. Throwing in that low 90 range, 93-94 MPH. Certainly has some good velo on the fastball. Ground ball up the middle, tough play. Jordan Cowan comes in. Great hands from the shortstop, makes an accurate throw, and Kevin Padlow is retired. So we are through four innings here in the ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbrokes. The Bandits fall, and the Bite fall. This is Brandon Bell with the San Francisco Giants, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. After about 10 years at Bingley, we reckon our staff are getting the hang of it. It's not nice to talk to people who know what they're talking about. the challenge gamble responsibly this is david wright with the new york mets and you're watching the australian baseball league thanks for joining us on game two of this three game series of the abl preliminary finals presented by ladbrokes two and a half hours we've been playing ball and that hasn't been long enough to break the deadlock four apiece by two fantastic ball clubs the adelaide bite and the brisbane bandits new pitcher on the hill for the Brisbane Bennett's out of the bullpen. The fifth man on the hill tonight, Kramer Champlin, Ryan Roland-Smith, Zach Tree, Sam Holland, and now Matthew Timms comes out of the bullpen. So can Matty Timms lock this order down here in the top of the ninth? Seven, eight, nine, due up. Jordan McArdle, Josh Altman, Alex Carter, and Paul Gonzalez joins us for the run home. And could we be heading to extra innings and bonus baseball? Paul, a fantastic game of baseball for a piece. You know what? You couldn't ask for anything better. You got a full house. You got a, uh, this. This game's been outstanding, and just had a chance to connect with all the partners tonight, from Ladbroke to Bendigo Bank, um, obviously. And then we see a ground ball, two hopper. Wade Dutton does a great job for the first out here in the top of the ninth. And the energy is exciting. They're just saying, what a great job as far as the ABL's done to put such a great product on the field tonight. And these guys have really stepped up uh, tonight and put on a good show. They certainly have, and we can't thank the ABL and Baseball Australia, Mr. Brett Pickett, Ben Foster, 
And of course, great to have Andrew Reynolds and Nina Zimmerman, our digital manager, and of course, Clinton Brown. So a big thank you to all the team at Baseball Australia and head office. So one out here in the top of the ninth. Scores locked at four apiece. Josh Altman at the plate. He's two for three in today's ball game. And Matty Timms with that split finger mm. once again. And Matty had a slow start to this season, but wow, I've been very impressed with the second half of the season for Matty Timms. Absolutely. And you know what? He's still on the radar for Team Australia. His stuff is good. You know, like I said, he had a little uh, control trouble with the, the split. A good pitch right there. Ooh, tough play for Logan Wade. Unable to come up with it. And unfortunately, a base hit. I'll, I'll probably see how they score that. But that's a tough play for Logan Wade, even if he comes up with it, to throw out the speedy runner getting down the line. It certainly is. So we'll just wait for the official scoring. And a big thank you to our scorers, Connie Stojakovic, Gail Fletcher, and on the game day, Sharon Buddy. So a big thank you to all the scorers. So just got a message uh, from Morley Foster from Chorus Call. Um, Lewis is going to do well. He obviously got struck in the back of the head today with a, with a, a random foul ball. X-rays hold up a uh, few hours, but it seems all well. So great to hear that he's going to be fine tonight. So to young Lewis, uh, all the best, and uh, we wish you a very speedy recovery. So thanks for the update, Paul, and uh, all the team here at Bennett's TV and all the Brisbane Bennett's are concerned about the young man. So let's hope young Lewis is A-OK. And uh, I'm sure he'll be back at the ballpark next year. Well, let, let's hope. Look, obviously, if we go to game two or game three, excuse me, he'll probably be here tomorrow <laughs> and, and going, Dad, I didn't get to see the game. But it's great to hear that he's doing okay and he's recovered well from, from, the, from the stray foul ball. So Alex Carter at the batter's box, top of the ninth. Go ahead, run on at first base. Ooh. Big swing from Alex Carter, fouled straight back to the screen. And this is where the cream rises, Paul. And these are the situations as a young man you dream about. Well, they are. And this is where you get an opportunity. And we talk about you can't simulate pressure situations in practice. You can be the best BP hitter in the game. You can hit in the cages all day. And that's where mentally you've got to create these situations in your head so that way when you're there, you can step up to the occasion. So can Timsey shut down this offense and get the bandits in, in there with an opportunity to try to get ahead and win this ball game? Good and, pitch. And the crowd starting to get behind, as you mentioned, Paul. It looked like he had good velocity on the split finger to go now to an 0-2 count. And it is, and that's where that veteran presence, you know, Timsey's not intimidated by any situation. You and I have got a chance to see him over the years, and he's had to face some tough hitters with Harmo and Luke Hughes. So doesn't seem to rattle him. This is the guy you want in this situation, and then you can hopefully get to Surly potentially with the lead. There goes the runner on the move. Strike wow. out. Throw him out. Double play. Is it a double play? No. <laughs> David Rodriguez on the strike him out. Throw him out. So Alex Carter retired on the strikeout. Wow. David Rodriguez with a great hose to second base. Logan Wade unable to prevent the tag Look, in a stolen base and, and by you, Josh Altman. Yeah, and you won't get to see it, but I tell you what, Rodriguez threw from his knees, and, and that's very a la Pudge Rodriguez or Molina. And that just shows how strong this young man's arm is and, and very impressive. And every day he continues to show us his tools and why he's potentially going to be in the big leagues in the next three or four years. Wow, and that is a error to the shortstop on Josh Altman just going back on the scoring. So an E6, and now Josh Altman with a stolen base, and he's the go-ahead run with two outs and Ladarius Clark at the plate for the Adelaide Bites. So the fifth time through the lineup, and this man is certainly starting to find his range. He's one for three with a stolen base and now a dangerous hitter at the plate for yeah, the bite. look, he is dangerous. And when I look at athletes in the league, he's probably one of the better athletes in the league. And like I said, this guy's got physical big league tools. This is a big opportunity for the bite. And timmy has got to make sure he bared down, make some good pitches. Pitch a little bit in right there, just missed. And obviously Rodriguez wanted it. But that's a, that's, a, that's a tough call for Tommy West on the inner half. Well, Tommy's had a fantastic day behind the plate. A big thank you to all the umpires around the Australian Baseball League. So Ladarius Clark has an opportunity to put the bite up here in the top of the ninth with two outs. Josh Altman on at second base. There we see a ground ball. Kevin Padlow, one hopper, makes a throw across the diamond for the third out here in the top of the ninth. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Scores locked at four apiece. Game two of the ABL preliminary finals presented by Ladbrokes. This is Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows, the gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Charlie, have you closed the back door? No one saw that coming. What a move. They just did not 
We've all had regrets, but your home loan shouldn't be one of them. At Bendigo Bank, we know a great rate means nothing without great service. Bendigo Home Loans. When it's time for you to settle, have no regrets. One Business School is opening up new opportunities for graduates, as well as new markets, and innovating for tomorrow without sacrificing what we have today. All by challenging the future. UQ Business School. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head to head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Judy Gorius with the New York Yankees, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Well, I hope you're enjoying this ball game presented by Ladbrokes in conjunction with Hail Storm Productions, Paul Gonzalez and Kevin Doon on the call. What a fitting way for the Bennett's to go through to the championship series to face the Melbourne Aces. Bottom of the ninth, scores locked at four apiece. Yeah, it's been an outstanding contest tonight and, and you couldn't ask for a better game. 4-4 in the ninth inning. We got basically the toughest pitcher or one of the toughest pitchers in the Australian Baseball League on the mound coming at you at seven foot one blowing about 95 96 miles an hour you couldn't ask for better baseball than you can tonight here at AFA Stadium in Brisbane seven eight nine drew up Tommy Malone David Sutherland Wade Dutton should there be any changes and we'll just scan around the Adelaide defensively looks like no changes Adelaide Tommy Malone foul ball out of play down the third baseline so what a great game of baseball. Lights are shining brightly. Big thank you to all the staff. And uh, I know you've got a quick uh, shout-out there, Paul. Quick shout-out, former teammate and a great man, great baseball man, Mr. Shane Bennett, uh, just giving us a bit of a thumbs-up from Adelaide. So it's great to have his support and great to still have him in the sport. In, in the sport. And, and, look, he means so much to baseball in Australia. Major League player, uh, his contributions can't even go untold as far as what he did for for the game and and it's great to be on the same field with him as a national team representative well what a fantastic uh, player for australia and a great representative overseas is shane bennett great to have those ex abl players coming and bridging that gap to these young guys and what it means and that's outside and we talk about what it means bridging that gap with the cubacks and that type of involvement great to have the older guys now pushing through with the younger guys in the abl we need it unless you've reached the apex which he did uh, of the game both on a national level and in major league baseball it allows him to download some of that information to the next generation and you look at the talent the caliber of players from the Welshies uh, through the system. Ooh, ball's hit hard Hard to left field. Ladarius Clark tracking across and makes a fantastic play in left field. Tommy Malone gave it a ride on a line, but doing a fantastic job defensively. Logue Vermeil turning around and giving a quick nod to Ladarius Clark because that is a major league play. Uh, Absolutely, and and that's why he's going to be an impact player in the big leagues. He can run a baseball down. And when you say, what does that mean? He outruns the baseball. And right there, that ball normally hit, that's a double down the left field line. When you've got the speed of that young man, he can just outrun the baseball. Wow, well, great defensive play. So with one swing of the bat, the Bandits can send this big crowd home happy. And David Sutherland, 320 games with the LA Dodgers with one Ooh. swing of the bat. And that's what he had on mind. Loke Van Mill pulling the string. Great change up to leak it ahead of the count. No balls, one strike. And you've got to like the strategy here. The bite sits there and say they're not playing for tomorrow. They're playing for today. You bring out your closer early, and he's done a brilliant job for the bite to now keep keep the bite in this ball game 4-4. Like I said, when you got a 7-1 presence coming at you, throwing 91 to 95 miles an hour, it does make it tough for those bandits hitters. It certainly does. So one ball, one strike on David Sutherland here in the bottom of the ninth, 4-4. And that was a big swing. And once again, Logue Van Mills really pumped the velo up, throwing about 95, 96. Yeah, but when you're coming 7-1, it's about 98 to 100. And that's the thing. People don't realize his release point, he's halfway there coming from 7-1. Plus, he's on top of that bump, so the ball's on you quickly. He's running about 47 feet. <laughs> Logue Van Mill delivers, Ooh. and that one's hit high down the third baseline and out of play. And just touching back on Shane Bennett, the seventh Australian to appear at the big leagues for the Montreal Expos, and I'm sure a day he'll remember the 22nd of August, 1997, to make his debut for the old Montreal Expos. And what a great ball club. I love the uniforms of the Expos. Look at who he played with, Vladimir Guerrero. Wow. You know what I mean? What a great ball club. You talk about the class. You had Pedro Martinez at one stage, Moises Alou, you know, 
Larry Walker, you know. Just and David Southern leans on one, so Ladarius Clark has been placed absolutely perfect down that left field line. Looks like he's just pinching towards the left field line, but wow, yeah, Shane Bennett, just an absolute great guy for Australian baseball. So you look at those guys, you got potential. You got Pedro Hall of Famer. You got uh, Joe Carter, Carter yep. uh, Hall of Famer. Larry Walker will be a Hall of Famer. Um, or is he? You're going to have to ask that. That's a trick question for you. I know you, you'll probably look that up very quickly. <laughs> However, but just, and Moises Lowe, the manager well, yeah. over there. Uh, look. And the Hawk, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> the Hawk. Yeah, he was a great player for the Expo. So here we go. Wade Dutton, pocket out. Can Wade Dutton finish things here in one swing of the bat in the bottom of the night? Two outs. Just quietly, if he leaves the ballpark here, this crowd goes nuts. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Andre Dawson-esque. Wade Dutton. Brad Dutton, his older brother's in the crowd watching closely. Can Wade Dutton finish this with one swing or will we go extra innings? Mm. Takes a fast ball. And now two balls, no strikes. Loke Van Mill, his third inning of work. Up to 35 pitches and doing a fantastic job out of the bullpen. So the $100 million question, do you keep him out there? I mean, and, and this becomes the, the Chapman question, what the Cubbies did in the World Series. Ground ball, second baseman Josh Altman, and we're heading to bonus coverage here at AFA Stadium. Scores locked after nine complete innings, four apiece between the Bite and the Bandits. Hey, I'm Mike Trout, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. In an increasingly competitive global environment, foreign exchange is critical to the profitability of many Australian companies. Business owners have enough to worry about without having to deal with the complexities of global markets. At Compass, we listen to our clients to understand their business. We provide competitive exchange rates and we work with you to better manage your risk and to improve your bottom line. Our success is directly linked to your success. Borrell has built up a long-standing reputation of excellence and exceptional performance. With successful completion of thousands of high-value projects across multiple sectors, our clients can have full confidence in Borrell's ability to provide supply chain security, local expertise, commitment to safety, and most of all, certainty of outcome for your project. The earlier we get involved, the more value we can add. Contact us or visit our website at borrel.com.au. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Lorenzo Kane from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. And what a fantastic game of baseball. Nine innings can't split these two fantastic ball clubs with rich history here in the Australian Baseball League. And that music means none other. The Bulldog has been off the leash. He's made his way to the pitching rubber. None other than Ryan Self for bonus coverage here. Free baseball in the top of the 10th. Absolutely, and this is the man you need to put out. This is the heart of the order for the bite. So what do you do? You bring in your stopper. Right now, you've got to put up a zero, and then you give your offense a chance to come in and win this ball game. So great move by David Nielsen and the Brisbane Bandits. So Ryan Searle, the Bulldog, in to throw his first pitch. Two, three, four, drop Jordan mm. Cowan. Big swing, and I like the approach of this young man. As we said, coming off a great season at Bakersfield, hit 306, and coming off that injury season, doing a fantastic job in the Australian Baseball League. Just quietly, this kid's got some tools. You know, you, know, you, you see him, you look at a guy, um, he just does everything right. He puts the ball in play. He hits the situations. He can bunt. He runs defensively. He's solid. He's a guy that can play multiple positions. I see a guy with a big future. So Ryan Searle just missing downstairs to even the count. One ball, one strike with that familiar toss of the ball from his glove to his bare hand. The lick, the wipe, the lick, the wipe, the toss, the glove, bare hand. Ryan Searle, top of the 10th. 
bonus baseball here. Game two, Saturday the 4th of February 2007 in off speed. Hit up the middle. Logan Wade ranges oh. across. Can't come up with a play in shallow centre field. Was going to be a tough play. Logan Wade doing a great job ranging to his left to even make the rulings. Yeah, he covered a lot of ground right there. And just quietly, that's going to be a tough play. Be interesting how they score that. I think with his speed, I give that a base hit. 100%. I don't think even it comes up when he throws him out. Now here's where we talk about the game of chess. You got three, four, five coming up to the plate. Now what do you do? Do you put a bunt on? Doubt it, because you got three forty six home runs, twenty seven RBIs, nine twenty seven OPS. I let him swing the shillelagh and see what he can do. You got the ABL championship hitter at the plate. Won the league, three forty. Three forty. Wow. Not bad. Not bad. Aaron Whiteford, unfortunately, just going down that last at-bat, 3.38 to finish second. Ryan Searle on the hill, speed aboard. Josh Cowan, there we see the butt. Wow. No, can't come up with it. So the veteran, Mitch Denning, fouls it back to the screen. So it looks like the wheel's on him. Yeah, so here's my question. I got 3.40. I got league leader and everything, and I've got him bunny. That's team baseball right there. This guy can leave the yard too, but obviously that's the respect of Ryan Searle knowing how tough he is coming in the back end. However, he pitched how many innings last night? Two. Two innings. So, you know what? That's respect for Ryan Stern, what he can do. But that shows what the how bad the Adelaide might want this ball game. So the corners will be crashing down. Ryan Searle from the set kicks. Bunt once again on. Pulls Ooh. it back. Wow. Just missing. Wow. Wow, Ryan Searle wanted wow. that call. I think everybody wanted the call. There was a little bit of a, a knee buckle from Tommy West right there. Didn't give in the whole dugout to Tommy. Even, even Nielsen, he's asking, you buckled on me. You buckled. You got to give me that one. Great pitch, great location. But you got to also show the respect of the league leading hitter of the ABL as well. So top of the 10th. Go ahead, run aboard at first base. Ryan Searle delivers foul Ooh. ball. Oh, Mark Chandler. Just flashing the glove down there in the first base coach's box. So speed aboard. Veteran hitter at the plate. He's 0 for 3 with a walk in today's ball game. 417 games of experience with the Boston Red Sox. His sixth season in the Australian Baseball League. So that's the reality. Every pitch, when you're talking about the ninth inning and, and the pressures, when you've got 3, 4, 5 coming up at the plate, you've got to, you want every pitch, you want every close pitch because you know one mistake, especially to the threat of, these, of this bat bite order, can be a game changer. One ball, two strike offering on its way, and that's hit hard to right field. Trent Ultra makes his way over the speed of Jordan Cowan. He rounds second, doesn't slow down, heads for third, and just like that in the top of the 10th, the bite have runners aboard at first and third. Wow, big complexion has changed over this ball game in extra innings. Absolutely, and, and that's what I talk about when you talk about a veteran hitter and you talk about a threat, 340 guy led the league. A big hit in a big situation against a tough pitcher. Now we got first and third in the ninth inning, tied 4 4. Top of the 10th. 10th. We are in bonus coverage here. They need to change the scoreboard then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's so, just four bad, apiece. Poor information. I can only go on the information shown. 10th. So, Marcus Green Jr. at the plate, first and third. Infield playing in. I'm going to have to talk to people about that. We will. What Paul's referring to is the scoreboard here at the ground. At the ground. And he I'm, shows nine. So my team, the Hailstorm team, is doing what they do best, and they're put on the 10th. There we see a hard-hit ball. Oh, Kevin Padlow checks the runner at third, gets the lead runner. Wow, that's a great play from Kevin Padlow. Checked the runner at third in the shape of Jordan Cowan, hesitated, and then got the lead runner at second base. Wow, in Mitch Denning. That's a hell of a play. That's a great play right there. So the ball smokes the third baseman. Padlow come up with it, checked the runner at third, who can run extremely well, froze him, got the fourth at second, the positive of that keeps first and second, excuse me, first and third keeps the double play in order against the tough hitting Stephen Welsh. Wow. Highlight real play from the 20th prospect with the Tampa Bay raising Kevin Padlow. But it doesn't stop there. You retire Marcus Green Jr. only to face now Stephen Welch. An absolute veteran presence for Australian baseball. 785 games of minor league experience. His seventh season in the league. First and third occupied. Ryan oh. Searle starts him off outside with that cut fastball. Great late movement. 
look, and this is where you got to play. you got to respect Welshie. Welshie's been on the big stage. He's played at high levels in America. He's played for Team Australia for in a number of WBCs. He's played in friendlies in Japan. Big, big, big situation for the Brisbane and the Adelaide Bight. Ooh, good pitch, good location. So it looks like there is a base open. It's not the familiar base you think about, but second base is open here and not the end of the world should Stefan Welch get on. So first and third, two balls. Good hitting count now for the five-hole hitter for the Adelaide Bight. So just quietly, it looks like the manager for the Adelaide Bight is talking to the on-deck hitter, saying if he walks him, he potentially could have a squeeze situation or a safety squeeze situation with the batter on deck. And that is downstairs for ball three. So they may put him on. Look and see if they'll actually intentionally walk him or just pitch very, very carefully in the situation. So Nathan van der Linden in the on-deck circle was a defensive replacement for Angus Roger out there in right field. So Steph Welch, three balls, offering on its way. And that's outside. So four straight pitches. And Steph Welch is aboard via the walk. So the Adelaide bite here in the top of the 10th with one out have men at all positions here and now Nathan van der Linden the left-handed hitting defensive replacement for Angus Roger makes his way to the plate so now here's where the strategy comes in looks like Rodriguez having a chat with Surly right now and basically saying look here's the situation you got lefty de defense replacement so now you got to be really careful like I said uh, Minzy had a quick uh, discussion with him potentially does the safety squeeze come into play and this is where the chess game begins between the managers so big situation if he does square around the normal thing to do is go elevated fastball up in the zone to see if he can get him to pop the ball up so you got him come up with a 190 average no home runs no rbis so the pressure right now has to be on the batter corners pinching in middle infielders playing for the double play Runner not going. And there we see a little squeeze safety bunt. David Sullivan comes in back hands it fires to David Rodriguez for the force out. And wow, what a play! Jordan Cowan with the head first slide, not in time. And David Sullivan, great defensive play, speedy, four stolen bases across 275 games. But wow, he come in like a cat to get the force out at home plate. That is a big time play by a veteran player. So Sullivan, good heads up baseball, didn't panic in a situation when you've got. 11, 1,200 people. Looks like play at home right there. And that's a big out for the Brisbane and a great job. Once again, like I said, I'm reading the game before the game. And there you go. He did the safety squeeze. Good execution by the Brisbane to prevent that go-ahead red from coming in. Jewel, Olympian, silver medalist, All Paul over Gonzalez. It. All over it. With the best hair and mane in and the Australian Baseball League. The only problem is we need to change the scoreboard. Still reads the ninth inning. I'll have to talk to those people. Okay. I don't think we can. So, I can do anything. Jordan McArdle at the plate, top of the 10th. Ryan Sell delivers with two Ooh, outs with that pitch. cut fastball in, right in the inside edge for a cord strike. And Jordan McArdle did not like the call, turns around and makes his way out of the batter's box. That's okay, and that's what pressure baseball is about. And you're going to talk about umpires, you got a veteran guy on the mound, and we talk about that's a big league, or a Dingo used to say when Roger Clemens was pitching, that's a Hall of Fame strike, mate. Loaded bases here, two outs in the top of the 10th. Ryan Sell delivers outside, mm. evens the count, one ball, one strike. So Jordan McArdle, who just inked a contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Big situation for the young man. 1-1 one, one count here in the top of the 10th. Adelaide Bight have men at every station. Ryan Searle from the set, 1-1 one, one offering on its way, kicks and delivers outside, Ooh, just missing. Tough, tough pitch. Good location right there. And that ball just down and away, looks sunk away and didn't get the pitch, and he wants it. Even the fans behind home plate want that call. And that's a tough, tough pitch right there for Ryan Stroke because obviously it changes the complexity. Now it's 2-1 instead of 1-2. Now he's got to bear down, stay focused on job on hand. Game two, best of three from AFA Stadium here on a great Saturday night for baseball, the 4th of February 2017. Ryan Searle, two balls, one strike on its way. Big swing and a foul ball from Jordan McArdle, two balls, two strikes, and the crowd is really starting to get amped up, and the enthusiasm in the box with Paul Gonzalez to my right, 2-2, two, two, top of the 10th, loaded bases. It is. Wow. I mean, it is intense, and I mean, we feel the energy in the in the box right now. Crowd's on their feet, timeout right by Rodriguez right now, and that's a good timeout, and that's what I'm talking about, the youth of this young man sees the situation, it's emotional right now. And then you say, well, what do you mean emotional? Right now, the heart rates of the infielders is high because they know ground ball is a big play. 
crowd's into it. Settle your pitcher down, get him back down, what he needs to do, and that's execute the pitch right now. Don't worry about the situation, execute the pitch. Ryan Searle gets the sign, nods his head. Bases loaded for the Adelaide bite. Top of the tent, scores locked at four apiece. Jordan McArdle with the 2-2 offering, kicks and delivers. Mm. Downstairs, great play by David Rodriguez. And now, one of the most exciting plays in the game of baseball. Loaded bases, full count, two outs. Everyone will be on the move. And this is going to be exciting because the runner at third in the shape of Marcus Green Jr. is probably going to end up very close to home plate as the pitch arrives. So right now, Ryan Searle's got to be focused on one thing. That's the batter. So he knows he's going to get his sign. He's going to lock in, execute the pitch right now. Runners will be on the move, 3-2, with two outs here in the ninth inning. Marcus Tenth Green court. Jr. on the move. And there we see one hit sharply. Left fielder Tommy Malone tracks back. Oh, what a play. Tommy Malone in deep left field. And Ryan Sill gets out of the top of the 10th. We head to the bottom of the 10th with scores locked at four apiece. Thanks for joining us on Ladbrokes, presented by Hailstorm Productions. Jason Hayward from Chicago Cubs, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. The whistle blows. The gates crash open. It's now or never. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. Take me back to the throne. Do you feel that leash on you? Take me back, take me back. Fielder's Choice is the official team store of the Perth Heat and proud partner of baseball in Australia. With the best selection of baseball, softball, and t-ball equipment in the country, make Fielder's Choice your one-stop shop for gloves, bats, cleats, batting gloves, and more. And don't forget, you can even purchase your heat tickets right in store. Heat win! Heat win! Find our stores across the country in Perth, Melbourne, and Brisbane. And look out for Fielder's Choice functions at Heat Games and in Melbourne this season. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is Peter Moylan from the Kansas City Royals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the coverage presented by Ladbrokes here in the ABL preliminary final series. The Bandits are up one game to nil. This is game two, best of three series. Paul Gonzalez and Kevin Dean in the box, the fifth time through the Bandits lineup, top of the order, and Loke Van Mill to commence his fourth inning of work in relief. So Paul Gonzalez just joining us once again, getting exciting. Aaron Whitefield. Two for three for three in today's ball game with a walk. Wow, great day at the plate for the leadoff man. There we see a little bun attempt. Corners crashing. I like that play. I do too. And right now, from both managerial's uh, perspective, you got the guy you want on the bump for the bite, and you've got the man at the plate that you want in in, in the batter's box right now with uh, Aaron Whitefield. And then we see Aaron Whitefield with the big swing and a miss. Evens the count. One ball, one strike. Loke Van Mill. Wow. No action last night, and hasn't he come out tonight? Fourth inning of work. Just quietly, my opinion only. Doesn't really matter. It does. <laughs> I think right now we got the best player, or one of the best players in Australia at the plate right now. Certainly concur. Aaron Whitefield, what a fantastic season. He's done it all. He can hit. He can hit for power. He can run. He can play defense. He can bat for average. He can swipe a base. He can throw. Defensively, he's sound, and he's the spark plug of this Bandits and Australian lineup. And I think he'll be in that 28-man roster come March. He has to be. If he's not, I'm calling John Deeble tomorrow and saying this guy's got to be on that team. He's an impact player for Team Australia. He's a leader, and he's great in the clubhouse. So I tell you what, he is the future of Australian baseball right here at the plate. As he just takes a breather, 2-2 two -two count here in the bottom of the 10th inning. Loke Van Mill on the hill for the Adelaide bite. Aaron Whitefield at the plate. Aaron Whitefield this time. Mm. 
doesn't come up trumps and Loke Van Mill retires him with a hard fastball for the first out. And absolutely, and that's what we talk about, the challenge right there. You're facing a guy that's played the AAA level, seven foot one. He's bringing it 91 to 95 miles an hour and he can get up to as high as 98, 99 miles an hour. And he stepped up the challenge. I like this. And like I said, this is good baseball. This is great for these young men. And that's what they're going to face in WBC. They're going to see 91 to 98. And so if you're not ready to go, pack it up. Pack it up. As we see Miranda Friskin down hard up against the backdrop. And a big thank you to Miranda from Baseball Australia. Does a fantastic job. So Trent Olchin at the plate. And Trent with a big swing and a miss. And with one swing of the bat, this man right here can end this ball game. And he can. And he's been at the big stage. He's been at the big stage for Team Australia at the, in the Olympics, WBC, and at the highest level for the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Arizona Diamondbacks. So right man, right spot. Fastball missing outside, 99 games of big league experience. Loke Van Mill across 10 seasons, and he's had 13 games at the MLB spring training. So both of these guys have basically been to the highest level. Absolutely, and this is a good matchup, and this is what you see day-to-day when you play at the elite level. One ball, one strike, bottom of the tenth. Scores locked at four apiece. Loke Van Mill delivers, and that one's hit up the middle off the end of the bat. Trent Olchin hustling down first base but not in time great play by josh altman the second baseman come in and made a nice play in and to his right yeah really good play right there tough play up the middle came in good route to get to the baseball and finish it with the the second out of the inning so here we are late in the ball game these guys continue to play tough quality baseball all the way in, into the 10th inning hope you're enjoying the bonus coverage here at hailstorm productions bonus baseball and I am assured that the tiebreaker rules are not in effect tonight so should we go further than 11 we will continue play to the normal rules of the game of baseball so Loke Van Mill with two outs Ooh. Mitch Nielsen the switch hitting Mitch Nielsen big swing and a miss and once again Loke Van Mill working quickly and working ahead of these very dangerous bandit hitters and, and this is great I mean for these players right here they'd love to end it with one swing of the bat and, and that's what you said they're they're competing and, uh, and they're, they're competing against one of the best in the world when you look at what he's done at, in the world landscape. So great opportunity for these young men to step up and see if they can get the job done. One ball, one strike to the DH in the three hole. Mitch Nielsen, Loke Van Mill delivers and that one's hit sharply. Second baseman dives, can't come up with the play. Good, a valiant attempt by Josh Altman. That one sails to Nathan Van Der Linden in right field and aboard is Mitch Nielsen and now the hottest hitter is David Rodriguez with two outs in the bottom of the 10th. And we've talked about this potentially on the planet because there's not many teams playing at the moment. So he could be the hottest hitter in the planet. Right man, right spot with an opportunity. See if he can put runner in scoring position and give Logan Wade an opportunity to drive him in. Wow, exciting finish here for the Bandits and the Bite. Nine innings, not enough to separate these teams. We're in the bottom of the 10th. Scores locked at four apiece, two outs. And the crowd's starting to find their voice. Looks like Joel. Joel's got the bandage flag. flag and he's he, got the bandage flag. I'll tell you what, he's put in a big effort. Joel's been here since about 8 o'clock this morning helping get in this field set up. <laughs> he's done a brilliant job, and now he's getting the crowd into it. So great job by Joel McGinnis. David Ooh. Rodriguez strokes it foul and a play down the right field line. And Joel is going to come right in front of you. You can just see the legs of Joel behind home plate with the grey shirt, the yellow flag just <laughs> drilling down, and he's getting everyone up and out of their seats. And that's what he does. I tell you, he's a spark plug for us, uh, and he's been for a long time. It's great to have him part of the Bandits family, and he continues to do a great job for the Brisbane Bandits. He certainly does. David Rodriguez takes it outside. So one ball, one strike. And hey, just to mention the Caribbean series just commenced. So great to have the Caribbean series on board. Yeah, look, I did see that as well. Um, quietly, quietly, it uh, looks like there's potential more baseball for the Brisbane Bandits Ooh. on Tuesday oh. with uh, against the world number four team, Team Taiwan. David oh. Rodriguez strokes one in the right field. Nathan Van der Linen comes up. Mitch Nielsen. Stands aboard at second base. Runners at first and second. And David Rodriguez extends his hitting streak to 21. 21, not bad. You'd like to carry that into spring training, potentially make a big league team keep doing that. But look, another big hit for Mr. Rodriguez. He continues to come up big for the minutes and did exactly what we talked about. That gives Logan Wade an opportunity to draw in 
the winning run with Mitch Nielsen at second base. Well, wow, wouldn't that be fitting for one of the stalwarts for Brisbane Bennett's baseball, not to mention the connection with his father, Greg Wade, who was a manager for the Brisbane Bennett's, an ex-player, fantastic career himself, Greg Wade, as John <laughs> McGuinness is just racing around. Looks like we've got a pinch runner making his way aboard. So Andrew Campbell is aboard here at second base as Steve Mintz has this long discussion with all the infielders. And, of course, you can tell Loke Van Mill because he's two foot above everyone else. No, he is. And I tell you what, McGinnis just ran through. And the Brisbane Lions are here tonight. They're behind home plate. They've booked the uh, the uh, the backstop tonight. And funny enough, the, the team doctor, uh, Andrew Smith, who was a, a former Bandits player, who's now the team doctor for the uh, for the Vite, uh, excuse me, for the uh, Brisbane Lions is there as well tonight. So it's great to, ha to have him here supporting the, the Bandits. And the Lions asked me, was Smitty any good? And I said, no, he's a great player. And they all high-fived him. So it's great to have Andrew Smith here tonight supporting his alumni team, the Brisbane Bandits. It certainly is. Was a fantastic player was Andrew Smith, the Brisbane Bandits, back in 93. Across 100 games, he hit 249. Not bad for a doctor. Not bad for a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Andrew Campbell represents the winning run for the Bandits on its second base with two outs here in the bottom of the 10th. Logan Ooh. Wade, big swing and good play by Marcus Green Jr. to keep that ball in front of him. I like that. You know, we talk about a moving bat is dangerous and that's what you want to be. Had a team meeting right there. Good pitch uh, right there. Good hard two-seamer. Probably about 92 mile hour two-seamer down and away. But I like the aggressiveness from Logan Wade here in this at-bat. And I love the speed. Now aboard Andrew Campbell at second base. Loke Van Mill checks Andrew. Andrew, a very good lead. Delivers. And this is outside. Mm. One ball, one strike. Loke Van Mill with a big smile. What an effort from Loke Van Mill into his three and two-thirds innings. Credit to him. He's done a brilliant job. He's walking off the mound because he wanted that pitch, just like Ryan Searle wanted the other pitch. And that just changes the complexity of this at bat. Now 1-1 one, one instead of 0-2. As a pitcher, he'll tell you, would you rather be 0-2 with, with the time with the go-ahead run at second? Absolutely. Now he's got to get back in the zone, make quality pitches. Can the Bandits finish it right here and qualify for the ABL Championship Series against the Melbourne Aces? Loke Van Mill delivers. Logan Wade, big mm. swing, best on best. Good fastball. This time, Loke Van Mill comes on top. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes, and he reared back, and that's probably 95, 96 miles an hour, and that just shows the velocity of this man, and he's deep in the ballgame. So he's still got plenty in the tank. He's showing a lot of velo deep in the ballgame. He's certainly going deep here, three and two-thirds. Logan Wade, the switch hitting, ex-Minnesota twin, 310 games with the Minnesota Twins. Can he come through with the Brisbane Bennett's here in the bottom of the 10th? Loke Van Mill outside. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two outs. So Millsy with one step was halfway to the dugout. So that's the thing. He's seven foot one. He wanted that pitch, close borderline pitch, now making it 2-2 with two outs here in the bottom of the 10th inning with the, with the go-ahead run at second base. Nice, getting better. So Loke Van Mill steps back onto the rubber. Logan Wade, can he come through in the clutch for the Bandits? 2-2 offering on its way. Logan Wade fouls it straight back into the screen. Doing a good job to fight off those tough pitches from Loke Van Mill. And when you're saying tough pitches, he's just fighting off 96 on the outer half. That's a tough and a good job by Logan Wade to keep the ad bat alive. Now, can he capitalize in this situation? I'll tell you right now, as a former infielder and outfielder, this is when the heart's racing because even the routine ground balls aren't so routine. So he's got to put the ball in play and see if he can make something happen. Good things happen when the ball's in play. 2-2, Logan Ooh. Wade with the off-speed pitch. So Logan Van Mill pulled the string. Logan Wade showing that years of experience fights off another tough pitch. Tough pitch, and that's what you want. We talk about quality at bats in situations like this, and that's all you want from your guys, having quality at bats, working deep in the count. If you can put the ball in play, anything can happen. Big thank you to Team Spencer and Scott Carrington. Swing for Scoot. Hope you're enjoying the coverage all the team from both of those good charity organisations. So 2-2 count here in the bottom of the 10th. Loke Van Mill steps off. Andrew Campbell with a very good lead because both pivots are playing about 20 feet away from second base, the shortstop and the second base. Hence, Andrew Campbell has about a 20-foot lead aboard at second base. <laughs> Loke Van Mill, 2-2, two, two, two outs in the bottom of the tent. Scores locked at four apiece. Logan mm. Wade, third consecutive foul ball into the Gabba.com.au netting. So just quietly, the last time Logan battled was against Warren Sopold, and he did some damage. Can the same thing happen? Scenario, four tough pitches, fouled it off. 
can he put the ball in play, and can he make some, uh, do some magic for the Brisbane Bandit here in the bottom of the 10th inning? Wow, what a ball game. Hope you're enjoying it. The ABL Preliminary Championship Final Series presented by Ladbrokes. Logan Wade at the plate. Courtesy of Hail Storm Productions. 2-2 count here in the bottom of the 10th. Andrew Campbell aboard at second. Logan Wade up the middle. Is it going to get through? No, it's not going to get mm. through. Wow, what a great play by Josh Altman. We're heading to the top of the 11th. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Scores locked at four apiece here in the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. This is George Springer with the Houston Astros, and you are watching Australian Baseball League. This is Info Hub from Ladbrokes. Simply turn your phone on its side for head-to-head -head stats, live betting trends, and more. This is staying on top of your game. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge. Gamble responsibly. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. This is Andrew McCutcheon with the Pittsburgh Pirates and you are watching the Australian Baseball League. Hope you're enjoying the coverage of the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes in conjunction with Hail Storm Productions. Bonus coverage, free baseball, top of the 11th, and no international tiebreaker rules here tonight at AFA Stadium. We'll be playing right through with the rules of baseball in full effect. So hope you're enjoying the coverage. Paul Gonzalez and Kevin Dean, exciting up in the box. We hope you're enjoying the call. Loke Van Mill doing a fantastic job through four relief innings. And Ryan Searle, the Bulldog for the Brisbane Bennets, aboard for his second inning of work. And he'll be facing the hot-hitting Josh Altman, Alex Carter, and then back to the top of the order, Ladarius Clark for the sixth time tonight. Yeah, it is. It's, you're talking about you got your two big horses going head-to-head -head here in a tie ball game in the 11th inning. You couldn't write a better script. That's exactly what you want. The end, the, the end of the day, it's going to come down to who wants it more here in game two of this three-game best of three. Wow, exciting series. The Melbourne Aces are sitting back. They await the winner. Andrew Campbell remains in the game as the designated hitter because he was the pinch runner for Mitch Nilsson. So Mitch Nilsson is now out of the game. That one stroked to right field. Trent Ultron playable. Centre fielder Aaron Whitefield comes across, but Trent Ultron right in front of the Reedy towing makes a fantastic catch. Wow, Josh Altman gave that a ride, but just come up short. So once again, and this is shows... You know, our partnership and our relationships that we have with, with our partners, Course Call. Morley's just to reconfirm that his son is fine and, and everything is right. he's in stable condition. And like I said, if people don't know, he got hit with a, a stray foul ball uh, in the first inning and he's doing okay. So it's great to have him there. I'm glad he's doing well and he's still supporting the Brisbane Bandits here in the 11th inning. And the DH, Alex Carter to the plate. Ryan Searle starts him off with that slide piece, getting ahead, and you can just feel that Ryan Searle set himself for a big outing. Look, I think every time he steps on the mound, you got to remember <laughs> two years ago he was a starter for the Brisbane Bandits. The organization made a decision to put him in the bullpen, best decision ever. Um, strikeout leader, save leader of the Australian Baseball League, and he's just thrived in that position since he's taken the ball when he gets the ball handed to him in the close games, in the, in the back end of the game. So once again, the Bennets have made some really good strategic moves, you know, and both teams are now taking best on best. They certainly are coming in with 305 strikeouts. Ryan Searle delivers mm. and another strikeout to add to that tally as Alex Carter is retired for the second out here in the top of the 11th inning. 
top of the 11th and this is like i said everybody wants to do it with one swing of the bat looks like the little busters coming out with the little bang bang and that's what we love to see from the big ryan searle wow only trailing brian grenning brian has 325 strikeouts day sunku with 35 saves ryan Searle with 31 and matty williams with 27 so they're the save leaders and strikeout leaders so ladarius clark with two outs here in the top of the 11th can Ryan Searle get through a clean one, two, three innings? More importantly, will Loke Van Mill come out for his fifth inning of work? So exciting opportunity here for the Brisbane Bandits. So big situation. Ladarius Clark, the sixth time through the order here for the Adelaide Bite, proudly presented by SA Power Networks. Hope all our South Australian listeners are enjoying the call. 4-4 ball game in the top of the 11th. Big Ooh. swing on the high fastball. Evens the count at one ball, one strike. And, and like I said, this is best on best, and, and, and you love it. You know, when you talk about as an athlete, you want to compete against the best, and that's what both teams are getting an opportunity to see. Two great arms come in here in the back end of this game and their battles on. Another good pitch by Ryan Searle for strike two. Here are two outs in the 11th inning. Well, we talk about that slider. It looks like he just took a little bit off the slider. So when you talk about the slider, the cutter, the two-seamer, the change-up, then you add the speed and velocity change. He's got 12 or 13 pitches up to his disposal. And, and that's what he's done. You know, he's, he's traveled now. He's global. He's, he's played in Japan. He's played in Taiwan. Another big, big pitch for out number three for the Brisbane Bandits. And that gives him a chance to come out and hopefully win this ball game in the 11th inning. We're through. Top of the 11th. We head to the bottom of the 11th. Bandits and Bite locked at four apiece. This is Brandon Bell with the San Francisco Giants, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. This is Super Bowl 51. This is top odds from Ladbrokes when the Patriots take on the Falcons this Monday. Ladbrokes, up for the challenge since 1886. Gamble responsibly. After about 10 years at Bingley, we reckon our staff are getting the hang of it. It's not nice to talk to people who know what they're talking about. the challenge gamble responsibly this is david wright with the new york mets and you're watching the australian baseball league and a fantastic relief performance by loke van mill through four innings but his night is now done here in the bottom of the 11th inning because zach cooper the ex-philadelphia philly tampa bay and milwaukee brewers star played 2016 with the southern illinois miners is on the hill comes in with a 2-0 record 1.17 ERA across seven games, three started. Wow, and this guy is a great luxury to have out of the bullpen in the right-handed hard-throwing Zach Cooper for the Adelaide Bite. Facing him will be 6-7-8 in the Bandits lineup here. Kevin Padlow, Tommy Malone and David Sutherland. So with one swing of the bat here in the bottom of the 11th, scores locked at four apiece. No tiebreaker rules. And Zach Cooper starts him off with a nice curveball against Kevin Padlow. If you don't, in this, especially in this situation, and that's why they brought him in. Credit, Van Mills did a brilliant job. I mean, seriously, he, he, he's outstanding. And, and, and a credit to him in the effort he put in because normally his workload would be one, maybe two innings max. And he put a big, big effort in for the bite tonight. So now he's handing the ball over. 
Now he's got to get the job done, put a zero on the board. Zach Cooper delivers. That's up high and out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike. And how about four innings of work for Loke Van Mill? Three hits, no runs, no walks, three strikeouts. What a fantastic relief performance. And now we're deep into this ball game. The ABL preliminary final presented by Ladbroke. Zach Cooper delivers. Kevin Ooh. Padlow fouls it into the screen. So the crowd is on edge. And with one swing of the bat, this big crowd here at AFA Stadium can go home happy because I think they'll explode should Kevin Padlow put one over the outfield wall. This place will erupt if he hits a ball in the gap or hits the ball out of the ballpark. This place will go nuts. It's been an amazing, energetic crowd from both sides. Great support from South uh, Adelaide Bite fans tonight. Uh, the CEO of baseball, uh, of South Australian baseball here, Nathan Davidson here. I got a chance to connect with him. Um, the energy is brilliant. Um, and like I said, from both organizations, you couldn't ask any more from what these two clubs have put on the field today. Well, bottom of the 11th. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Bonus coverage of baseball here. 2-2 two -two count. Zach Cooper to Kevin Padlow, the number 20th prospect with the Tampa Bay Rays. And that's outside. Three balls, two strikes now to Kevin Padlow. And with Tommy Malone looming large in the on-deck circle. So Zach Cooper just taking his time rounding the pitchers plate. He now toes the rubber. Three balls, two strikes. Kevin Padlow at the plate, offering on its way. Foul ball straight back to the screen. So once again, Kevin Padlow doing a great job fighting off some tough pitches from Zach Cooper. The fifth Adelaide bite pitcher used this evening. The starter was Jack O'Loughlin and doesn't that feel an eternity ago. Greg Mosell, Hai Chung Lee, Loke Van Mill and Zach Cooper used for the Adelaide bite. Likewise for the Bandits, Kramer Champlin, Ryan Roland-Smith, Zach Tree, Sam Holland, Matt Timms, and Ryan Searle. So the pitchers used on both sides of these ball clubs. 3-2 count now on Kevin Padlow. Zach Cooper from the set delivers. Kevin Padlow fouls this one. Once again over the big crowd here on the right side over first base. And a big thank you to Conoco Phillips for their sponsorship of all the foul balls. And they're a major supporter of grassroots baseball. As is Bendigo Bank. Proud to have Bendigo Bank part of the Baseball Buddies program. The Little League, the Junior League and the Senior League. Great supporters of grassroots baseball. So Kevin Padlow, 4-4, bottom of the 11th, delivers. And that one off the end of the bat. It's going to be a tough play for the first baseman, Jordan McArdle. He comes across and makes a nifty defensive play down there at first base. And Kevin Padlow is retired for the first out here in the bottom of the 11th inning. Yeah, really good play right there in, in a tough situation. Good hustle by Padlow, but a really good play to get out number one here in, in, the, bo in the bottom of the 11th inning. So Tommy Malone, he gives over the two Tampa Bay Rays, a back-to-back -back in the batting lineup, six and seven. Tommy Malone picked 97 by the Rays in the third round, finished in high A with the Charlotte Stone Crabs in 2016. He now has an opportunity with one swing of the bat to end this ball game. And that's up and out of the zone from Zach Cooper for ball one. And we know Tommy has the power because he can launch some big home runs here at AFA Stadium. Big thank you to our CEO, Mr. Mark Reedy, General Manager Paul Gonzalez. Big thank you to Brett Pickett, General Manager of the ABL, Ben Foster. Big thank you to Andrew Reynolds and Nina Zimmerman back at head office. Zach Cooper delivers the one ball. Oh, big swing, foul down the left field line and out of play. So once again, that evens account. One ball, one strike, one out here in the bottom of the 11th. It is, and every every at bat, every pitch is so big. You know, when we talk about this ballpark, it, there's so much energy here. If someone squares a ball up, it's game over. And, that, and that's what everyone's waiting for. Can they? Can someone come up with a big hit at the right time? Another big swing, chop foul down the first baseline. Hey, a nice play by Andrew Campbell on the backhand. Just pops out of the end of the dugout and made a nice play on the one hopper. So Zach Cooper doing a good job for the Adelaide bite. One ball, two strikes. Pitching ahead of Tommy Malone. Tommy's one for four in today's ball game. He's one for four last night. Crouched over at the plate. Righty versus lefty matchup. Ooh. Big swing and a miss. And Tommy Malone is retired for the second out here in the bottom of the 11th. Big pitch, big out for the Adelaide by right there. And great execution. What I like more than anything, his composure. He looks very composed. He looks like we talk about guys that want to step up in big situations. He has stepped up here in the bottom of the 11th inning and done a great job for the bite. 
Now two outs here in the 11th tied 4-4. And he's appeared at the Arizona Fall League and appeared with the Tampa Bay Rays at MLB Spring Training. So Zach Cooper certainly has a good resume. Wow. Fires a fastball right at the knees of David Sutherland on the outside edge. Tell you what, he's bringing it. He's come in with a purpose, and you like to see that from this young man. And that's exactly what you need, especially after what Van Mills did over those four innings. Shaking off, Marcus Green Jr. has done a fantastic job behind the plate. David Sutherland at the dish for the Bandits. And a check swing. No, called strike by Tom West anyway. So no balls, two strikes. Yeah, good pitch, good location. Tough, tough spot right there. And that's nothing Sutherland can do. Right now, if he swings that round ball to shortstop or second base, good job of laying off on a very, very tough pitch. Well, what a night for baseball. David Sutherland, big swing and a miss, so back-to-back punch-outs. And we're through 11 innings here at AFA Stadium. Game two of the ABL preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. We're through 11 innings and no tiebreaker rules here tonight at AFA Stadium. The rules of baseball will be played out to decide this game to win a best of three series and the winner will face the Melbourne Aces next week in the 2016-17 ABL Championship Series. What a ball game, Mr. Paul Gonzalez. No, what a ball game, what a series. We look at what, what the, uh, the the game, game won and how close that was between these two guys, these two teams. Uh, and, and this shows how close they are as competitors. And once again in game two, we're tied in the 12th inning, 4-4. And that brings to the plate. Mr. Jordan Cowan, the shortstop in the Seattle Mariners prospect from Bakersfield. First pitch swinging. Logan Way going to be a tough play in shallow left field. The one hopper. Is it in time? It's not in time. The slide from Jordan Cowan. And he's aboard. And he represents the go-ahead run. And once again, the same situation was presented to us in the ninth inning. Jordan Cowan aboard, Mitch Denning singled back to back, but Ryan Searle was good enough to wriggle out of that jam. So will Mitch Denning be bunning on this occasion? Early in the ball game, he showed bun early, and that just shows, like I said, the respect they have. But then he came up with a big base hit to right field. So maybe that check changed the complexity of this at bat right now. So, you know, maybe early on they let him swing the bat, uh, at least give him one strike, and then maybe they might go to a bunt. And then with two strikes, trust him that he can put the ball in play and make something happen. So Jordan Cowan is four for six in tonight's ball game, A double and three singles. What a fantastic night at the plate for the number two hole hitter for the Seattle Mariners and the Adelaide Bites. So Mitch Denning at the plate now. Kevin Padlow playing very shallow at third base. There we see Bunt this time pulled back and a ball on the outside edge. So Kevin Padlow ends up about 15 feet from home plate. Yeah, textbook baseball right here. And even with the threat of him at the plate, this shows the respect they have uh, for Green on deck. He uh, having the ability to get the job done. But also, once again, when you've got your closer in, the respect to Ryan Searle, that how tough he is to score on. So... I like the percentages of playing percentage baseball. Let's get him in scoring position. Ooh. 
And then we see a swing and foul ball back to the screen. So I like the way they're mixing it up. I like the bunt attempt. He pulls it back. He then swings away. Does he now go back to the bunt? Well, and that's the thing. You know, sometimes you can bait a guy. So you go, okay, well, he's going to concede. He's going to bunt. Put him. So then you go, okay, well, I made him put him in play, and I give him a fastball. Unfortunately for uh, Ryan Stowe, he came up short. Now it's 1-1 here in the 12th. Wow. Fantastic night for baseball here at AFA Stadium. Ryan Searle delivers, and that one's hit sharply to right field, and unfortunately, that's a two-run blast by Mitch Denning. He's been the bandit killer, and coming around third base is Jordan Cowan, and Mitch Denning, a two-run blast here in the top of the 12th to put the bite up 6-4. to four. Mitch Denning got a pitch pull, and he duly delivered it and deposited it over the right field wall. And, and that's what he does, and, and that's what he's done all year for the Adelaide Bite. It's what he's done for Team Australia. That's what he's done in Japan. Um, and, and once again, that's why he's an impact player in this league. Got a ball down in the zone. Unfortunately, didn't get it by him, and he squared it up and hit it over the right field fence to make it now 6-4 here in the 12th inning. Wow, he has been the bandit killer, has Mitch Denning three home runs in the previous series here at AFA Stadium going back a couple of years in 2014 three home runs in that ball game and now a two run blast to break this game wide open in the top of the 12th things aren't quite done yet Marcus Green Jr. at the plate for the Adelaide Bite and Ryan Sell starts him off with a cord strike so the Bite 6-4 leaders here in the top of the 12th and a big game as this big crowd has just gone a little bit silent with that big shot from Mitch Denning Ryan Searle from the set. Marcus Green Jr. at the plate. And Marcus Green Jr. puts a charging one down the left field line. Tommy Malone comes across in foul territory. He drifts back in fair territory. Oh, wow. And that's going to land. Marcus Green Jr. hasn't left the box. He's just making his way to first base. So Marcus Green Jr. was watching that all the way as I looked back to the box. I was covering the ball. And I looked back and Marcus Green Jr. was still in the batter's box. Yeah, look, I, I think Green read that as a foul ball. And all of a sudden the ball peeled back into fair territory. So um, Malone broke down the, the line and actually ran into foul territory, and that ball landed about three meters in fair territory. So it either had a lot of spin on it or just misjudged it for a, a, a now a single and man on first base. So, wow. The Adelaide Bite are pressing here in the top of the 12th. Nobody out. Two runs across the plate, and Marcus Green Jr. aboard with a very tough hitter. Stefan Welch, first pitch swinging. He drives one hard down the right field line. So it looks like Ryan Searle, in his third inning of work, he's got this ball game at his disposal. Stefan Welch at the plate. Stefan's 0 for 3 with two walks, the sixth time through the Adelaide Bite lineup. So the Bandits will have to strike back with a minimum of two runs in the bottom of the 12th to keep this game alive. Ryan Searle off speed, just misses outside, so one ball. One strike and a very dangerous hitter at the plate in Stefan Welch. What well, is and, and, and now they've got a 6-4 lead, so you can do so many things as a manager, but they'll probably let him swing the bat because you don't have a stronger hitter on, on, on deck, so you'll let him swing the bat and see if he can create a first and third situation here in the 12th inning. Marcus Green Jr. aboard at first. 1-1 one, one offering on its way, Ooh. and that's hit sharply. So Stefan Welch was certainly sitting on that fastball as he drills it foul and out of play down the right field line. The ex-New York Mets, Pittsburgh Pirates and Boston Red Sox, 785 games of minor league experience through Stefan Welch. His seventh season in the Australian Baseball League. And he'll certainly be appearing in that 28-man roster for the World Baseball Classic for the Australian team. 6-4 lead to the bite here in the top of the 12th. And that one's hit sharply but foul, this time down the left field line into the corral. So once again, Stefan Welch doing a good job fighting off these tough pitches from Ryan Searle. So the crowd just a little bit deflated here at AFA Stadium. Mitch Denning with a huge two-run blast. Jordan Cowan coming into school. Mitch Denning comes into school, and they lead 6-4. to four. Here, one ball, two strike, nobody out. Ryan Searle delivers, and that's outside. So two balls. Two strikes now on the very dangerous Stefan Welch at the plate. It is, and I tell you what, like I said, you got to continue to make good pitches. You know, the Bandits will never concede. They're down two runs here in the 12th inning. 
what Ryan has to do right now is try to prevent any more runs from scoring because that makes it a lot tougher for the offense to chip away at a two-run lead in the 12th inning. And then we see a hard hit ball. Oh, oh good hop for the Adelaide bite. That one skips over the head of David Sutherland. Not stopping at second is Marcus Green Jr. And a board at first. Here comes the throw from Trent Ultram behind the runner. First and third. And Stefan Welch got a big carom off the infield grass. And that hops straight over the head. No play for David Sutherland. Yeah, and we talked about creating first and third situations. And Welch, he did exactly what he needed to do right there. He put the ball in play. Got a good hop. Got over the six foot seven. Uh, Sutherland for a base hit to right field now making the first and third with nobody out here in the 12th so once again they can go back to that safety squeeze situation maybe potentially can execute in this situation or may they let him put the ball in play and see if he can generate a run so Nathan van der Linden in another big spot for the Adelaide bot I'm sure they like an insurance run here they're up by two six to four in this pivotal game two of a best of three series Bearing in mind, if we are due to come back, Game 3 will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. local time, Brisbane time here at AFA Stadium. Ryan Searle from the set. First and third, infield playing in. Nathan van der Linden fouls it off his lead foot and out of play. So big situation for young Nathan. Can he put the ball in play with nobody out here and drive in another Adelaide bite to extend this two-run lead? Looking ahead in bottom of the 12th, 9-1-2. Due up for the Bandits, Wade Dutton, Aaron Whitefield, and Trent Olchen. So the right men due up for the Bandits. So just quietly, I mean, for playoff baseball, this is fun. Regardless of win, lose, whoever wins this ball game, this is just good quality baseball from both sides. And it just shows how tight the league is and how bad both teams want to, to get to the Claxton Shield game between the Melbourne Aces. And that's a credit, I think, to both coaching staff, Steve Mintz and Dave Nielsen. They instill that in their players, that never-say-die attitude, and you love to see that coming from the top. And look at this. This is the two guys that went head-to-head -head last year in the ABL Championship Game Series, uh, and, and obviously with the Bandits coming ahead. But this shows how competitive both sides are. There goes the runner. A little hit-and-run play. I like that play, but foul and out of play by Nathan van der Linden. No one paying attention to Steph Welch as the corner infielders are playing in all around the infield, actually. All infielders on the grass. And Steph Welch, the heads-up base running, tries to swipe a little base. Yeah, and you know what that is. That's just good baseball. You've got nobody covering the bag on second base, so they're conceding the steal in this situation and putting the pressure on the hitter. Jordan McArdle in the on-deck circle. Nathan van der Linden at the plate. There goes the runner once again, and this time's up and out of the zone. And this time, Nathan van der Linden doing a good job, and that allows Stephen Welch to advance. So now the Adelaide Bite have runners at second and third. Nobody out here in the top of the 12th after plating two runs on the Mitch Denning two-run blast. Yeah, and that's been the big blow from the Bite. You know, when we talk about guys that are impact guys in this lineup, Welshy, Denning, you know, there's so many impact guys in this Bite lineup. And unfortunately for the Brisbane Bandits, he came up big. Nathan van der Linden goes down on strikes and a big out by Ryan Searle. The first out recorded here in the top of the 12th, but things don't get any easier as Jordan McArdle makes his way to the plate. Yeah, and that's where the Bennett's got to continue, and that's what Ryan Searle did right there. He bared down that situation, and that's a big out because right now you've got – is that – two outs one out and so the pressure's still on the Brisbane Bandits because you got second and third one out so defense will be playing in to try to prevent the run from scoring but puts a lot of pressure on the Bandits defense Ryan Searle from the set one out here in the top of the 12th inning delivers Jordan McArdle mm. slashes it foul and out of play down the left field line so once again, what an exciting time for this young man. Just inking a contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He'll head over to spring training. Do you remember those times, Paul, when you signed that contract? Heading over to spring training, starting a whole new part of your ballpark and professional life. And it is. It, it's, the, it's the great unknown. It's the deep waters. It, it's can I swim with, with the, the fish? And, you know, and, and there's so many things we go through his head when he's on that plane. But at the end of the day, this is what he needs. He needs to say, face a triple-A arm with, with Ryan Searle and a strong representative. This gives him the confidence to believe that he can see succeed in, in the deep end of the pool, as I say it. And he's certainly got the body shape. Big, strong man. Towering young man. Strong through the trunk. Looks like he has the power in the legs and has a good swing. And defensively, he's really starting to work on his ball game. And that's it. And, and to, to, to really to even be signed, they look at the physical attributes the player brings to the field. And then they start working on the mental component. You know, situations like this, bottom of the 12th, or top of the 12th inning, 
a go-ahead run on, on third base. So just missing downstairs. Ryan Sewell wanted the call. One ball, two strikes. And Jordan McCuddle, as you said, Paul, has an opportunity to drive in a couple of insurance runs right here with second and third occupied. Marcus Green, Jr., aboard at third. Stephen Welch at second. And a big opportunity. I'm sure his pitching staff will want Jordan. Did a couple of insurance runs with the heart of the Bandits lineup due up in the bottom of the 12th. One ball, two strikes. Ryan Sewell delivers this downstairs. This one skips away. Marcus Green Jr. will not come in to score. David Sutherland, uh, David Rodriguez retreats back to the backstop. And no harm done. You do not want to get thrown out at home plate to be the second out of the inning. No, that, that's a good hit to uh, uh, base running by Green. You know, Green runs well for a catcher. He's actually a very, very good athlete, but just good heads up. He knows that backstop's only about six or seven meters but, but between home plate. Rodriguez uh, bumps really quickly and a good cover by Ryan Searle. And that's good heads up baseball on both sides right there. Don't want to run into an out, especially at home plate. Two balls, two strikes on Jordan McArdle. Lefty versus righty matchup. All the infielders are playing in on the grass for the band. It's runners at second and third. Bite up six to four. Ryan Searle kicks and delivers off speed outside. Full count, three balls, two strikes. So after getting ahead, 0-2, Jordan McArdle has now worked the count full. And a great at bat. And we talk about a young man, and, and this is part of his professional development, is putting himself in situations like this. And that's what's so good about the Strain Baseball League. You can't simulate this in off season. You need to be in it. And he's actually getting quality at bat right now, preparing him for spring training. Payoff pitch on its way to Jordan McArdle. And that just misses on the outside edge. Jordan McArdle gets aboard by ball four. So loaded bases now for the Texas Rangers prospect, Josh Altman. So Josh has had a good day at the plate. He's two for five with the stolen base. Taking the 22nd round, pick number 648. Another one of those mid-tier signings that have come out, as you said, Paul, looking for those extra at-bats here and head back to Texas Rangers spring training. Yeah, and organizations don't send guys away to, to Winter League uh, without seeing them as being prospects. And when I say prospects, guys that they think can play at the highest level. So obviously the organization, the Rangers organization, see him as being a prospect and they want to continue his development here in Australian baseball. Big swing and a miss on the high fastball across two seasons. 132 games, 256, so a durable type of guy to play 132 games in his first two seasons of pro ball. Yeah, it is, but but when, when you send a player to play winter ball, you're making an investment uh, in, in that athlete. And obviously send him to Australia, making a considerable investment in him to continue to develop him his skill sets to play at the next level. Ooh, good pitch. Great pitch to get ahead 0-2. And what about a career for Josh Altman at the NCAA at Chicago University? He hit 368, 350, mm. and 432 across three mm. years at the NCAA. Yeah, so th those numbers are impressive. You know, when you look at, you know, at the collegiate, you'd probably say it, it's a, the next step below minor league baseball, but it shows he's a consistent 300-plus hitter, so he has the ability to hit to a high average. 0-2 offering on its way, and this one's chopped. This is going to be a tough play. Kevin Padlow comes in barehand, wow. can't come up with the ball. Marcus Green Jr. comes in to score. Everyone moves up 90 feet. The bases are still loaded, and Josh Altman comes through with a single. He's now three for six, picks up the RBI. No play really for Kevin Padlow, and some of the crowd now starting to leave here at AFA Stadium with the bite now ahead, seven to four. So David will come out right now, and, and this is a good time. You know, he may actually pull him right now because at the end of the day, his man's done his job. And, and the reality is, has he now, does he have any more bullets left if he has to come back for game three to potentially close that game? Knowing Ryan so and how competitive he is, he'll want the ball in game three if it comes down to it. But David's actually recognized the situation. If I want to use him, I've got to make sure there's maybe a few bullets left in the gun if I have to get him to come out in, in one inning or two or, or potentially a, 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 a batter. And Simon Morris makes his way in to the pitching rubber from the bullpen. And this man, what a great start in Canberra. And it's Simon Morris to clinch that playoff spot for the Brisbane Bennett. So now he has the task of limiting this major damage here because... We have at the plate Alex Carter and then back to the top of the order, Ladarius Clark in the on-deck circle. So loaded bases here in the top of the 12th. Three runs in to score. So an exciting time for the Adelaide Bite. But still, the Bandits, if they can wriggle out of this inning, three runs in this park, sometimes not enough. Yeah, in the reality, good good pitching change right here. You, you're bringing in a veteran presence. Simon's been uh, representing Queensland baseball in, in, in the Bandits for a number of years. 
So the right guy at the right time. He's not going to be in all of the situation. David knows he's going to come in. He's going to work to what the situation dictates needs to happen. And hopefully he can get out of this inning. So the bands can continue chip away at that 7-4 lead here in the 12th. Made his debut in the 2008 Claxton Shield, his sixth ABL season. If we just look ahead tomorrow, bearing in mind there is no restrictions on the import or the Australian starter. The rules in the championship and the preliminary final series is an Australian must start games one or two. Bearing in mind, Jack O'Loughlin was the starter for Adelaide Bot and Justin Erasmus was the starter for the Bandits on game one. So now we have open slather tomorrow and it looks like Rick Teasley could be the go-to man for the Bandits and the Bite haven't announced or gave any inkling to their game three starter. Yeah, and, and what a great opportunity. You know, Teasley was our number with, with the Bandits number one for most of the year. So all of a sudden you're bringing your number one to pitch game three of a decider in the preliminaries to try to get you to the finals in Melbourne. So here we go. Loaded bases in the top of the 12. Three Adelaide Bite have come in to score to blow this one right open, 7-4. to four. And looks like the crowd are having a good time. Miranda Friskin down right behind home plate, enjoying herself, giving us a wave. So Miranda does a great job for Baseball Australia. So Simon Morris on the hill. The DH, Alex Carter. He's sixth time at the plate. So Ken Simon induce a ground ball to get out of this inning. And that is a cord strike to start Alex off with a good off-speed offering from Simon Morris. And that's what you talk about when we're talking about veteran presence. This is where that experience, you can't put a dollar value on a guy that can come in, in a tough situation and make a good first pitch. From the set position, bases loaded. And it's hit sharply to left field. Is that deep enough to score? Steph Welch from third base. Alex Carter with the line drive. Tommy Malone comes into third base. And the sack fly. And in to score, Steph Welch for the fourth run here in the top of the 12th. And now the bite take an 8-4 to four lead with two outs in the top of the 12th. Yeah, really good. Uh, good pitch. Good job by the young hitter right there. And that's exactly what you want to do. He put the ball up in the air for a sacrifice fly. That now makes it 8-4 in the 12th inning. And that's exactly what the bite needed from him at that in that at bat. So the seventh time through the lineup for the Adelaide bite, and that is Ladarius Clark making his way to the plate. So I'm sure the Adelaide bite would like to finish off strongly here to have that momentum going into game three because it appears if things hold up the way they are, we're going to have a game three tomorrow, 1 p.m. local time, and that should be an exciting ball game here at AFA Stadium. So if you haven't got your tickets, folks, jump on the website. And there we see a ground ball. Kevin Padlow comes in, makes a play to first baseman David Sutherland with that big wingspan. James Shields, the first base umpire, rings him up. Not before. Four Adelaide Bite come in to score. We head to the bottom of the 12th with the Bite leading the Bandits. Eight to four. So welcome back to the Australian Baseball League preliminary final series presented by Ladbrokes. Bottom of the 12th and the last chance corral here for the Bandits. They need four runs. 
to keep this game going, or five for the victory. Wade Dutton, Aaron Whitefield, and Trent Olchin due up. On the hill, Zach Cooper for the Adelaide Bite. So can they lock these last three outs down for game two and send us to a big game three tomorrow, 1 p.m. local time. And if you haven't got your tickets and you're in the new market local area here in Brisbane or the southeast of Queensland, jump on the website brisbanebandits.com.au and grab your ticket because it's going to be one great ball game tomorrow should this score line hold up. Well, I tell you what, it, it will be. If it goes to game three, it'll be another exciting ball game between two tough sides. I think the big thing will be will be one o'clock start uh, here at AF Stadium, potentially in a mid-30s game. So that could be a big game changer for everybody just to rebound from potentially a long night at the office and then come back for a one o'clock start. Wow, so three games in the shape of sort of 40 hours for these both ball clubs with a bit of travel time in between. One ball, two strikes, and that's fouled into the big screen by Wade Dutton. And how impressive has this guy been with the pocket out? Is it a fantastic season with a 300 right on the nose, batting average? Yeah, look, he's been, you know, he's been one of the difference makers between, you know, the playoff push. You're, you're talking between him, Sutherland, and Rodriguez. I think they're the big three impact guys in the back in the lineup that really done a great job for Brisbane's offense. Um, talk about the schedule. These guys um, probably up by six, seven, seven o'clock in the morning after a long game in Adelaide they get to the uh, an 8 o'clock bus to get to the airport both teams were on the same flight for a 10 o'clock flight land about 12-ish have a quick lunch and then they go home quickly shower do their thing and they're back on the field for BP for game two Wow big 24 hours as Wade Dutton is retired via the strikeout so Zach Cooper is in line for the big win here for the Adelaide Bite if he can lock down these final two outs remaining in the hottest hitters in the ABL due up Aaron Whitefield the leadoff man and the sixth time through the Bandits lineup and wow three consecutive strikeouts Tommy Malone David Sublin and Wade Dutton Zach Cooper is breathing fire on the hill for the Adelaide Bite. No he is he's done a brilliant job you know we talk about really the bullpen for the Bite has been the game changer and the difference in tonight's ball game making the decision we talk about the chess match is making that decision to go with your closer for a long period of time uh, basically saying I need you to give me a big big effort to keep us in it and then this young man to come out here in the last two innings and be lights out for the bite. One ball one strike to Aaron Whitefield the bite are now two outs away from locking this game two down. Ooh, top pitch good wow. location. Just missing two balls one strike to Aaron Whitefield. So who's available for the Adelaide bite just looking through Tyler Chapel, Matty Williams tomorrow. We'll see who they wheel out for their starting pitcher. High fastball. Aaron Whitefield can't catch up with it. Evens the count of two balls, two strikes. Could we see McNabb, last night's starter? He didn't travel up with the team today, so he might be on a uh, early plane flight tomorrow morning. And there we see Aaron Whitefield with a hard hit ball. Jordan Cowan comes up and once again has been defensively brilliant all season at shortstop for the Adelaide Bite and that's a huge second out because now the Bandits are down to their final out here in this pivotal game two of this three game series yeah big out right there and that's number two so like I said he's come in done a brilliant job if you can get out of this Bite go home they're excited and it brings on game three one o'clock AFA Stadium it will be hot but it'll be another quality game of baseball between these two sides. Come down, enjoy all the spoils from the food trucks. Fantastic atmosphere at AFA Stadium tomorrow. Day game, if you like day baseball, as Trent Olchin stands between Zach Cooper and a big win in game two of this three-game series of the ABL preliminary finals presented by Ladbrokes. Paul Gonzalez and Kevin Dean in the broadcast box. A big thank you to Hailstorm Productions who have worked tirelessly on the production all day today, setting everything up in the heat. And those boys will be back up here early tomorrow, as will be all the volunteers and staff here at the Brisbane Bandits. So two balls and Zach Cooper just taking his time, composing himself around the infield grass. Trent Olchin with two balls. Zach Cooper from the set delivers. And that finds the top of the strike zone. Two balls and one strike. So now the Bandits out of their final two strikes here in game two. Two balls, one strike on its way, and that's inside. Three balls, one strike. So is there a little twist in this ball game just yet with Andrew Campbell in the on-deck circle? 
three balls, one strike to Trent Olchen. Zach Cooper delivers, and that's high, ball four. So Andrew Campbell will get his first at bat of this ball game. This is a good at bat. You know, we talk about it, it doesn't, you know, you say in the, in the context of things, does it mean anything? Absolutely, because potentially he comes up with a big hit. You know, tomorrow, whether he starts or he comes in off the bench, maybe in a big situation, he may be a game changer. We know with the Brisbane Bandits, he's an impact bat. He can do some damage. So this is a good at bat for, for uh, Supi Campbell in this situation. You got to look at all the positives because it might be him coming in late in the ball game with the big hit to get the Bandits over the line for, for game number three. And Andrew Campbell takes a fastball up and out of the zone for ball one. And as you mentioned, Paul, these at-bats are so crucial heading into a big game three. If you look forward, both of these bullpens have been taxed today and last night. So we're now getting down to who wants it more, and that's that mental component, and who can prepare yourself both physically and mentally for the game three tomorrow. Well, it will be, because tomorrow will be all about adrenaline. You're talking about it'll be mid-30s, it'll be 1 o'clock, the sun will be beating down on everybody from the players to the fans. It's been two long, hard nights of baseball over the last two days, and then you talk about throughout the season. So it'll all come down to who's mentally tough and prepared to take on the challenge in game three. Andrew Campbell slaps that one foul out of play over the third base dugout. So one ball, one strike. Zach Cooper two strikes away from locking down the big W for the Adelaide Bight. From the set position, he's working quickly. Andrew Campbell at the plate. And that is down low for ball two. So two balls, one strike now on Andrew Campbell. David Rodriguez in the on-deck circle. And the tying run is in the hole in the shape of Logan Wade. So the Bandits with two outs, not giving up. Oh, a little cue shot off the end of the bat by Andrew Campbell. Evens the count at two balls, two strikes as Matty Williams trots out and picks up that foul ball, which ended up in fair territory. <laughs> a good swing right there. And now he's got a battle 2-2 with two outs here in the 12th inning. Have a quality at bat. Like I said, every at bat in every game, is, it always has a purpose. See if he can come up big with the Bandits right here. 2-2, the runner's on the way, and that is fouled. Once again, right in front of the Adelaide bite dugout and once again Matty Williams makes his way out to pick up the foul ball the runner was also on the move so it looks like through defensive indifference Trent Olchen is happy to take second base yeah well you look you, you, they're gonna they're conceding they're, they're, uh, the first base was not holding him on so he'll go on the move just because he stay out of the force play second and that one's hit sharply to right fielder Nathan Vanderlinen comes across and hit puts that one in the bag and the Adelaide bite in 12 innings have defeated the Brisbane Bennett's 8 to 4. Zach Cooper picks up the W. Unfortunately, Ryan Searle picks up the loss. Wow, what a game of baseball. Game two of this pivotal best of three series, Paul. Look, credit to both sides. That was a well fought ball, uh, ball game on, on both sides. And this shows how close uh, these teams are. And it shows how, how much both teams wanted to try to get to Melbourne. And, and claim the Claxon Shield against a very tough Melbourne Aces team. So, once again, credit to both sides, both coaching staffs. Kevin, great job tonight. Big, big night. Uh, but you know what? We still got game three tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Looking forward to it. So a big thank you to our broadcast here at the ABL. Preliminary finals presented by Ladbrokes has been a presentation on abltv.com powered by Bing Lee and the Australian Baseball League in partnership with Mr. Josh Hale of Hailstorm Productions. Our final score from AFA Stadium, the bite defeated the Bandits 8-4 in 12 innings. Our next broadcast, as we said, comes your way tomorrow at 1 p.m. local time here at AFA Stadium. All the information can be found on the website brisbanebandits.com.au But for now, from all the team here at Bandits TV, powered by Ladbrokes and Bing Lee Hailstorm Productions, Paul Gonzalez, Eric Bolner and myself, Kevin Dean, hope you've enjoyed the coverage and we'll wish you good evening. Thank you and have a good night.